The First Book of the Odysseys of Homer. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf. The First Book of the Odysseys of Homer. Translated by George Chapman. The Argument. The gods in council sit, to call Ulysses from Calypso's thrall, and order their high pleasures thus. Grey Pallas to Telemachus in Ithaca her way addressed, and did her heavenly limbs invest in Mentus' likeness, that did reign king of the Taphians, in the main whose rough waves near Leucadia run, advising wise Ulysses' son to seek his father, and address his course to young Tantalides that governed Sparta. Thus much said, she shewed she was heaven's martial maid, and vanished from him. Next to this, the banquet of wooers is. Another argument. Alpha. The deity sit, the man retired, the Ulyssian wit by Pallas fired. The man, O muse, informed that many a way wound with his wisdom to his wished stay, that wandered wondrous far when he the town of sacred Troy had sacked and shivered down, the cities of the world of nations with all their manners, minds, and fashions he saw and knew. At sea felt many woes, much care sustained to save from overthrows himself and friends in their retreat for home. But so their fates he could not overcome, though much he thirsted it. O men unwise, they perished by their own impieties that in their hungers rapine would not shun the oxen of the lofty-going sun, who therefore from their eyes the day bereft of safe return. These acts in some part left, tell us, as others, deified seed of Jove. Now all the rest, that austere death outstrove at Troy's long siege, at home safe anchored are, free from the malice both of sea and war. Only Ulysses is denied access to wife and home. The grace of goddesses, the reverend nymph Calypso, did detain him in her caves, past all the race of men, and flamed to make him her loved lord and spouse. And when the gods had destined that his house, which Ithaca on her rough bosom bears, the point of time wrought out by ambient years, should be his haven, contention still extends her envy to him, even amongst his friends. All gods took pity on him, only he, that girds the earth in the cincture of the sea, divine Ulysses, ever did envy, and made the fixed port of his birth to fly. But he himself solemnized a retreat to the Ethiops far dissundered in their seat, in two parts parted, at the sun's descent, and underneath his golden orient, the first and last of men, to enjoy their feast of bulls and lambs in hecatombs addressed at which he sat, given over to delight. The other gods in heaven's supremest height were all in council met, to whom began the mighty father, both of God and man, discourse, inducing matter that inclined to wise Ulysses, calling to his mind faithful Aegisthus, who to death was done by young Orestes, Agamemnon's son. His memory to the immortals, then, moved Jove thus deeply, Oh, how falsely men accuse us gods as authors of their ill, when by the bane of their own bad lives instill, they suffer all the miseries of their states past our inflictions, and beyond their fates, as now Aegisthus, past his fate, did wed the wife of Agamemnon, and, in dread to suffer death himself, to shun his ill, incurred it by the loose bent of his will in slaughtering Atrides in retreat, which we foretold him would so hardly set to his murderous purpose, sending Mercury that slaughtered Argus, our considerate spy, to give him this charge. Do not wed his wife, nor murder him, for thou shalt buy his life with ransom of thine own, imposed on thee by his Orestes, when in him shall be Atrides' self renewed, and but the prime of youth's spring put abroad, in thirst to climb his haughty father's throne by his high axe. These words of Hermes wrought not into facts Aegisthus' powers. Good counsel he despised, and to that good his ill is sacrificed. Pallas, whose eyes did sparkle like the skies, answered, O sire, supreme of deities, Aegisthus passed his faith, and had desert to warrant our infliction, 
and convert may all the pains such impious men inflict on innocent sufferers to revenge as strict their own hearts eating but that ithacus thus never meriting should suffer thus i deeply suffer his more pious mind divides him from these fortunes though unkind is piety to him giving him a fate more suffering than the most unfortunate so long kept friendless in the sea-girt soil where the sea's navel is a sylvan isle in which the goddess dwells that doth derive her birth from atlas who of all alive the motion and the fashion doth command with his wise mind whose forces understand the inmost deeps and gulfs of all the seas who for his skill of things superior stays the two steep columns that prop earth and heaven his daughter tis who holds this homeless driven still mourning with her ever more profuse of soft and winning speeches that abuse and make so languishingly and possessed with so remiss a mind her loved guest manage the action of his way for home where he though in affection overcome in judgment yet more longs to show his hopes his country's smoke leap from their chimney-tops and death asks in her arms yet never shall thy loved heart be converted on his thrall austere olympius did not ever he in ample troy thy altars gratify and grecian's fleet make in thy offering swim jove why still then burns thy wrath to him the cloud assembler answered what words fly bold daughter from thy pale ivory as if i ever could cast from my care divine ulysses who exceeds so far all men in wisdom and so oft hath given to all the immortals throned in ample heaven so great and sacred gifts but his decrees that holds the earth in with his nimble knees stand to ulysses longing so extreme for taking from the godful polypheme his only eye a cyclop that excelled all other cyclops with whose burden swelled the nymph thusa the divine increase of forces seeds the great god of the seas she mixed with neptune in his hollow caves and bore this cyclop to that god of waves for whose lost eye the earth-shaker did not kill erring ulysses but reserves him still in life for more death but use we our powers and round about us cast these cares of ours all to discover how we may prefer his wished retreat and neptune make forbear his stern eye to him since no one god can in spite of all prevail but gainst a man to this this answer made the gray eye made supreme of rulers since so well appaid the blessed gods are all then now in thee to limit wise ulysses misery and that you speak as you referred to me prescription for the means in this sort be their sacred order let us now address with utmost speed our swift argicides to tell the nymph that bears the golden tress in the isle ogygia that tis our will she should not stay our loved ulysses still but suffer his return and then will i to ithaca to make his son apply his sire's inquest the more infusing force into his soul to summon the concourse of curl-headed greeks to counsel and deter each wooer that hath been the slaughterer of his fat sheep and crooked-headed beeves from more wrong to his mother and their leaves take in such terms as fit desert so great to sparta then and pylos where doth beat bright amanthus the flood and epithet to all that kingdom my advice shall send the spirit advanced prince to the pious end of seeking his lost father if he may receive report from fame where rests his stay and make besides his own successive worth known to the world and set in action forth this said her winged shoes to her feet she tied formed all of gold and eternified that on the round earth or the sea sustained her ravished substance swift as gusts of wind then took she her strong lance with steel made keen great massy active that whole hosts of men though all heroes conquers if her ire their wrongs inflame backed by so great a sire down from olympus top she headlong dived and swift as thought in ithaca arrived close at ulysses gates in whose first court she made her stand and for her breast support leaned on her iron lance 
her form impress with mentis likeness come as being a guest there found she those proud wooers that were then set on those oxides that themselves had slain before the gates and all at dice were playing to them the heralds and the rest obeying filled wine and water some still as they played and some for solemn supper state pervade with porous sponges cleansing tables served with much rich feast of which to all they curved godlike telemachus amongst them sat grieved much in mind and in his heart begat all representment of his absent sire how come from far off parts his spirits would fire with those proud wooers sight with slaughter parting their bold concourse and to himself converting the honours they usurped his own commanding in this discourse he first saw pallas standing unbidden entry up rose and addressed his pace right to her angry that a guest should stand so long at gate and coming near her right hand took took in his own her spear and thus saluted grace to your repair fair guest your welcome shall be likewise fair enter and cheered with feasts disclose the intent that caused your coming this said first he went and pallas followed to a room they came steep and of state the javelin of the dame he set against a pillar vast and high amidst a large and bright-kept armory which was besides with woods of lances graced of his grave fathers in a throne he placed the man-turned goddess under which was spread a carpet rich and of deviceful thread a footstool staying her feet and by her chair another seat all garnished wondrous fair to rest or sleep on in the day he set far from the priests of wooers lest at meat the noise they still made might offend his guest disturbing him at banquet or at rest even to his combat with that pride of theirs that kept no noble form in their affairs and these he set far from them much the rather to question freely of his absent father a table fairly polished then was spread on which a reverend officer set bread and other servitors all sorts of meat salads and flesh such as their haste could get served with observance in and then the sewer poured water from a great and golden ewer that from their hands to a silver cauldron ran both washed and seated close the voiceful man fetched cups of gold and set by them and round those cups with wine with all endeavour crowned then rushed in the rude wooers themselves placed the heralds water gave the maids in haste served bread from baskets when of all prepared and set before them the bold wooers shared their pages plying their cups past the rest but lusty wooers must do more than feast for now their hungers and their thirst allayed they called for songs and dances those they said were the ornaments of feast the herald straight a harp carved full of artificial slight thrust into phemius's a learned singer's hand who till he much was urged on terms did stand but after played and sung with all his art telemachus to pallas then apart his ear inclining close that none might hear in this sort said my guest exceeding dear will you not sit incensed with what i say these are the cares these men take feast and play which easily they may use because they eat free and unpunished of another's meat and of a man's whose white bones wasting lie in some far region with the incessancy of showers poured down upon them lying ashore or in the seas washed naked who if he wore those bones with flesh and life and industry and these might here in ithaca set eye on him returned they all would wish to be either past other in celerity of feet and knees and not contend to exceed in golden garments but his virtues feed the fate of ill death nor is left to me the least hope of his life's recovery no not if any of the mortal race should tell me his return the cheerful face of his return day never will appear but tell me and let truth your witness bear who and from whence you are what city's birth what parents in what vessel set you forth 
and with what mariners arrived you here? I cannot think you a foot passenger. Recount then to me all, to teach me well, fit usage for your worth. And if it fell in chance now first that you thus see us here, or that in former passages you were my father's guest. For many men have been guests to my father. Studious of men his sociable nature ever was. On him again the gray-eyed maid did pass this kind reply. I'll answer, passing true, all thou hast asked. My birth his honor drew from wise Anchialus. The name I bear is Mentus, the commanding islander of all the Taphians, studious in the art of navigation, having touched this part with ship and men, of purpose to maintain course through the dark seas to the other languaged men. And Tamesis sustains the city's name for which my ship is bound, made known by fame for rich and brass, which my occasions need, and therefore bring I shining steel instead, which their use wants, yet makes my vessel's freight that near a ploughed field rides at anchor's weight. Apart this city, in the harbour called Rethrus, whose waves with Naeus's woods are walled, thy sire and I were ever mutual guests at either's house, still interchanging feasts. I glory in it. Ask when thou shalt see Laertes, the old hero, these of me from the beginning. He, men say, no more visits the city, but will needs deplore his son's believed loss in a private field. One old maid only at his hands to yield food to his life, as oft as labor makes his old limbs faint, which, though he creeps, he takes along a fruitful plain, set all with vines, which husbandman-like, though a king, he proins. But now I come to be thy father's guest. I hear he wanders while these wooers feast, and, as the immortals prompt me at this hour, I tell thee out of a prophetic power, not as professed a prophet, nor clear seen at all times what shall after chance to men, what I conceive for this time will be true. The gods' inflictions keep your sire from you. Divine Ulysses yet abides not dead above earth nor beneath nor buried in any seas as you late conceive, but with the broad sea sieged is kept alive, within an isle by rude and upland men, that in his spite his passage home detain, yet long it shall not be before he tread his country's dear earth, though solicited and held from his return with iron chains. For he hath wit to forge a world of trains, and will, of all, be sure to make good one for his return, so much relied upon. But tell me, and be true, art thou indeed so much a son as to be said the seed of Ithacus himself, exceeding much thy forehead and fair eyes at his form touch? For oftentimes we met, as you and I meet at this hour, before he did apply his powers for Troy, when other Grecian states in hollow ships were his associates. But since that time mine eyes could never see renowned Ulysses, nor met his with me. The wise Telemachus again replied, You shall with all I know be satisfied. My mother certain says I am his son. I know not, nor was ever simply known by any child the sure truth of his sire. But would my veins had took in living fire from some man happy rather than one wise, whom age might see seized of what youth may prize. But he, whoever of the mortal race is most unblessed, he holds my father's place. This, since you asked, I answer. She again. The gods sure did not make the future strain, both of thy race and days obscure to thee. Since thou wert born so of Penelope, the style may by thy after-acts be one of so great sire the high undoubted son. Say truth in this, then. What this feasting here? What all this rout? Is all this nuptial cheer? or else some friendly banquet made by thee? For here no shots are, where all sharers be. Past measure contumeliously this crew fare through thy house, which should the ingenuous view of any good or wise man come and find, impiety seeing played in every kind, he could not but through every vein be moved. Again Telemachus. My guest much loved, since you demand and sift these sights so far, I grant, twere fit a house so regular, rich and so faultless once in government, 
should still at all parts the same form present that gave it glory while her lord was here but now the gods that us displeasure bear have otherwise appointed and disgrace my father most of all the mortal race for whom i could not mourn so were he dead amongst his fellow captains slaughtered by common enemies or in the hands of his kind friends had ended his commands after he had egregiously bestowed his power and order in a war so vowed and to his tomb all greeks their grace had done that to all ages he might leave his son immortal honor but now harpies have digged in their gorges his abhorred grave obscure and glorious death had made his end and me for glories to all griefs contend nor shall i any more mourn him alone the gods have given me other cause of moan for look how many optimates remain in samos or the shores dulichian shades and kynthus or how many bear rule in the rough brows of this island here so many now my mother and this house at all parts make defame and ruinous and she her hateful nuptials nor denies nor will dispatch their importunities though she beholds them spoil still as they feast all my free house yields and the little rest of my dead sire in me perhaps intend to bring heir long to some untimely end this pallas sighed and answered oh said she absent ulysses is much missed by thee that on these shameless suitors he might lay his reekful hands should he now come and stay in thy court's first gates armed with helm and shield and two such darts as i have seen him wield when first i saw him in our taphian court feasting and doing his deserts disport when from ephorus he returned by us from ilus son to centaur memorus to whom he travelled through the watery dreads forbane to poison his sharp arrows heads that death but touched caused which he would not give because he feared the gods that ever lived would plague such death with death and yet their fear was to my father's bosom not so dear as was thy father's love for what he sought my loving father found him to a thought if such as then ulysses might but meet with these proud wooers all were at his feet but instant dead men and their nuptials would prove as bitter as their dying galls but these things in the gods knees are reposed if his return shall see with reek enclose these in his house or he return no more and therefore i advise thee to explore all ways thyself to set these wooers gone to which end give me fit attention to-morrow into solemn council call the greek heroes and declare to all the gods being witness what thy pleasure is command to towns of their nativity these frontless wooers if thy mother's mind stands to her second nuptial so inclined return she to her royal father's towers where the one of these may wed her and her dowers make rich and such may consort with grace so dear a daughter of so great a race and thee i warn as well if thou as well wilt hear and follow take thy best built sail with twenty oars manned and haste to inquire where the abode is of thy absent sire if any can inform thee or thine ear from jove the fame of his retreat may hear for chiefly jove gives all that honours men to pylos first be thy addression then to god like nestor thence to sparta haste to gold lock menelaus who was last of all the brass armed greeks that sailed from troy and try from both these if thou canst enjoy news of thy sire's returned life anywhere though sad thou sufferest in his search a year if of his death thou hearest return thou home and to his memory erect a tomb performing parent rites of feast and game pompous and such as best may fit his fame and then thy mother a fit husband give these past consider how thou mayest deprive of worthless life these wooers in thy house by open force or projects enginous things childish fit not thee the art so no more hast thou not heard how all men did adore divine orestes after he had slain aegisthus murdering by a treacherous train his famous father be then my most loved valiant and manly 
every way approved as great as he. I see thy person fit, noble thy mind, and excellent thy wit. All given thee so to use and manage here, that even past death they may their memories bear. In meantime, I'll descend to ship and men, that much expect me. Be observant, then, of my advice, and careful to maintain in equal acts thy royal father's reign. Telemachus replied, You ope, fair guest, a friend's heart in your speech, as well expressed as might a father serve to inform his son, all which sure place have in my memory won. Abide yet, though your voyage calls away, that, having bathed and dignified your stay with some more honour, you may yet beside delight your mind by being gratified with some rich present taken in your way, that, as a jewel, your respect may lay up in your treasury, bestowed by me, as free friends use to guests of such degree. Detain me not, said she, so much inclined to haste my voyage. What thy loved mind commands to give, at my return this way bestow on me, that I directly may convey it home, which more of price to me, the more it asks my recompense to thee. This said, away grey-eyed Minerva flew, like to a mounting lark, and did undo his mind with strength and boldness, and much more made him his father long for than before. And weighing better who his guest might be, he stood amazed, and thought a deity was there descended, to whose will he framed his powers at all parts, and went so inflamed amongst the wooers, who were silent set, to hear a poet sing the sad retreat the Greeks performed from Troy, which was from thence proclaimed by Pallas, pain of her offence. When which divine song was perceived to bear that mournful subject by the listening ear of wise Penelope, Icarus's seed, who from an upper room had given it heed, down she descended by a winding stair, not solely, but the state in her repair two maids of honour made. And when this queen of women stooped so low, she might be seen by all her wooers, in the door, aloof, entering the hall graced with a goodly roof, she stood in shade of graceful veils, implied about her beauties, on either side her honoured women. When to tears moved, thus she chid the sacred singer, Phemius, you know a number more of these great deeds of gods and men, that are the sacred seeds and proper subjects of a poet's song, and those due pleasures that to men belong. Besides these facts that furnish Troy's retreat, sing one of those to these, that round your seat they may with silence sit, and taste their wine. But cease this song, that through these ears of mine conveys deserved occasion to my heart of endless sorrows, of which the desert in me unmeasured is past all these men. So endless is the memory I retain, and so desertful is that memory." of such a man as hath a dignity so broad it spreads itself through all the pride of Greece and Argos. To the queen replied inspired Telemachus, Why thus envies my mother him that fits societies with so much harmony, to let him please his own mind in his will to honour these? For these ingenious and first sort of men, that do immediately from Jove retain their singing raptures, are by Jove as well inspired with choice of what their songs impel. Jove's will is free in it, and therefore theirs, nor is this man to blame that the repairs the Greeks make homeward sings. For his fresh muse men still most celebrate that sings most news. And therefore in his note your ears employ. For not Ulysses only lost in Troy the day of his return, but numbers more the deadly ruins of his fortunes bore. Go you then in, and take your work in hand, your web and distaff, and your maid's command to ply their fit work. Words to men are due, and those reproving counsels you pursue, and most to me of all men, since I bear the rule of all things that are managed here. She went amazed away, and in her heart laid up the wisdom Pallas did impart to her loved son so lately turned again up to her chamber, and no more would reign in manly counsels. To her women she applied her sway, and to the wooers he began new orders, other spirits berayed than those in spite of which the wooers swayed. And, whilst his mother's tears still washed her eyes, 
till grey minerva did those tears surprise with timely sleep and that her wooers did rouse rude tumult up through all the shady house disposed to sleep because their widow was telemachus this new given spirit did pass on their old insolence ho you that are my mother's wooers much too high ye bear your petulant spirits sit and while ye may enjoy me in your banquets see ye lay these loud notes down nor do this man the wrong because my mother hath disliked his song to grace her interruption tis a thing honest and honoured too to hear one sing numbers so like the gods in elegance as this man flows in by the morn's first light i call ye all before me in a court that i may clearly banish your resort with all your rudeness from these roofs of mine away and elsewhere in your feasts combine consume your own goods and make mutual feast at either's house or if ye still hold best and for your humours more sufficed fill to feed to spoil because unpunished still on other findings spoil but here i call the eternal gods to witness if it fall in my wish to reach once to be dealing wrecks by jove's high bounty these your present checks to what i give in charge shall add more reins to my revenge hereafter and the pains ye then must suffer shall pass all your pride ever to see redressed or qualified at this all bit their lips and did admire his words sent from him with such phrase and fire which so much moved them that antinous eupitheus's son cried out telemachus the gods i think have wrapped thee to this height of elocution and this great conceit of self-ability we all may pray that jove invest not in this kingdom sway thy forward forces which i see put forth a hot ambition in thee for thy birth be not offended he replied if i shall say i would assume this empery if jove gave leave you are not he that sings the rule of kingdoms is the worst of things nor is it ill at all to sway a throne a man may quickly gain possession of mighty riches make a wondrous prize set of his virtues but the dignities that deck a king there are enough beside in this circumfluous isle that want no pride to think them worthy of as young as i and old as you are an ascent so high my thoughts affect not dead is he that held desert of virtue to have so excelled but of these turrets i will take on me to be the absolute king and reign as free as did my father over all his hand left here in this house slaves to my command eurymachus the son of polybus to this made this reply telemachus the girlond of this kingdom let the knees of deity run for but the faculties this house is seized of and the turrets here thou shalt be lord of nor shall any bear the least part off of all thou dost possess as long as this land is no wilderness nor ruled by outlaws but give these their pass and tell me best of princes who he was that guested here so late from whence and what in any region boasted he his state his race his country brought he any news of thy returning father or for dues of monies to him made he fit repair how suddenly he rushed into the air nor would sustain to stay and make him known his port showed no debauched companion he answered the return of my love sire is past all hope and should rude fame inspire from any place a flattering messenger with news of his survival he should bear no least belief off from my desperate love which if a sacred prophet should approve called by my mother for her care's unrest it should not move me for my late fair guest he was of old my father's touching here from sea-girt taphos and for name doth bear mentas the son of wise anchialus and governs all the taphian studious of navigation this he said but knew it was a goddess these again withdrew to dances and attraction of the song and while their pleasures did the time prolong the sable even descended and did steep the lids of all men in desire of sleep telemachus into a room built high of his illustrious court and to the eye of circular prospect to his bed ascended and in his mind much weighty thought contended 
Before him, Eurycleia, that well knew all the observance of a handmaid's due, daughter to Opus Pesenorides, bore two bright torches, who did so much please Laertes in her prime, that for the price of twenty oxen he made merchandise of her rare beauties, and love's equal flame to her he felt as to his nuptial dame yet never durst he mix with her in bed so much the anger of his wife he fled she now grown old to young telemachus two torches bore and was obsequious past all his other maids and did apply her service to him from his infancy his well-built chamber reached she oped the door he on his bed sat the soft weeds he wore put off and to the diligent old maid gave all who fitly all in thick folds laid and hung them on a beam-pin near the bed that round about was rich embroidered then made she haste forth from him and did bring the door together with a silver ring and by a string a bar to it did pull he laid covered well with curled wool woven in silk quilts all night employed his mind about the task that pallas had designed End of the first book. The second book of the Odysseys of Homer. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf. The Second Book of the Odysseys of Homer, translated by George Chapman. The Argument Telemachus to court doth call the wooers, and commands them all to leave his house, and taking then from wise Minerva ship and men, and all things fit for him beside, that Eurycleia could provide for sea rights till he found his sire, he hoists sail when heaven stoops his fire. Another Argument beta the old maid's store the voyage cheers the ship leaves shore minerva steers now when with rosy fingers the early born and thrown through all the air appeared the morn ulysses loved son from his bed appeared his weeds put on and did about him gird his sword that thwart his shoulders hung and tied to his fair feet fair shoes and all parts plied for speedy readiness who, when he trod the open earth, to men showed like a god. The heralds then he straight charged to consort the curled-headed Greeks with loud calls to a court. They summoned, the other came in utmost haste, who all assembled, and in one heap placed he likewise came to council, and did bear in his fair hand his iron-headed spear, nor came alone, nor with men troops prepared, but two fleet dogs made both his train and guard. Pallas supplied with her high wisdom's grace that all men's wants supplies, state's painted face. His entering presence all men did admire, who took seat in the high throne of his sire, to which the grave peers gave him reverend way. Amongst whom, an Egyptian hero, crooked with age and full of skill, begun the speech to all who had a loved son that with divine ulysses did ascend his hollow fleet to troy to serve which end he kept fair horse and was a man at arms and in the cruel cyclops stern alarms his life lost by him in his hollow cave whose entrails opened his abhorred grave and made of him of all ulysses train his latest supper being latest slain his name was Antiphus, and this old man, this crooked grown, this wise Egyptian, had three sons more, of which one riotous a wooer was, and called Eurynomus. The other two took both his own wished course, yet both the best fates weighed not down the worse, but left the old man mindful still of moan, who, weeping, thus bespake the session. Here, Ithacensians, all I fitly say, since our divine Ulysses' parting day never was council called, nor session, and now by whom is this thus undergone? Whom did necessity so much compel of young or old? Hath any one heard tell of any coming army, that he thus now may openly take boldness to avow, first having heard it? 
or will any here some motion for the public good prefer some worth of note there is in this command and methinks it must be some good man's hand that's put to it that either hath direct means to assist or for his good effect hopes to be happy in the proof he makes and that jove grant whate'er he undertakes telemachus rejoicing much to hear the good hope and opinion men did bear of his young actions no longer sat but longed to approve what this man pointed at and made his first proof in a cause so good and in the council's chief place up he stood when straight pisenor herald to his sire and learned in councils felt his heart on fire to hear him speak and put into his hand the scepter that his father did command then to the old egyptian turned he spoke father not far he is that undertook to call this council whom you soon shall know myself whose wrongs my griefs will make me show am he that authored this assembly here nor have i heard of any army near of which being first told i might iterate nor for the public good can aught relate only mine own affairs all this procure that in my house a double ill endure one having lost a father so renowned whose kind rule once with your command was crowned the other is what much more doth augment his weighty loss the ruin imminent of all my house by it my goods all spent and of all this the wooers that are sons of our chief peers are the confusions importuning my mother's marriage against her will nor dares their blood's bold rage go to icarus's her father's court that his will asked in kind and comely sort he may endow his daughter with a dower and she consenting at his pleasure's power dispose her to a man that thus behaved may have fit grace and see her honour saved but these in none but my house all their lives resolve to spend slaughtering my sheep and beeves and with my fattest goats lay feast on feast my generous wine consuming as they list a world of things they spoil here wanting one that like ulysses quickly could get gone these peace plagues from his house that spoil like war whom my powers are unfit to urge so far myself immartial but had i the power my will should serve me to exempt this hour from out my lifetime for past patience base deeds are done here that exceed defence of any honour falling is my house which you should shame to see so ruinous reverence the censures that all good men give that dwell about you and for fear to live exposed to heaven's wrath that doth ever pay pains for joy's forfeit even by jove i pray or themis both which powers have to restrain or gather counsels that ye will abstain from further spoil and let me only waste in that most wretched grief i have embraced for my lost father and though i am free from meriting your outrage yet if he good man hath ever with a hostile heart done ill to any greek on me convert your like hostility and vengeance take of his ill on my life and all these make join in that justice but to see abuse those goods that do none ill but being ill-used exceeds all right yet better tis for me my whole possessions and my rents to see consumed by you than lose my life and all for on your rapine a revenge may fall while i live and so long i may complain about the city till my goods again oft asked may be with all amends repaid but in the mean space your misrule hath laid griefs on my bosom that can only speak and are denied the instant power of reek this said his sceptre gainst the ground he threw and tears stilled from him which moved all the crew the court struck silent not a man did dare to give a word that might offend his ear and tinnemus only in this sort replied high spoken and of spirit unpacified how have you shamed us in this speech of yours will you brand us for an offence not ours your mother first in craft is first in cause three years are past and near the fourth now draws since first she mocked the peers achaean all she made hope and promised every man sent for us ever 
left love show in naught, but in her heart concealed another thought. Besides, as curious in her craft, her loom she with a web charged, hard to overcome, and thus bespake us. Youths that seek my bed, since my divine spouse rests among the dead, hold on your suits, but till I end, at most, this funeral weed, lest what is done be lost. Besides, I propose that when the austere fate of bitter death shall take into his state Laertes, the hero, it shall deck his royal course, since I should suffer check in ill report of every common dame, if one so rich should show in death his shame. This speech she used, and this did soon persuade our gentle minds. But this a work she made so hugely long, undoing still in night by torches, all she did by day's broad light, that three years her deceit dived past our view, and made us think that all she feigned was true. But when the fourth year came, and those sly hours that still surprise at length dame's craftiest powers, one of her women, that knew all, disclosed the secret to us, that she still unloosed her whole day's fair affair in depth of night, and then no further she could force her slight. But of necessity, her work gave end. And thus, by me, doth every other friend, professing love to her, reply to thee, that even thyself, and all Greeks else may see that we offend not in our stay, but she. To free thy house, then, send her to her sire, commanding that her choice be left entire to his election, and one settled will. Nor let her vex with her illusions still her friends that woo her, standing on her wit, because wise Pallas hath given wills to it so full of art, and made her understand all works in fair skill of a lady's hand. But, for her working mind, we read none of all the old world, in which Greece has shown her rarest pieces, that could equal her. Tyro, Alcmena, and Mycena were to hold comparison in no degree, for solid brain with wise Penelope. And yet in her delays of us, she shows no profit skill with all the wit she owes. For all this time thy goods and victuals go to utter ruin, and shall ever so while thus the gods her glorious mind dispose. Glory herself may gain, but thou shalt lose thy longings even for necessary food, for we will never go where lies are good, nor any other where, till this delay she puts on all, she quits with the endless stay of some one of us, that to all the rest may give free farewell with his nuptial feast. The wise young prince replied, And Tinnous, I may by no means turn out of my house her that hath brought me forth and nourished me. Besides, if quick or dead my father be in any region, yet abides in doubt, and twill go hard, my means being so run out, to tender to Icarius again, if he again my mother must maintain in her retreat, the dower she brought with her, and then a double ill it will confer, both from my father and from God on me, when, thrust out of her house on her bent knee, my mother shall the horrid furies raise with imprecations, and all men dispraise my part in her exposure. Never then will I perform this counsel. If your spleen swell at my courses, once more I command your absence from my house. Some other's hand charge with your banquets, on your own goods eat, and either other mutually entreat at either of your houses with your feast. But if ye still esteem more sweet and best another's spoil, so you still reckless live. Nah, vermin-like, things sacred, no laws give to your devouring. It remains that I invoke each ever-living deity, and vow, if Jove shall deign in any date power of like pains for pleasure so past rate. From thenceforth look, where ye have reveled so unreaked, your ruins all shall undergo. Thus spake Telemachus. To assure whose threat, far-seeing Jove upon their pinion set two eagles from the high brows of a hill, that mounted on the winds, together still their strokes extended, but arriving now amidst the council, over every brow shook their thick wings, and threatening death's cold fears their necks and cheeks tore with their eager sears. Then on the court's right hand away they flew, above both court and city with whose view and study what events they might foretell the council into admiration fell 
the old hero halitherses then the son of nestor that of all old men his peers in that court only could foresee by flight of fowls man's fixed destiny twixt them and their amaze this interposed here ithacensians all your doubts disclosed the wooers most are touched in this ostent to whom are dangers great and imminent for now not long more shall ulysses bear lack of his most loved but fill some place near addressing to these wooers fate and death and many more this mischief menaceth of us inhabiting this famous isle let us consult yet in this long forewhile how to ourselves we may prevent this ill let these men rest secure and revel still though they might find it safer if with us they would in time prevent what threats them thus since not without sure trial i foretell these coming storms but know their issue well for to ulysses all things have a vent as i foretold him when for ilion went the whole greek fleet together and with them the abundant in all councils took the stream i told him that when much ill he had passed and all his men were lost he should at last the twentieth year turn home to all unknown all which effects are to perfection grown eurymachus the son of polybus opposed this man's presage and answered thus hence great in years go prophesy at home thy children teach to shun their ills to come in these superior far to thee am i the world of fowls beneath the sunbeams fly that are not fit to inform a prophecy besides ulysses perished long ago and would thy fates to thee had destined so since so thy so much prophecy had spared thy wronging of our rights which for reward expected home with thee hath summoned us with the anger of telemachus but this i will presage which shall be true if any spark of anger chance to ensue thy much old art in these deep auguries in this young man incensed by thy lies even to himself his anger shall confer the greater anguish and thine own ends err from all their objects and besides thine age shall feel a pain to make thee curse presage with worthy cause for it shall touch thee near but i will soon give end to all our fear preventing whatsoever chance can fall in my suit to the young prince for us all to send his mother to her father's house that he may sort her out a worthy spouse and such a dower bestow as may befit one loved to leave her friends and follow it before which course be i believe that none of all the greeks will cease the ambition of such a match for chance what can to us we no man fear no not telemachus though ne'er so greatly spoken nor care we for any threats of austere prophecy which thou old dotard vaunt'st of so in vain and thus shalt thou in much more hate remain for still the gods shall bear their ill expense nor ever be disposed by competence till with her nuptials she dismiss our suits our whole lives days shall sow hopes for such fruits her virtues we contend to nor will go to any other be she never so worthy of us and all the worth we owe he answered him eurymachus and all ye generous wooers now in general i see your brave resolves and will no more make speech of these points and much less implore it is enough that all the grecians here and all the gods besides just witness bear what friendly premonitions have been spent on your forbearance and their vain event yet with my other friends let love prevail to fit me with a vessel free of sail and twenty men that may divide to me my ready passage through the yielding sea for sparta and the mathuan pilus's shore i am now bound in purpose to explore my long lacked father and to try if fame or jove most author of man's honoured name with his return in life may glad mine ear though toiled in that proof i sustain a year if dead i hear him nor of more state here retired to my loved country i will rear a sepulchre to him and celebrate such royal parent rites as fits his state and then my mother to a spouse dispose this said he sat and to the rest arose mentor 
that was ulysses chosen friend to whom when he set forth he did commend his complete family and whom he willed to see the mind of his old sire fulfilled all things conserving safe till his retreat who tender of his charge and seeing so set in slight care of their king his subjects there suffering his son so much contempt to bear thus gravely and with zeal to him began no more let any sceptre-bearing man benevolent or mild or human be nor in his mind form acts of piety but ever feed on blood and facts unjust commit even to the full swing of his lust since of divine ulysses no man now of all his subjects any thought doth show all whom he governed and became to them rather than one that wore a diadem a most indulgent father but for all that can touch me within no envy fall these insolent wooers that in violent kind commit things foul by the ill wit of the mind and with the hazard of their heads devour ulysses house since his returning hour they hold past hope but it affects me much ye dull plebeians that all this doth touch your free states nothing who struck dumb afford these wooers not so much reek as a word though few and you with only number might extinguish to them the profaned light evanor's son leocritus replied mentor the railer made a fool with pride what language givest thou that would quiet us with putting us in storm exciting thus the rout against us who though more than we should find it no easy victory to drive men habited in feast from feasts no not if ithacus himself such guests should come and find so furnishing his court and hope to force them from so sweet a fort his wife should little joy in his arrive though much she wants him for where she alive would hers enjoy their death should claim his rights he must be conquered that with many fights thou speak'st unfit things to their labours then disperse these people and let these two men mentor and halitherses that so boast from the beginning to have governed most in friendship of the father to the son confirm the course he now affects to run but my mind says that if he would but use a little patience he should hear hear news of all things that his wish would understand but no good hope for of the course in hand this said the council rose when every peer and all the people in dispersion were to houses of their own the wooers yet made to ulysses house their old retreat telemachus apart from all the priests prepared to shore and in the aged seas his fair hands washed did thus to pallas pray hear me o goddess that but yesterday didst deign access to me at home and lay grave charge on me to take ship and inquire along the dark seas for mine absent sire which all the greeks oppose amongst whom most those that are proud still at another's cost past measure and the civil rights of men my mother's wooers my repulse maintain thus spake he praying when close to him came pallas resembling mentor both in frame of voice and person and advised him thus those wooers well might know telemachus thou wilt not ever weak and childish be if to thee be instilled the faculty of mind and body that thy father graced and if like him there be in thee enchanced virtue to give words works and works their end this voyage that to them thou didst commend shall not so quickly as they idly ween be vain or given up for their opposite spleen but if ulysses nor penelope were thy true parents i then hope in thee of no more urging thy attempt in hand for few that rightly bred on both sides stand are like their parents many that are worse and most few better those then that the nurse or mother call true-born yet are not so like worthy sires much less are like to grow but thou showest now that in thee fades not quite thy father's wisdom and that future light shall therefore show thee far from being unwise or touched with stain of bastard cowardice hope therefore says that thou wilt to the end pursue the brave act thou didst erst intend but for the foolish wooers 
they bewray they neither counsel have nor soul since they are neither wise nor just and so must needs rest ignorant how black above their heads fate hovers holding death that one sole day will make enough to make them all away for thee the way thou wishest shall no more fly thee a step i that have been before thy father's friend thine likewise now will be provide thy ship myself and follow thee go thou then home and soothe each wooer's vein but underhand fit all things for the main wine in as strong and sweet casks as you can and meal the very marrow of a man which put in good sure leather sacks and see that with sweet food sweet vessels still agree i from the people straight will press for you free voluntaries and for ships a now sea-circled ithaca contains both new and old built all which i'll exactly view and choose what one soever most doth please which rigged we'll straight launch and assay the seas this spake jove's daughter pallas whose voice heard no more telemachus her charge deferred but hasted home and sad at heart did see amidst his hall the insulting wooers flee goats and roast swine mongst whom antinous careless discovering in telemachus his grudge to see them laughed met took his hand and said high spoken with the mind so manned come do as we do put not up your spirits with these low trifles nor our loving merits in gall of any hateful purpose steep but eat egregiously and drink as deep the things thou think'st on all at full shall be by the archives thought on and perform to thee ship and choice oars that in a trice will land thy hasty fleet on heavenly pylos's sand and at the fame of thy illustrious sire he answered men whom pride did so inspire are not fit consorts for an humble guest nor are constrained men merry at their feast it's not enough that all this time ye have oped in your entrails my chief goods a grave and while i was a child made me partake my now more growth more grown my mind doth make and hearing speak more judging men than you perceive how much i was misgoverned now i now will try if i can bring ye home an ill fate to consort you if it come from pylos or amongst the people here but thither i resolve and know that there i shall not touch in vain nor will i stay though in a merchant ship i steer my way which shows in your sights best since me ye know incapable of ship or men to row this said his hand he coyly snatched away from forth antinous's hand the rest the day spent through the house with banquets some with jests and some with railings dignifying their feasts to whom a jest proud youth the wit began telemachus will kill us every man from sparta to the very pillion sand he will raise aids to his impetuous hand oh he affects it strangely or he means to search ephora's fat shores and from thence bring deathful poisons which amongst our bowls will make a general shipwreck of our souls another said alas who knows but he once gone and erring like his sire at sea may perish like him far from aid of friends and so he makes us work for all the ends left of his goods here we shall share the house left to his mother and her chosen spouse thus they while he a room ascended high and large built by his father where did lie gold and brass heaped up and in coffers were rich robes sweet store of odorous oils and there stood tons of sweet old wines along the wall neat and divine drink kept to cheer with all ulysses old heart if he turned again from labors fatal to him to sustain the doors of plank were their clothes exquisite kept with a double key and day and night a woman locked within and that was she who all trust had for her sufficiency old eurycleia one of opus race son to pisanor and in passing grace with gray minerva her the prince did call and said nurse draw me the most sweet of all the wine thou keepst next that which for my sire thy care reserves in hope he shall retire 
twelve vessels fill me forth and stop them well then into well sewed sacks of fine ground meal pour twenty measures nor to any one but thee thyself let this design be known all this see got together i it all in night will fetch off when my mother shall ascend her high room and for sleep prepare sparta and pylos i must see in care to find my father out eurycleia cried and asked with tears why is your mind applied dear son to this course whither will you go so far off leave us and beloved so so only and the sole hope of your race royal ulysses far from the embrace of his kind country in a land unknown is dead and you from your loved country gone the wooers will with some deceit essay to your destruction making then their prey of all your goods wherein your own you are strong make sure abode it fits not you so young to suffer so much by the aged seas and err in such a wayless wilderness be cheered love nurse said he for not without the will of god go my attempts about swear therefore not to wound my mother's ears with word of this before from heaven appears the eleventh or twelfth light or herself shall please to ask me or hears me put to seas lest her fair body with her woe be war to this the great oath of the gods she swore which having sworn and of it every due performed to full to vessels wine she drew and into well sewed sacks poured foody meal in meantime he with cunning to conceal all thought of this from others himself bore in broad house with the wooers as before then grey-eyed pallas other thoughts did own and like telemachus trod through the town commanding all his men in the even to be aboard his ship again then questioned she nanon famed for aged phronius's son about his ship who all things to be done assured her freely should the sun then set and sable shadows slid through every street when forth they launched and soon aboard did bring all arms and choice of every needful thing that fits a well-rigged ship the goddess then stood in the port's extreme part where her men nobly appointed thick about her came whose every breast she did with spirit and flame yet still fresh projects laid the grey-eyed dame straight to the house she hasted and sweet sleep poured on each wooer which so laid in steep their drowsy temples that each brow did nod as all were drinking and each hand his load the cup let fall all start up and to bed nor more would watch when sleep so surfeited their leaden eyelids then did pallas call telemachus in body voice and all resembling mentor from his native nest and said that all his armed men were addressed to use their oars and all expected now he should the spirit of a soldier show come then said she no more let us defer our honoured action then she took on her a ravished spirit and led as she did leap and he her most haste took out step by step arrived at sea in ship they found ashore the soldiers that their fashioned long hair wore to whom the prince said come my friends let's bring our voyages provisions everything is heaped together in our court and none no not my mother nor her maids but one knows our intention this expressed he led the soldiers close together followed and all together brought aboard their store aboard the prince went pallas still before sat at the stern he close to her the men up hasted after he and pallas then put from the shore his soldiers then he bade see all their arms fit which they heard and had a beechen mast then in the hollow base they put and hoisted fixed it in its place with cables and with well-wreathed halsers hoised their white sails which grey pallas now employs with full and four gales through the dark deep main the purple waves so swift cut roared again against the ship's sides that now ran and ploughed the rugged seas up then the men bestowed their arms about the ship and sacrifice with crowned wine cups to the endless deities they offered up of all yet throned above they most observed the grey-eyed seed of jove 
who from the evening till the morning rose and all day long their voyage did dispose end of the second book the third book of the odysseys of homer this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by phil schempf the third book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman the argument telemachus and heaven's wise dame that never husband had now came to nestor who his either guest received at the religious feast he made to neptune on his shore and there told what was done before the trojan turrets and the state of all the greeks since ilion's fate this book these three of greatest place doth serve with many a varied grace which past minerva takes her leave whose state when nestor doth perceive with sacrifice he makes it known where many a pleasing rite is shown which done telemachus hath gained a chariot of him who ordained pisistratus his son his guide to sparta and when starry-eyed the ample heaven began to be all house rites to afford them free in ferris diocles did please his surname ortilochides another argument gamma ulysses son with nestor lies to sparta gone thence pallas flies the sun now left the great and goodly lake and to the firm heaven bright ascent did make to shine as well upon the mortal birth inhabiting the ploughed life-giving earth as on the ever treaders upon death and now to pylos that so garnisheth herself with buildings old neleus's town the prince and goddess come had strange sights shown for on the marine shore the people there to neptune that the azure locks doth wear beeves that were wholly black gave holy flame nine seats of state they made to his high name and every seat set with five hundred men and each five hundred was to furnish then with nine black oxen every sacred seat these of the entrails only pleased to eat and to the god inflame the fleshy thighs by this time pallas with sparkling eyes and he she led within the haven bore struck sail cast anchor and trod both the shore she first he after then said pallas now no more befits thee the least bashful brow to embolden which this act is put on thee to seek thy father both at shore and sea and learn in what clime he abides so close or in the power of what fate doth repose come then go right to nestor let us see if in his bosom any counsel be that may inform us pray him not to trace the common courtship and to speak in grace of the demander but to tell the truth which will delight him and commend thy youth for such prevention for he loves no lies nor will report them being truly wise he answered mentor how alas shall i present myself how greet his gravity my youth by no means that ripe form affords that can digest my mind's instinct in words wise and beseeming the ears of one so sage youth of most hope blush to use words with age she said thy mind will some conceit impress and something god will prompt thy towardness for i suppose thy birth and breeding too were not in spite of what the gods could do this said she swiftly went before and he her steps made guides and followed instantly when soon they reached the pillion throngs and seats where nestor with his son sat and the meats that for the feast served round about them were adherents dressing all their sacred cheer being roast and boiled meats when the pillion saw these strangers come in thrust did all the men draw about their entry took their hands and prayed they both would sit their entry first essayed by nestor's son pisistratus in grace of whose repair he gave them honoured place betwixt his sire and brother thrasymed who sat at feast on soft fells that were spread along the sea sands curved and reached to them parts of the inwards and did make a stream of sprightly wine into a golden bowl 
which to minerva with a gentle soul he gave and thus spake ere you eat fair guest invoke the sea's king of whose sacred feasts your travel hither make ye partners now when sacrificing as becomes bestow this bowl of sweet wine on your friend that he may likewise use these rites of piety for i suppose his youth doth prayers use since all men need the gods but you i chose first in this cup's disposure since his years seem short of yours who more like me appears thus gave he her the cup of pleasant wine and since a wise and just man did design the golden bowl first to her free receipt even to the goddess it did add delight who thus invoked hear thou whose vast embrace ensphears the whole earth nor disdain thy grace to us that ask it in performing this to nestor first and these fair sons of his vouchsafe all honour and next them bestow on all these pillions that have offered now this most renowned hecatomb to thee remuneration fit for them and free and lastly deign telemachus and me the work perform for whose effect we came our safe return both with our ship and fame thus prayed she and herself herself obeyed in the end performing all for which she prayed and now to pray and do as she had done she gave the fair round bowl to ulysses son the meat then dressed and drawn and served to each guest they celebrated a most sumptuous feast when appetite to wine and food allayed horse taming nestor then began and said now life's desire is served as far as fair time fits me to inquire what guests these are fair guests what are ye and for what coast tries your ship the moist deeps forfeit merchandise or rudely coast ye like our men of prize the rough seas tempting desperately erring the ill of others in their good conferring the wise prince now his boldness did begin for pallas self had hardened him within by this device of travel to explore his absent father which two girlons wore his good by manage of his spirits and then to gain him high grace in the accounts of men o nestor still in whom neleus lives and all the glory of the greeks survives you ask from whence we are and i relate from ithaca whose seat is situate where nias the renowned mountain rears his haughty forehead and the honour bears to be our sea mark we essayed the waves the business i must tell our own good craves and not the public i am come to inquire if in the fame that best men doth inspire of my most suffering father i may hear some truth of his estate now who did bear the name being joined in fight with you alone to even with earth the height of ilion of all men else that any name did bear and fought for troy the several ends we hear but his death jove keeps from the world unknown the certain fame thereof being told by none if on the continent by enemies slain or with the waves eat of the ravenous main for his love tis that to your knees i sue that you would please out of your own clear view to assure his sad end or say if your ear hath heard of the unhappy wanderer to too much sorrow whom his mother bore you then by all your bounties i implore if ever to you deed or word hath stood by my good father promised rendered good amongst the trojans where ye both have tried the grecian sufferance that in not applied to your respect or pity you will glose but unclothed truth to my desires disclose o oh, much loved said he since you renew remembrance of the miseries that grew upon our still in strength opposing greece amongst troy's people i must touch a piece of all our woes there either in the men achilles brought by sea and led to gain about the country or in us that fought about the city where to death were brought all our chief men as many as were there there mars like ajax lies achilles there there the in council like the gods his friend there my dear son antilochus took end past measure swift of foot and stayed in fight a number more than ills felt infinite of which to reckon all what mortal man if five or six years you should stay here can serve such inquiry you would back again affected with unsufferable pain before you heard it nine years sieged we them with all the depth and slight of stratagem that could be thought 
ill knit to ill past end yet still they toiled us nor would yet jove send rest to our labours nor will scarcely yet but no man live that would in public set his wisdom by ulysses policy as thought his equal so excessively he stood superior all ways if you be his son indeed mine eyes even ravish me to admiration and in all consent your speech puts on his speech's ornament nor would one say that one so young could use unless his son a rhetoric so profuse and while we lived together he and i never in speech maintained diversity nor sat in council but by one soul led with spirit and prudent counsel furnished the greeks at all hours that with fairest course what best became them they might put in force but when troy's high towers we had levelled thus we put to sea and god divided us and then did jove our sad retreat devise for all the greeks were neither just nor wise and therefore many felt so sharp a fate sent from minerva's most pernicious hate whose mighty father can do fearful things by whose help she betwixt the brother kings let fall contention who in council met in vain and timeless when the sun was set and all the greeks called that came charged with wine yet then the kings would utter their design and why they summoned menelaus he put all in mind of home and cried to see but agamemnon stood on contraries whose will was they should stay and sacrifice whole hecatombs to pallas to forego her high wrath to them fool that did not know she would not so be won for not with ease the eternal gods are turned from what they please so they divided on foul language stood the greeks in huge rout rose their wine heat blood two ways affecting and that night sleep too we turned to studying either other's woe when jove besides made ready woes enow morn came we launched and in our ships did stow our goods and fair girt women half our men the people's guide atrides did contain and half being now aboard put forth to sea a most free gale gave all ships prosperous way god settled then the huge whale-bearing lake and tenedus we reached where for time's sake we did divine rites to the gods but jove inexorable still bore yet no love to our return but did again excite a second sad contention that turned quite a great part of us back to sea again which were the abundant in all counsels man your matchless father who to gratify the great atrides back to him did fly but i fled all with all that followed me because i knew god studied misery to hurl amongst us with me likewise fled marshal tydides i the men he led gat to go with him winds our fleet did bring to lesbos where the yellow-headed king though late yet found us as we put to choice a tedious voyage if we sail should hoise above rough caius left on our left hand to the isle of syria or to that rugged land sail under and for windy mimas steer we asked of god that some ostent might clear our cloudy business who gave us sign and charge that all should in the middle line the sea cut for eubia that with speed our long sustained in fortune might be freed then did a whistling wind begin to rise and swiftly we flew through the fishy skies till to geristus we in night were brought where through the broad sea since we safe had wrought at neptune's alders many solid thighs of slaughtered bulls we burned for sacrifice the fourth day came when tydeus's son did greet the haven of argos with his complete fleet but i for pylos straight steered on my course nor ever left the wind his foreright force since god foresent it first and thus i came dear son to pylos uninformed by fame nor no one saved by fate or overcome whom i have heard of since set here at home as fits thou shalt be taught not left unshown the expert spearman every myrmidon led by the brave heir of the mighty souled unpeered achilles safe of home got hold safe philoctetes poeon's famous seed and safe idomius his men led to his home crete who fled the armed field of whom yet none the sea from him withheld 
Atrides, you have both heard, though ye be his far-off dwellers, what an end he had, done by Aegisthus to a bitter death, who miserably paid for forced breath, Atrides leaving a good son, that died in blood of that deceitful parricide his reekful sword. And thou, my friend, as he for this hath his fame, the like spirit in thee assume at all parts. Fair and great, I see thou art in all hope. Make it good to the end, that after times as much may thee commend. He answered, O thou greatest grace of Greece, Orestes made that reek his masterpiece, and him the Greeks will give a master praise, verse finding him to last all after days, and would to God the gods would favor me with his performance, that my injury done by my mother's wooers, being so foul, I might revenge upon their every soul, who, pressing me with contumelies, dare such things as past the power of utterance are, but heaven's great powers have graced my destiny with no such honor. Both my sire and I are born to suffer everlastingly. Because you name those wooers, friend, said he, report says many such, in spite of thee wooing thy mother, in thy house commit the ills thou namest. But say, proceedeth it from will in thee to bear so foul a foil, or from thy subjects' hate that wish thy spoil and will not aid thee, since their spirits rely against thy rule on some grave augury. What know they, but at length thy father may come, and with violence their violence pay, or he alone, or all the Greeks with him? But if Minerva now did so esteem thee as thy father in times past, whom, past all measure, she with glorious favours graced, amongst the Trojans, where we suffered so, Oh, I did never see in such clear show the gods so grace a man as she to him, to all our eyes appeared in all her trim. If so, I say she would be pleased to love, and that her mind's care thou so much couldst move, as did thy father, every man of these would lose in death their seeking marriages. O oh, father, answered he, you make amaze seize me throughout. Beyond the height of phrase you raise expression but twill never be that i shall move in any deity so blessed an honour not by any means if hope should prompt me or blind confidence the gods of fools or every deity should will it for tis past my destiny the burning eye damned answered what a speech hast passed the teeth guard nature gave to teach fit questions of thy words before they fly god easily can when to mortal eye he's furthest off a mortal satisfy, and does the more still, for thy cared-for sire I rather wish, that I might home retire, after my sufferance of a world of woes, far off, and then my glad eyes might disclose the day of my return, then straight retire, and perish standing by my household fire, as Agamemnon did, that lost his life by false Aegisthus, and his falser wife, for death to come at length, tis due to all, nor can the gods themselves, when fate shall call their most loved man, extend his vital breath beyond the fixed bounds of abhorred death. Mentor, said he, let's dwell no more on this, although in us the sorrow pious is. No such return as we wish, fates bequeath my erring father, whom a present death the deathless have decreed. I now use speech that tends to other purpose, and beseech instruction of grave Nestor, since he flows past shore in all experience, and knows the slights and wisdoms, and whose heights aspire others, as well as my commended sire, whom fame reports to have commanded three ages of men, and doth in sight to me show like the immortals. Nestor, the renowned of old Neleus, make the clear truth known how the most great in empire, Atreus's son, sustained the act of his destruction. Where then was Menelaus? How was it that false Aegisthus, being so far unfit a match for him, could his death so enforce? Was he not then in Argos, or his course with men so left, to let a coward breathe spirit enough to dare his brother's death? I tell thee truth in all, fair son, said he, Right well was this event conceived by thee. 
if menelaus in his brother's house had found the idle liver with his spouse arrived from troy he had not lived nor dead had the digged heap poured on his lustful head but fowls and dogs had torn him in the fields far off of argos not a dame it yields had given him any tear so foul his fact showed even to women us troy's wars had racked to every sinew's sufferance while he in argos uplands lived from those works free and agamemnon's wife with force of word flattered and softened who at first abhorred a fact so infamous the heavenly dame a good mind had but was in blood to blame there was a poet to whose care the king his queen committed and in everything when he from troy went charged him to apply himself in all guard to her dignity but when strong fate so wrapped in her effects that she resolved to leave her fit respects into a desert isle her guardian led there left the rapine of the vultures fed then brought he willing home his will's one prize on sacred altars offered many thighs hung in the gods feigns many ornaments garments and gold that he had the vast events of such a labour to his wish had brought as neither fell into his hope nor thought at last from troy sailed sparta's king and i both holding her untouched and that his eye might see no worse of her when both were blown to sacred sunium of minerva's town the goodly promontory with his shaft severe augur apollo slew him that did steer atrides ship as he the stern did guide and she the full speed of her sail applied he was a man that nations of men excelled in safe guide of a vessel when a tempest rushed in on the ruffled seas his name was frontus oneterides and thus was menelaus held from home whose way he thirsted so to overcome to give his friend the earth being his pursuit and all his exequies to execute but sailing still the wine-hued seas to reach some shore for fit performance he did fetch the steep mount of the malians and there with open voice offended jupiter proclaimed the voyage his repugnant mind and poured the puffs out of a shrieking wind that nourished billows heightened like to hills and with the fleet's division fulfils his hate proclaimed upon a part of crete casting the navy where the sea waves meet rough jardanus and where the sidons live there is a rock on which the sea doth drive bare and all broken on the confined set of gortes that the dark seas likewise fret and hither sent the south a horrid drift of waves against the top that was the left of that torn cliff as far as festus's strand a little stone the great sea's rage did stand the men here driven scraped hard the ship's sore shocks the ships themselves being racked against the rocks save only five that blue forecastles bore which wind and water cast on egypt's shore when he there victualling well and store of gold aboard his ships brought his wild way did hold and the other languaged men was forced to roam mean space aegisthus made sad work at home and slew his brother forcing to his sway atrides subjects and did seven years lay his yoke upon the rich mycenaean state but in the eighth and to his affrighting fate divine orestes home from athens came and what his royal father felt the same he made the false aegisthus groan beneath death evermore is the reward of death thus having slain him a sepulchre feast he made the argives for his lustful guest and for his mother whom he did detest the self-same day upon him stole the king good at martial shout and goods did bring as many as his freighted fleet could bear but thou my son too long by no means e'er thy goods left free for many a spoilful guest lest they consume some and divide the rest and thou perhaps besides thy voyage lose to menelaus yet thy course dispose i wish and charge thee who but late arrived from such a shore and men as to have lived in a return from them that never thought and whom black whirlwinds violently brought within a sea so vast that in a year not any fowl could pass it anywhere so huge and horrid was it 
but go thou with ship and men or if thou pleasest now to pass by land there shall be brought for thee both horse and chariot and thy guides shall be my sons themselves to sparta the divine and to the king whose locks like amber shine entreat the truth of him nor loves he lies wisdom in truth is and he's passing wise this said the sun went down and up rose night when pallas spake o father all good right bear thy directions but divide we now the sacrifices tongues mix wines and vow to neptune and the other ever blessed that having sacrificed we may to rest the fit hour runs now light dives out of date at sacred feasts we must not sit too late she said they heard the heralds water gave the youths crowned cups with wine and let all have their equal shares beginning from the cup their parting banquet all the tongues cut up the fire they gave them sacrificed and rose wine and divine rites used to each dispose minerva and telemachus desired they might to ship be with his leave retired he moved with that provoked thus their abodes now jove forbid and all the long-lived gods your leaving me to sleep aboard a ship as i had drunk of poor Penia's whip even to my nakedness and had nor sheet nor covering in my house that warm nor sweet a guest nor i myself had means to sleep where i both weeds and wealthy coverings keep for all my guests nor shall fame ever say the dear son of the man ulysses lay all night a-shipboard here while my days shine or in my court while any son of mine enjoys survival who shall guests receive whomever my house hath a nook to leave my much-loved father said minerva well all this becomes thee but persuade to dwell this night with thee thy son telemachus for more convenient is the course for us that he may follow to thy house and rest and i may board our black sail that addressed at all parts i may make our men and cheer all with my presence since of all men there i boast myself the senior the others are youths they attend in free and friendly care great-souled telemachus and are his peers in fresh similitude of form and years for their conferments i will therefore now sleep in our black bark but when light shall show his silver forehead i intend my way amongst the cockans men that are to pay a debt to me nor small nor new for this take you him home who in the morn dismiss with chariot and your sons and give him horse ablest in strength and of speediest course this said away she flew form like the fowl men call the ossifrage when every soul amaze invaded even the old man admired the youth's hand took and said o oh, most desired my hope says thy proof will no coward show nor one unskilled in war when deities now so young attend thee and become thy guides nor any of the heavens house states besides but tritogenia's self the seed of jove the great in prey that did in honour move so much about thy father amongst all the grecian army fairest queen let fall on me like favours give me good renown which as on me on my loved wife let down and all my children i will burn to thee an ox right bread broad-headed and yoke free to no man's hand yet humbled him will i his horns in gold hid give thy deity thus prayed he and she heard and home he led his sons and all his heaps of kindred who entering his court royal every one he marshalled in his several seat and throne and every one so kindly come he gave his sweet wine cup which none was let to have before his eleventh year landed him from troy which now the butlerus had leave to employ who therefore pierced it and did give it vent of this the old duke did a cup present to every guest made his maid many a prayer that wears the shield fringed with his nurse's hair and gave her sacrifice with this rich wine and food sufficed sleep all eyes did decline and all for home went but his court alone telemachus divine ulysses son must make his lodging or not please his heart a bed all chequered with elaborate art 
within a portico that rung like brass he brought his guest to and his bed fear was pisistratus the martial guide of men that lived of all his sons unwed till then himself lay in a by-room far above his bed made by his barren wife his love the rosy-fingered morn no sooner shone but up he rose took air and sat upon a seat of white and goodly polished stone that such a gloss as richest ointments wore before his high gates where the counsellor that matched the gods his father used to sit who now by fate forced stooped as low as it and here sat nestor holding in his hands a sceptre and about him round did stand as early up his son's troop perseus the godlike thrasymed and aretus echaphron stratius and sixth and last pisistratus and by him half embraced still as they came divine telemachus to these spake nestor old gerenius haste loved sons and do me a desire that first of all the gods i may aspire to pallas's favour who vouchsafed to me at neptune's feast her sight so openly let one to field go and an ox with speed cause hither brought which let the herdsman lead another to my dear guest vessel go and all his soldiers bring save only two a third the smith that works in gold command laertius to attend and lend his hand to plate the both horns round about with gold the rest remain here close but first see told the maids within that they prepare a feast set seats through all the court see straight address the purest water and get fuel felled this said not one but in the service held officious hand the ox came led from field the soldiers trooped from ship the smith he came and those tools brought that serve the actual frame his art conceived brought anvil hammers brought fair tongs and all with which the gold was wrought minerva likewise came to set the crown on that kind sacrifice and make her own then the old knight nestor gave the smith the gold with which he straight did both the horns enfold and trimmed the offering so the goddess joyed about which thus were nestor's sons employed divine echaphron and fair stratius held both the horns the water odorous in which they wash what to the rites was vowed aretus in the cauldron all bestowed with herbs and flowers served in from the holy room where all were dressed and whence the rites must come and after him a hallowed virgin came that brought the barley cake and blew the flame the axe with which the ox should both be felled and cut forth thrasymed stood by and held perseus the vessel held that should retain the purple liquor of the offering slain then washed the pious father then the cake of barley salt and oil made took and break asked many a boon of pallas and the state of all the offering did initiate in three parts cutting off the hair and cast amidst the flame all the invocation passed and all the cake broke manly thrasymed stood near and sure and such a blow he laid aloft the offering that to earth he sunk his neck nerves sundered and his spirits shrunk out shrieked the daughters daughter-in-laws and wife of three-aged nestor who had eldest life of climate's daughters chaste eurydice the ox on broad earth then laid laterally they held while duke pisistratus the throat dissolved and set the sable blood afloat then the life the bones left instantly they cut him up a part flew either thigh that with the fat they dubbed with art alone the throat brisk and the sweet bread pricking on then nestor broiled them on the coal turned wood poured black wine on and by him young men stood that spits fine pointed held on which when burned the solid thighs were they transfixed and turned the inwards cut in cantles which the meat vowed to the gods consumed they roast and eat in mean space polycaste called the fair nestor's youngest daughter bathed ulysses heir whom having cleansed and with rich balms bespread she cast a white shirt 
quickly over his head then his weeds put on when forth he went and did the person of a god present came and by nestor took his honoured seat this pastor of the people then the meat of all the spare parts roasted off they drew sat and fell too but soon the temperate few rose and in golden bowls filled others wine till when the rest felt thirst of feast decline nestor his sons bad fetch his high-maned horse and them in chariot join to run the course the prince resolved obeyed as soon as heard was nestor by his sons who straight prepared both horse and chariot she that kept the store both bread and wine and all such viands more as should the feast of jove fed kings compose pervade the voyage to the rich coach rose ulysses son and close to him ascended the duke pisistratus the reins intended and scourged to force to field who freely flew and left the town that far her splendour threw both holding yoke and shook it all the day but now the sun set darkening every way when they to ferris came and in the house of diocles the son to arsilochus whom flood alpheus got slept all that night who gave them each due hospitable right but when the rosy-fingered morn arose they went to coach and did their horse and clothes drave forth the forecourt and the porch that yields each breath a sound and to the fruitful fields rode scourging still their willing flying steeds who strenuously perform their wonted speeds their journey ending just when sun went down and shadows always through the earth were thrown end of the third book The Fourth Book of the Odysseys of Homer, Part One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf. The Fourth Book of the Odysseys of Homer, Part One. Translated by George Chapman. The Argument. Receive now in the Spartan court telemachus prefers report to menelaus of the throng of wooers with him and their wrong atrides tells the greeks retreat and doth a prophecy repeat that proteus made by which he knew his brother's death and then doth show how with calypso lived the sire of his young guest the wooers conspire their prince's death whose treachery known penelope in tears doth drown whom Pallas by a dream doth cheer, and in similitude appear a fair Iphthymia, known to be the sister of Penelope. Another argument. Delta. Hereof the sire the son doth hear, the wooers conspire, the mother's fear. In Lacedaemon now, the nurse of Wales, these two arrived and found at festivals with mighty concourse the renowned king his son and daughter jointly marrying elector's daughter he did give his son strong megapenthes who his life begun by menelaus's bondmaid whom he knew in years when helen could no more renew in issue like divine hermione who held in all fair form as high degree as golden venus her he married now to great achilles son who was by vow betrothed to her at troy and thus the gods to constant loves give nuptial periods whose state here passed the myrmidons rich town of which she shared in the imperial crown with horse and chariots he resigned her to mean space the high huge house with feast did flow of friends and neighbors joying with the king amongst whom did a heavenly poet sing and touch his harp amongst whom likewise danced two who in that dumb motion advanced would prompt the singer what to sing and play all this time in utter court did stay with horse and chariot telemachus and nestor's noble son pisistratus whom etionius coming forth descried and being a servant to the king most tried in care and his respect he ran and cried guests jove kept menelaus 
two such men as are for form of high saturnius's strain inform your pleasure if we shall unclose their horse from coach or say they must dispose their way to some such house as may embrace their known arrival with more welcome grace he angry answered thou didst never show thyself a fool boethides till now but now as if turned child a childish speech vents thy vain spirits we ourselves now reach our home by much spent hospitality of other men nor know if jove will try with other after once our state again and therefore from our feast no more detain those welcome guests but take their steeds from coach and with attendants guide in their approach this said he rushed abroad and called some more tried in such service that together bore up to the guests and took their steeds that sweat beneath their yokes from coach at mangers set wheat and white barley gave them mixed and placed their chariot by a wall so clear it cast a light quite through it and then they led their guests to the divine house which so fed their eyes at all parts with illustrious sights that admiration seized them like the lights the sun and moon gave all the palace threw a lustre through it satiate with whose view down to the king's most bright kept baths they went where handmaids did their services present bathed balmed them shirts and well napped weeds put on and by a trite's side set each his throne then did the handmaid royal water bring and to a laver rich and glittering of massy gold poured which she placed upon a silver cauldron into which might run the water as they washed then set she near a polished table on which all the cheer the present could afford a reverend dame that kept the larder set a cook then came and divers dishes born thence served again furnished the board with bowls of gold and then his right hand given the guests atrides said eat and be cheerful appetite allayed i long to ask of what stock ye descend for not from parents whose race nameless end we must derive your offspring men obscure could get none such as you the portraiture of jove sustained and sceptre-bearing kings your either person in his presence brings an ox's fat chine then they up did lift and set before the guests which was a gift sent as an honour to the king's own taste they saw yet twas but to be eaten placed and fell to it but food and wine's care passed telemachus thus prompted nestor's son his ear close laying to be heard of none consider thou whom most my mind esteems the brass work here how rich it is in beams and how beside it makes the whole house sound what gold and amber silver ivory round is wrought about it out of doubt the hall of jupiter olympius hath of all this state the like how many infinites take up to admiration all men's sights atrides overheard and said loved son no mortal must affect contention with jove whose dwellings are of endless date perhaps of men some one may emulate or none my house or me for i am one that many a grave extreme have undergone much error felt by sea and till the eighth year had never stay but wandered far and near cyprus phoenicia and sidonia and fetched the far-off ethiopia reached the arembi of arabia and libya where with horns use ye their lambs which every full year use are three times dams where neither king nor shepherd want comes near of cheese or flesh or sweet milk all the year they ever milk their ewes and here while i erred gathered means to live one murderously unwares unseen bereft my brother's life chiefly betrayed by his abhorred wife so hold i not enjoying what you see and of your fathers if they living be you must have heard this since my sufferings were so great and famous from this palace here so rarely well built furnished so well and substanced with such a precious deal of well-got treasure banished by the doom of fate and erring as i had no home and now i have 
and use it not to take the entire delight it offers but to make continual wishes that a triple part of all it holds were wanting so my heart were eased of sorrows taken for their deaths that fell at troy by their revived breaths and thus i sit here weeping mourning still each least man lost and sometimes make mine ill in paying just tears for their loss my joy sometimes i breathe my woes for in annoy the pleasure soon admits satiety but all these men's wants wet not so mine eye though much they move me as one sole man's miss for which my sleep and meat even loathsome is in his renewed thought since no greek hath won grace for such labours as laertes son hath wrought and suffered to himself not else but future sorrows forging to me hells for his long absence since i cannot know if life or death detain him since such woe for his love old laertes his wise wife and poor young son sustains whom knew with life he left as sireless this speech grief to tears poured from the son's lids on the earth his ears told of the father did excite who kept his cheeks dry with his red weed as he wept his both hands used therein atrides then began to know him and did strife retain if he should let himself confess his sire or with all fitting circumstances inquire while this his thoughts disputed forth did shine like to the golden distaff decked divine from her bed's high and odiferous room helen to whom of an elaborate loom addressed a set a chair alcipe brought a piece of tapestry of fine wool wrought philo a silver cabinet conferred given by alcandra nuptially endeared to lord polybius whose abode in thebes the egyptian city was where wealth in heaps his famous house held out of which did go in gift to atrides silver bathtubs two two tripods and of fine gold talents ten his wife did likewise send to helen then fair gifts a distaff that of gold was wrought and that rich cabinet that philo brought round and with gold ribbed now of fine thread full of which extended crowned with the finest wool of violet gloss the golden distaff lay she took her state chair and a footstool stay had for her feet and of her husband thus asked to know all things is it known to us king menelaus whom these men commend themselves for that our court now takes to friend i must affirm be i deceived or no i never yet saw man nor woman so like one another as this man is like ulysses son with admiration strike his looks my thoughts that they should carry now power to persuade me thus who did but know when newly he was born the form they bore but tis his father's grace whom more and more his grace resembles that makes me retain thought that he now is like telemachus then left by his sire when greece did undertake troy's bold war for my impudency's sake he answered now wife what you think i know the true cast of his father's eye doth show in his eyes order both his head and hair his hands and feet his very fathers are of whom so well remembered i should now acknowledge for me his continual flow of cares and perils yet still patient but i should too much move him that doth vent such bitter tears for that which hath been spoke which shunning soft show see how he would cloak and with his purple weed his weepings hide then nestor's son pisistratus replied great pastor of the people kept of god he is ulysses son but his abode not made before here and he modest too he holds it an indignity to do a deed so vain to use the boast of words where your words are on wing whose voice affords delight to us as if a god did break the air amongst us and vouchsafe to speak but me my father old duke nestor sent to be his consort hither his content not to be heightened so as with your sight 
in hope that therewith words and actions might inform his comforts from you since he is extremely grieved and injured by the miss of his great father suffering even at home and few friends found to help him overcome his too weak sufferance now his sire is gone amongst the people not afforded one to check the miseries that mate him thus and this the state is of telemachus o oh god said he how certain now i see my house enjoys that friend's son that for me hath undergone so many willing fights whom i resolved past all the grecian knights to hold in love if our return by seas the far-off thunderer did ever please to grant our wishes and to his respect a palace and a city to erect my vow had bound me whither bringing then his riches and his son and all his men from barren ithaca some one sole town inhabited about him battered down all should in argos live and there would I ease him of rule, and take the empery of all on me. And often here would we, delighting, loving each other's company, meet and converse, whom nothing should divide till death's black veil did each all overhide. But this perhaps hath been a mean to take even God himself with envy, who did make Ulysses, therefore, only the unblessed that should not reach his loved country's rest these woes made every one with woe in love even argive helen wept the seed of jove ulysses son wept atreus's son did weep and nestor's son his eyes in tears did steep but his tears fell not from the present cloud that from ulysses was exhaled but flowed from brave antilochus's remembered dew whom the renowned son of the morning slew which yet he thus excused o atreus's son old nestor says there lives not such a one amongst all mortals as atrides is for deathless wisdom tis a praise of his still given in your remembrance when at home our speech concerns you since then overcome you please to be with sorrow even to tears that are in wisdom so exempt from peers vouchsafe the like effect in me excuse if it be lawful i affect no use of tears thus after meals at least at night but when the morn brings forth with tears her light it shall not then impair me to bestow my tears on any worthy's overthrow it is the only right that wretched men can do dead friends to cut hair and complain but death my brother took whom none could call the grecian coward you best knew of all i was not there nor saw but men report antilochus excelled the common sort for footmanship or for the chariot race or in the fight for hardy hold of place o friend said he since thou hast spoken so at all parts as one wise should say and do and like one far beyond thyself in years thy words shall bounds be to our former tears o he is questionless a right-born son that of his father hath not only won the person but the wisdom and that sire complete himself that hath a son entire jove did not only his full fate adorn when he was wedded but when he was born as now saturnius through his life's whole date hath nestor's bliss raised to as steep a state both in his age to keep in peace his house and to have children wise and valorous but let us not forget our rear feast thus let some give water here telemachus the morning shall yield time to you and me to do what fits and reason mutually this said the careful servant of the king as phalion poured on the issue of the spring and all to ready feast set ready hand but helen now on new device did stand infusing straight a medicine to their wine that drowning care and angers did decline all thought of ill who drunk her cup could shed all that day not a tear no not if dead that day his father or his mother were not if his brother child or chieftest dear he should see murdered then before his face such useful medicines only born in grace of what was good would helen ever have and this juice to her polydamna gave the wife of thone an egyptian born 
whose rich earth herbs of medicine do adorn in great abundance many healthful are and many baneful every man is there a good physician out of nature's grace for all the nation sprung of paean's race when helen then her medicine had infused she bade pour wine to it and thus speech used atrides and these good men's sons great jove makes good and ill one after other move in all things earthly for he can do all the woes past therefore he so late let fall the comforts he affords us let us take feast and with fit discourses make merry nor will i other use as then our blood grieved for ulysses since he was so good since he was good let us delight to hear how good he was and what his sufferings were though every fight and every suffering deed patient ulysses underwent exceed my woman's power to number or to name but what he did and suffered when he came amongst the trojans where ye grecians all took part with sufferance i in part can call to your kind memories how with ghastly wounds himself he mangled and the trojan bounds thrust thick with enemies adventured on his royal shoulders having cast upon base abject weeds and entered like a slave then beggar-like he did of all men crave and such a wretch was as the whole greek fleet brought not besides and thus through every street he crept discovering of no man known and yet through all this difference i alone smoked his true person talked with him but he fled me with wile still nor could we agree till i disclaimed him quite and so as moved with womanly remorse of one that proved so wretched an estate whate'er he were won him to take my house and yet even there till freely i to make him doubtless swore a powerful oath to let him reach the shore of ships and tents before troy understood i could not force on him his proper good but then i bathed and soothed him and he then confessed and told me all and having slain a number of the trojan guards retired and reached the fleet for slight and force admired their husband's death by him the trojan wives shrieked for but i made triumphs for their lives for then my heart conceived that once again i should reach home and yet did still retain woe for the slaughters venus made for me when both my husband my hermione in bridal room she robbed of so much right and drew me from my country with her slight though nothing under heaven i here did need that could my fancy or my beauty feed her husband said wife what you please to tell is true at all parts and becomes you well and i myself that now may say have seen the minds and manners of a world of men and great heroes measuring many a ground have never by these eyes that light me found one with a bosom so to be beloved as that in which the accomplished spirit moved of patient ulysses what brave man he both did act and suffer when he won the town of ilion in the brave built horse when all we chief states of the grecian force were housed together bringing death and fate amongst the trojans you wife may relate for you at last came to us god that would the trojans glory give gave charge you should approach the engine and diphobus the godlike followed thrice ye circled us with full survey of it and often tried the hollow crafts that in it were implied when all the voices of their wives in it you took on you with voice so like and fit and every man by name so visited that i ulysses the king diomede set in the midst and hearing how you called tydides and myself as half appalled with your remorseful plaints would passing fain have broke our silence rather than again endure respectless their so moving cries but ithacus our strongest fantasies contained within us from the slenderest noise and every man there sat without a voice anticlus only would have answered thee but his speech ithacus incessantly with strong hand held in till minerva's call charging thee off ulysses saved us all telemachus replied much greater is my grief 
for hearing this high praise of his for all this doth not his sad death divert nor can though in him swell an iron heart prepare and lead then if you please to rest sleep that we hear not will content us best then argive helen made her handmaid go and put fair bedding in the portico lay purple blankets on rugs warm and soft and cast an arras coverlet aloft they torches took made haste and made the bed when both the guests were to their lodgings led within a portico without the house atrides and his large train wearing spouse the excellent of women for the way in a retired receipt together lay the morn arose the king rose and put on his royal weeds his sharp sword hung upon his ample shoulders forth his chamber went and did the person of a god present telemachus accosts him who begun speech of his journey's proposition and what my young ulyssian hero provoke thee on the broad back of the sea to visit lacedaemon the divine speak truth some public good or only thine i come said he to hear if any fame breathed of my father to thy notice came my house is sacked my fat works of the field are all destroyed my house doth nothing yield but enemies that kill my harmless sheep and sinewy oxen nor will ever keep their steels without them and these men are they that woo my mother most inhumanely committing injury on injury to thy knees therefore i come to attend relation of the sad and wretched end my erring father felt if witnessed by your own eyes or the certain news that fly from others knowledges for more than is the usual heap of human miseries his mother bore him too vouchsafe me then without all ruth of what i can sustain the plain and simple truth of all you know let me beseech so much if ever vow was made and put in good effect to you at troy where sufferance bred you so much smart upon my father good ulysses part and quit it now to me himself in youth unfolding only the unclosed truth he deeply sighing answered him o oh, shame that such poor vassals should affect the fame to share the joys of such a worthy's bed as when a hind her calves late farrowed to give suck enters the bold lion's den he roots of hills and herby valleys then for food there feeding hunting but at length returning to his cavern gives his strength the lives of both the mother and her brood in deaths indecent so the wooer's blood must pay ulysses powers as sharp an end o oh, would to jove apollo and thy friend the wise minerva that thy father were as once he was when he his spirits did rear against philomulides in a fight performed in well-built lesbos where downright he struck the earth with him and gat a shout of all the grecians o oh, if now full out he were as then and with the wooers coped short-lived they all were and their nuptials hoped would prove as desperate but for thy demand enforced with prayers i let thee understand the truth directly nor decline a thought much less deceive or soothe thy search in aught but what the old and still true spoken god that from the sea breathes oracles abroad disclosed to me to thee i'll all impart nor hide one word from thy solicitous heart End of the fourth book, part one. The fourth book of the Odysseys of Homer, part two. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf. The fourth book of the Odysseys of Homer, part two translated by george chapman i was in egypt where a mighty time the gods detained me though my natural clime i never so desired because their homes i did not greet with perfect hecatombs for they will put men evermore in mind how much their masterly commandments bind there is besides a certain island called pharos that with the high-waved sea is walled just against egypt and so much remote 
as in a whole day with a foregale smote a hollow ship can sail and this isle bears a port most portly where sea passengers put in still for fresh water and away to sea again yet here the gods did stay my fleet full twenty days the winds that are masters at sea no prosperous puff would spare to put us off and all my victuals here had quite corrupted as my men's minds were had not a certain goddess given regard and pitied me in an estate so hard and twas idothea honoured proteus's seed that old seafarer her mind i make bleed with my compassion when walked all alone from all my soldiers that were ever gone about the isle on fishing with hooks bent hunger their bellies on her errand sent she came close to me spake and thus began of all men thou art the most foolish man or slack in business or stayest here of choice and dost in all thy sufferances rejoice that thus long livest detained here and no end canst give thy tarriants thou dost much offend the minds of all thy fellows i replied whoever thou art of the deified i must affirm that no way with my will i make abode here but it seems some ill the gods inhabiting broad heaven sustain against my getting off inform me then for godheads all things know what god is he that stays my passage from the fishy sea stranger said she i'll tell thee true there lives an old seafarer in these seas that gives a true solution of all the secrets here who deathless proteus is the egyptian peer who can the deeps of all the seas exquire who neptune's priest is and they say the sire that did beget me him if any way thou couldst inveigle he would clear display thy course from hence and how far off doth lie thy voyage's whole scope through neptune's sky informing thee o god preserved beside if thy desires would be so satisfied whatever good or ill hath got event in all the time thy long and hard course spent since thy departure from thy house this said again i answered make the slights displayed thy father useth lest his foresight see or his foreknowledge take note of me he flies the fixed place of his used abode tis hard for man to countermine with god she straight replied i utter truth in all when heaven's supremest height the sun doth scall the old sea tell truth leaves the deeps and hides amidst a black storm when the west wind chides in cave still sleeping round about him sleep with short feet swimming forth the foamy deep the sea calves lovely halosydnes called from whom a noisome odor is exhaled got from the whirlpools on whose earth they lie here when the morn illustrates all the sky i'll guide and seat thee in the fittest place for the performance thou hast now in chase in meantime reach thy fleet and choose out three of best exploit to go as aids to thee but now i'll show thee all the old god's slights he first will number and take all the sights of those his guard that on the shore arrives when having viewed and told them forth by fives he takes place in their midst and there doth sleep like to a shepherd midst his flock of sheep in his first sleep call up your hardiest cheer vigor and violence and hold him there in spite of all his strivings to be gone he then will turn himself to every one of all things that in the earth creep and respire in water swim or shine in heavenly fire yet still hold you him firm and much the more press him from passing but when as before when sleep first bound his powers his form ye see then cease your force and the old hero free and then demand which heaven-born it may be that so afflicts you hindering your retreat and free sea passage to your native seat this said she dived into the wavy seas and i my course did to my ships address that on the sand struck where arrived we made our supper ready then the ambrosian shade of night fell on us and to sleep we fell rosy aurora rose we rose as well and three of them on whom i most relied for firm at every force i choosed 
and hide straight to the many river servid seas and all assistance ask the deities meantime idothea the sea's broad breast embraced and brought for me and all my rest four of the sea calves skins but newly flayed to work a while which she fashioned upon her father then within the sand a covert digging when these calves should land she sat expecting we came close to her she placed us orderly and made us wear each one his calf skin but we then must pass a huge exploit the sea calves savour was so passing sour they still being bred at seas it much afflicted us for who can please to lie by one of these same sea-bred whales but she preserves us and to memory calls a rare commodity she fetched to us ambrosia that an air most odorous bears still about it which she anointed round our either nostrils and in it quite drowned the nasty whale smell then the great event the whole morn's date with spirits patient we lay expecting when bright noon did flame forth from the sea in shoals the sea calves came and orderly at last lay down and slept along the sands and then the old sea god crept from forth the deeps and found his fat calves there surveyed and numbered and came never near the craft we used but told us five for calves his temples then diseased with sleep he salves and in rushed we with an abhorred cry cast all our hands about him manfully and then the old forger all his forms began first was a lion with a mighty mane then next a dragon a pied panther then a vast boar next and suddenly did strain all into water last he was a tree curled all at top and shot up to the sky we with resolved hearts held him firmly still when the old one held too straight for all his skill to extricate gave words and questioned me which of the gods o atreus's son said he advised and taught thy fortitude this slight to take and hold me thus in my despite what ask thy wish now i replied thou knowest why dost thou ask what wiles are these thou showest i have within this isle been held for wind a wondrous time and can by no means find an end to my retention it hath spent the very heart in me give thou then vent to doubts thus bound in me ye gods know all which of the godheads doth so foully fall on my addression home to stay me here avert me from my way the fishy clear barred to my passage he replied of force if to thy home thou wishest free recourse to jove and all the other deities thou must exhibit solemn sacrifice and then the black sea for thee shall be clear till thy loved country's settled reach but where ask these rites thy performance tis a fate to thee and thy affairs appropriate that thou shalt never see thy friends nor tread thy country's earth nor see inhabited thy so magnificent house till thou make good thy voyage back to the egyptian flood whose waters fell from jove and there hast given to jove and all gods housed in ample heaven devoted hecatombs and then free ways shall open to thee cleared of all delays this told he and methought he break my heart in such a long and hard course to divert my hope for home and charge my back retreat as far as egypt i made answer yet father thy charge i'll perfect but before resolve me truly if their natural shore all those greeks and their ships do safe enjoy that nestor and myself left when from troy we first raised sail or whether any died at sea a death unwished or satisfied when war was passed by friends embraced in peace resigned their spirits he made answer cease to ask so far it fits thee not to be so cunning in thine own calamity nor seek to learn what learned thou shouldst forget men's knowledges have proper limits set and should not priests into the mind of god but twill not long be as my thoughts abode before thou buy this curious skill with tears many of those whose states so tempt thine ears are stooped by death and many left alive 
one chief of which in strong hold doth survive amidst the broad sea two in their retreat are done to death i list not to repeat who fell at troy thyself was there in fight but in return swift ajax lost the light in his long-oared ship neptune yet a while saft him racked to the jurian isle a mighty rock removing from his way and surely he had scaped the fatal day in spite of pallas if to that foul deed he in her fane did when he ravished the trojan prophetess he had not here adjoin an impious boast that he would bear despite the gods his ship safe through the waves then raised against him these impious braves when neptune heard in his strong hand he took his massy trident and so soundly struck the rock jurian that into it cleft of which one fragment on the land he left the other fell into the troubled seas at which first rushed ajax oeliades and split his ship and then himself afloat swum on the rough waves of the world's vast moat till having drunk a salt cup for his sin there perished he thy brother yet did win the wreath from death while in the waves they strove afflicted by the reverend wife of jove but when the steep mount of the malian shore he seemed to reach a most tempestuous blore far to the fishy world that sighs so sore straight ravished him again as far away as to the extreme bounds where the agrians stay where first thyestes dwelt but then his son aegisthus thyestes lived this done when his return untouched appeared again back turned the gods the wind and set him then hard by his house then full of joy he left his ship and close to his country earth he cleft kissed it and wept for joy poured tear on tear to set so wishedly his footing there but see a sentinel that all the year crafty aegisthus in a watch-tower set to spy his landing for reward as great as two gold talents all his powers did call to strict remembrance of his charge and all discharged at first sight which at first he cast on agamemnon and with all his haste informed aegisthus he an instant train laid for his slaughter twenty chosen men of his plebeians he in ambush laid his other men he charged to see pervade a feast and forth with horse and chariots graced he rode to invite him but in heart embraced horrible welcomes and to death did bring with treacherous slaughter the unwary king received him at feast and like an ox slain at his manger gave him bits and knocks no one left of atrides train nor one save to aegisthus but himself alone all strewed together there the bloody court this said my soul he sunk with his report flat on the sands i fell tears spent their store i light abhorred my heart would live no more when dry of tears and tired of tumbling there the old tell-truth thus my daunted spirits did cheer no more spend tears nor time o atreus's son with ceaseless weeping never wish was won use utmost assay to reach thy home and all unawares upon the murderer come for torture taking him thyself alive or let orestes that should far outstrive thee in fit vengeance quickly quit the light of such a dark soul and do thou the right of burial to him with a funeral feast with these last words i fortified my breast in which again a generous spring began of fitting comfort as i was a man but as a brother i must ever mourn yet forth i went and told him the return of these i knew but he had named a third held on the broad sea still with life inspired whom i besought to know though likewise dead and i must mourn alike he answered he is laertes son whom i beheld in nymph calypso's palace who compelled his stay with her and since he could not see his country earth he mourned incessantly for he had neither ship instruct with oars nor men to fetch him from those stranger shores where leave we him and to thyself descend whom not in argos fate nor death shall end but the immortal ends of all the earth 
so ruled by them that order death by birth the fields elysian fate to thee will give where radamanthus rules and where men live a never troubled life where snow nor showers no irksome winter spends his fruitless plowers but from the ocean zephyr still resumes a constant breath that all the fields perfumes which since thou marriedst helen are thy hire and jove himself is by her side thy sire this said he dived the deep some watery heaps i and my tried men took us to our ships and worlds of thoughts i varied with my steps arrived and shipped the silent solemn night and sleep bereft us of our visual light at morn mast sails reared we sat left the shores and beat the foamy ocean with our oars again then we the jove fallen flood did fetch as far as egypt where we did beseech the gods with hecatombs whose anger ceased i tombed my brother that i might be blessed all rites performed all haste i made for home and all the prosperous winds about were come i had the passport now of every god and here closed all these labors period here stay then till the eleventh or twelfth day's light and i'll dismiss thee well gifts exquisite preparing for thee chariot horses three a cup of curious frame to serve for thee to serve the immortal gods with sacrifice mindful of me while all suns light thy skies he answered stay me not too long time here though i could sit attending all the year nor should my house nor parents with desire take my affections from you so on fire with love to hear you are my thoughts but so my pillion friends i shall afflict with woe who mourned even this day whatsoever be the gifts your grace is to bestow on me vouchsafe them such as i may bear and save for your sake ever horse i list not have to keep in ithaca but leave them here to your soil's dainties where the broad fields bear sweet cypress grass where men fed loti doth flow where wheat like spelt and wheat itself doth grow where barley white and spreading like a tree but ithaca hath neither ground to be for any length it comprehends a race to try a horse's speed nor any place to make him fat in fitter far to feed a cliff-bred goat than raise or please a steed of all isles ithaca does least provide or meads to feed a horse or ways to ride he smiling said of good blood thou art son what speech so young what observation hast thou made of the world i well am pleased to change my gifts to thee as being confessed unfit indeed my store is such i may of all my house gifts then that up i lay for treasure there i will bestow on thee the fairest and of greatest price to me i will bestow on thee a rich carved cup of silver all but all the brims wrought up with finest gold it was the only thing that the heroical sidonian king presented to me when we were to part at his receipt of me and twas the art of that great artist that of heaven is free and yet even this will i bestow on thee this speech thus ended guest came and did bring muttons for presents to the godlike king and spirit prompting wine that strenuous makes the ribboned wreath wives brought fruit and cakes thus in this house did these their feast apply and in ulysses house activity the wooers practised tossing of the spear the stone and hurling thus delighted where they exercised such insolence before even in the court that wealthy pavements wore antinous did still their strifes decide and he that was in person deified eurymachus both ringleaders of all for in their virtues they were principal these by Naaman, son to Phronius, were sided now, who made the question thus. Antinous, does any friend here know, when this Telemachus returns, or no, from Sandy Pylos? He may bold to take my ship with him, of which I now should make fit use myself, and sail in her as far as spacious Elis, where of mine there are twelve delicate mares, and under their sides go laborious mules that yet did never know the yoke nor labor some of which should bear the taming now if i could fetch them there 
this speech the rest admired nor dreamed that he nelian pylos ever thought to see but was at field about his flock survey or thought his herdsmen held him so away eupytheus son antinous then replied when went he or with what train dignified of his selected ithacensian youth pressed men or bondmen were they tell the truth could he effect this let me truly know to gain thy vessel did he violence show and used her gainst thy will or had he her free when fitting question he had made with thee naaman answered i did freely give my vessel to him who deserves to live that would do other when such men as he did in distress ask he should churlish be that would deny him of our youth the best amongst the people to the interest his charge did challenge in them giving way with all the tribute all their powers could pay their captain as he took the ship i knew who mentor was or god a deity shoe masked in his likeness but to think twas he i much admire for i did clearly see but yestermorn godlike mentor here yet the other evening he took shipping there and went for pylos thus he went for home and left the rest with envy overcome who sat and pastime left eupytheus son sad and with rage his entrails overrun his eyes like flames thus interposed his speech strange thing an action of how proud a reach is here committed by telemachus a boy a child and we a sort of us vowed gainst his voyage yet admit it thus with ship and choice youth of our people too but let him on and all his mischief do jove shall convert upon himself his powers before their ill presumed he brings on ours provide me then a ship and twenty men to give her manage that against again he turns for home on the ithacensian seas or cliffy samian i may interprease waylay and take him and make all his craft sail with his ruin for his father's saft this all applauded and gave charge to do rose and to greet ulysses house did go but long time passed not ere penelope had notice of their far-fetched treachery medon the herald told her who had heard without the hall how they within conferred and hasted straight to tell it to the queen who from the entry having met on scene prevented him thus now herald what affair intend the famous wooers in your repair to tell ulysses maids that they must cease from doing our work and their banquets dress i would to heaven that leaving wooing me nor ever troubling other company here might the last feast be and most extreme that ever any shall address for them they never meet but to consent in spoil and reap the free fruits of another's toil oh did they never when they children were what to their fathers was ulysses here who never did gainst any one proceed with unjust usage or in word or deed tis yet with other kings another right one to pursue with love another spite he still yet just nor would though might devour nor to the worst did ever taste of power but their unruled acts show their minds estate good turns received once thanks grow out of date medon the learned in wisdom answered her i wish o queen that their ingratitudes were their worst ill towards you but worse by far and much more deadly their endeavours are which jove will fail them in telemachus their purpose is as he returns to us to give their sharp steels in a cruel death who now is gone to learn if fame can breathe news of his sire and will the pillian shore and sacred sparta in his search explore this news dissolved to her both knees and heart long silence held her ere one word would part her eyes stood full of tears her small soft voice all late use lost that yet at last had choice of wanted words which briefly thus she used why left my son his mother why refused his wit the solid shore to try the seas and put in ships the trust of his distress that are at sea to men unbridled horse and run past rule their far engaged course amidst a moisture past all mean unstayed no need compelled this 
Did he yet, afraid to live and leave posterity his name? I know not, he replied, if the humor came from current of his own instinct, or flowed from others' instigations. But he vowed attempt to Pylos, or to see descried his sire's return, or know what death he died. This said, he took him to Ulysses' house, after the wooers, the Ulyssian spouse run through with woes, let torture seize her mind. Nor in her choice of state chair stood inclined to take her seat, but the abject threshold chose of her fair chamber for her loathed repose, and mourned most wretch-like. Round about her fell her handmaids, joined in a continuate yell from every corner of the palace all of all degrees tuned to her comforts fall their own dejections to whom her complaint she thus enforced the gods beyond constraint of any measure urge these tears on me nor was there ever dame of my degree so past degree grieved first a lord so good that had such hardy spirits in his blood that all the virtues was adorned withal that all the greeks did their superior call to part with thus and lose and now a son so worthily beloved a course to run beyond my knowledge whom rude tempests have made far from home his most inglorious grave unhappy wenches that no one of all though in the reach of every one must fall his taking ship sustain the careful mind to call me from my bed who this designed and most vowed course in him had either stayed how much soever hasted or dead man laid he should have left me many a man i have that would have called old dolius my slave that keeps my orchard whom my father gave at my departure to have run and told laertes this to try if he could hold from running through the people and from tears in telling them of these vowed murderers that both divine ulysses hope and his resolve to end in their conspiracies his nurse then eurycleia made reply dear sovereign let me with your own hands die or cast me off here i'll not keep from thee one word of what i know he trusted me with all his purpose and i gave him all the bread and wine for which he pleased to call but then a mighty oath he made me swear not to report it to your royal ear before the twelfth day either should appear or you should ask me when you heard him gone impair not then your beauties with your moan but wash and put untear-stained garments on ascend your chamber with your ladies here and pray the seed of goat nurse jupiter divine athenia to preserve your son and she will save him from confusion the old king to whom your hopes stand so inclined for his grave counsels you perhaps may find unfit affected for his age's sake but heavenly kings wax not old and therefore make fit prayers to them for my thoughts never will believe the heavenly powers conceit so ill the seed of righteous arcesiades to end it utterly but still will please in some place evermore some one of them to save and deck him with a diadem give him possession of erected towers and far-stretched fields crowned all of fruits and flowers this eased her heart and dried her humorous eyes when having washed and weeds of sacrifice pure and unstained with her distrustful tears put on with all her women ministers up to a chamber of most height she rose and cakes of salt and barley did impose within a wicker basket all which broke in decent order thus she did invoke great virgin of the goat preserved god if ever the inhabited abode of wise ulysses held the fatted thighs of sheep and oxen made thy sacrifice by his devotion hear me nor forget his pious services but safe see set his dear son on these shores and banish hence these wooers past all mean and insolence this said she shrieked and pallas heard her prayer the wooers broke with tumult all the air about the shady house and one of them whose pride his youth had made the more extreme said now the many wooer honoured queen will surely satiate her delayful spleen and one of us in instant nuptials take poor dame she dreams not what design we make upon the life and slaughter of her son so said he but so said was not so done 
whose arrogant spirit in a vaunt so vain and tenuous chid and said for shame contain these braving speeches who can tell who hears are we not now in reach of others ears if our intentions please us let us call our spirits up to them and let speeches fall by watchful danger men must silent go what we resolve on let's not say but do this said he choosed out twenty men that bore best reckoning with him and to ship and shore all hasted reached the ship launched raised the mast put sails in and with leather loops made fast the oars sails hoisted arms their men did bring all giving speed and form to everything then to the high deeps their rigged vessel driven they supped expecting the approaching even mean space penelope her chamber kept and bed and neither eat nor drank nor slept her strong thoughts wrought so on her blameless son still in contention if he should be done to death or scape the impious wooer's design look how a lion whom men troops combine to hunt and close him in a crafty ring much varied thought conceives and fear doth sting for urgent danger so fared she till sleep all juncture of her joints and nerves did steep in his dissolving humour when at rest pallas her favours varied when addressed an idol that if thymia did present in structure of her every lineament great-souled icarius's daughter whom for spouse eumelius took that kept in ferris's house this too divine ulysses house she sent to try her best mean how she might content a mournful penelope and make relent the strict addiction in her to deplore this idol like a worm that less or more contracts or strains her did itself convey beyond the wards or windings of the key into the chamber and above her head her seat assuming thus she comforted distressed penelope doth sleep thus seize thy powers affected with so much dis-ease the gods that nothing troubles will not see thy tears nor griefs in any least degree sustained with cause for they will guard thy son safe to his wished and native mansion since he is no offender of their states and they to such are firmer than their fates the wise penelope received her thus bound with a slumber most delicious and in the port of dreams o sister why repair you hither since so far off lie your house and household you were never here before this hour and would you now give cheer to my so many woes and miseries affecting fitly all the faculties my soul and mind hold having lost before a husband that of all the virtues bore the palm amongst the greeks and whose renown so ample was that fame the sound hath blown through greece and argos to her very heart and now again a son that did convert my whole powers to his love by ship is gone a tender plant that yet was never grown to labour's taste nor the commerce of men for whom more than my husband i complain and lest he should at any sufferance touch or in the sea or by the men so much as strange to him that must his consorts be fear and chill tremblings shake each joint of me besides his danger sets on foes professed to waylay his return that have addressed plots for his death the scarce discerned dream said be of comfort nor fears so extreme let thus dismay thee thou hast such a mate attending thee as some at any rate would wish to purchase for her power is great minerva pities thy delight's defeat whose grace has sent me to foretell thee these if thou said she be of the goddess and heardst her tell thee these thou mayest as well from her tell all things else deign then to tell if yet the man to all misfortunes born my husband lives and sees the sun adorn the darksome earth or hides his wretched head in pluto's house and lives amongst the dead i will not she replied my breath exhale in one continued and perpetual tale lives he or dies he tis a filthy use to be in vain and idle speech profuse this said she through the keyhole of the door vanished again into the open blore icarius's daughter started from her sleep and joy's fresh humour her loved breast did steep 
when now so clear in that first watch of night she saw the seen dream vanish from her sight the wooer ship the sea's moist waves did ply and thought the prince a haughty death should die there lies a certain island in the sea twixt rocky samos and rough ithaca that cliffy is itself and nothing great yet holds convenient havens that two ways let ships in and out called asterus and there the wooers hope to make their massacre end of the fourth book part two the fifth book of the odysseys of homer this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by phil schempf the fifth book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman the argument a second court on jove attends who Hermes to Calypso sends, commanding her to clear the ways Ulysses sought, and she obeys. When Neptune saw Ulysses free, and so in safety plough the sea, enraged, he ruffles up the waves, and splits his ship. Leucothea saves his person yet, as being a dame whose godhead governed in the frame of those sea's tempers. But the mean by which she curbs dread Neptune's spleen is made a jewel, which she takes from off her head and that she makes ulysses on his bosom wear about his neck she ties it there and when he is with waves beset bids wear it as an amulet commanding him that not before he touched upon phaeacia's shore he should not part with it but then return it to the sea again and cast it from him he performs yet after this bides bitter storms and in the rocks sees death engraved but on phaeacia's shores saved another argument epsilon ulysses builds a ship and gains the glassy fields pays neptune pains aurora rose from high-born tithon's bed that men and gods might be illustrated and then the deity sat imperial jove that makes the horrid murmur beat above took place past all whose height forever springs and from whom flowers the eternal power of things then pallas mindful of ulysses told the many cares that in calypso's hold he still sustained when he had felt before so much affliction and such dangers more o oh, father said she and ye ever blessed give never king hereafter interest in any aid of yours by serving you by being gentle human just but grow rude and for ever scornful of your rights all justice ordering by their appetites since he that ruled as it in right behoved that all his subjects as his children loved finds you so thoughtless of him and his birth thus men begin to say ye rule in earth and grudge at what ye let him undergo who yet the least part of his sufferance know thralled in an island shipwrecked in his tears and in the fancies that calypso bears bound from his birthright all his shipping gone and of his soldiers not retaining one and now his most loved son's life doth inflame their slaughterous envies since his father's fame he puts in pursuit and is gone as far as sacred pylos and the singular dame-breeding sparta this with this replied the cloud assembler answered what words fly thine own remembrance daughter hast not thou the counsel given thyself that told thee how ulysses shall with his return address his wooers wrong and for the safe access his son shall make to his innative port do thou direct it in as curious sort as thy wit serves thee it obeys thy powers and in their ship return the speedless wooers then turned he to his issue mercury and said thou hast made good our embassy to the other status to the nymph then now on whose fair head a tuft of gold doth grow bear our true spoken counsel for retreat of patient ulysses who shall get no aid from us nor any mortal man but in a patched-up skiff 
built as he can and suffering woes enough the twentieth day at fruitful scaria let him breathe his way with the phaeacians that half deities live who like a god will honour him and give his wisdom clothes and ship and brass and gold more than for gain of troy he ever told where at the whole division of the prey if he a saver were or got away without a wound if he should grudge twas well but the end shall crown all therefore fate will deal so well with him to let him land and see his native earth friends house and family thus charged he nor agicides denied but to his feet his fair winged shoes he tied ambrosian golden that in his command put either sea or the unmeasured land with pace as speedy as a puff of wind then up his rod went with which he declined the eyes of any waker when he pleased and any sleeper when he wished diseased this took he stooped pieria and thence glid through the air and neptune's confluence kissed as he flew and checked the waves as light as any sea-mew in her fishing flight her thick wings sousing in the savory seas like her he passed a world of wilderness but when the far-off isle he touched he went up from the blue sea to the continent and reached the ample cavern of the queen whom he within found without seldom seen a sun-like fire upon the hearth did flame the matter precious and divine the frame of cedar cleft and incense was the pile that breathed an odour round about the isle herself was seated in an inner room whom sweetly sing he heard and at her loom about a curious web whose yarn she threw in with a golden shittle a grove grew in endless spring about her cavern round with odorous cypress pines and poplars crowned where hawks sea-owls and long-tongued bittors bred and other birds their shady pinion spread all fowls maritimal none roosted there but those whose labours in the waters were a vine did all the hollow cave embrace still green yet still ripe bunches gave it grace four fountains one against another poured their silver streams and meadows all enflowered with sweet balm gentle and blue violets hid that decked the soft breasts of each fragrant mead should any one though he immortal were arrive and see the sacred objects there he would admire them and be overjoyed and so stood hermes ravished powers employed but having all admired he entered on the ample cave nor could be seen unknown of great calypso for all deities are prompt in each other's knowledge though so far severed in dwellings but he could not see ulysses there within without was he set sad ashore where twas his use to view the unquiet sea sighed wept and empty drew his heart of comfort placed here in her throne that beams cast up to admiration divine calypso questioned hermes thus for what cause dear and much esteemed by us thou golden rod adorned mercury arrivest thou here thou hast not used to apply thy passage this way say whatever be thy heart's desire my mind commands it thee if in my means it lie or power of fact but first what hospitable rites exact come yet more near and take this said she set a table forth and furnished it with meat such as the gods taste and served in with it vermilion nectar when with banquet fit he had confirmed his spirits he thus expressed his cause of coming thou hast made request goddess of goddesses to understand my cause of touch here which thou shalt command and know with truth jove caused my course to thee against my will for who would willingly lackey along so vast a lake of brine near to no city that the powers divine receives with solemn rites and hecatombs but jove's will ever all law overcomes no other god can cross or make it void and he affirms that one the most annoyed with woes and toils of all those men that fought for priam's city and to end hath brought nine years in the contention is with thee for in the tenth year when roy victory was won to give the greeks the spoil of troy return they did profess but not enjoy 
since pallas they incensed and she the waves by all the wind's power that blew ope their graves and there they rested only this poor one this coast both winds and waves have cast upon whom now forthwith he wills thee to dismiss affirming that the unaltered destinies not only have decreed he shall not die apart his friends but of necessity enjoy their sights before those fatal hours his country earth reach and erected towers this struck a love-checked horror through her powers when naming him she this reply did give insatiate are ye gods past all that live in all things you affect which still converts your powers to envies it afflicts your hearts that any goddess should as you obtain the use of earthly dames enjoy the men and most in open marriage so ye fared when the delicious fingered morning shared orion's bed you easy living states could never satisfy your emulous hates till in ortygia the precise lived dame golden throned diana on him rudely came and with her swift shafts slew him and such pains when rich-haired ceres pleased to give the reins to her affections and the grace did yield of love and bed amidst a three-cropped field to her iosian he paid angry jove who lost no long time notice of their love but with a glowing lightning was his death and now your envies labour underneath a mortal's choice of mine whose life i took to liberal safety when his ship jove struck with red-hot flashes piecemeal in the seas and all his friends and soldiers succorless perished but he him cast upon this coast with blasts and billows i in life given lost preserved alone loved nourished and did vow to make him deathless and yet never grow crooked or worn with age his whole life long but since no reason may be made so strong to strive with jove's will or to make it vain no not if all the other gods should strain their powers against it let his will be law so he affords him fit means to withdraw as he commands him to the raging main but means from me he never shall obtain for my means yield nor men nor ship nor oars to set him off from my so envied shores but if my counsel and good will can aid his safe pass home my best shall be assayed vouchsafe it so said heaven's ambassador and deign it quickly by all means abhor to incense jove's wrath against thee that with grace he may hereafter all thy wish embrace thus took the argus killing god his wings and since the reverend nymph these awful things received from jove she to ulysses went whom she ashore found drowned in discontent his eyes kept never dry he did so mourn and waste his dear age for his wish to return which still without the cave he used to do because he could not please the goddess so at night yet forced took together their rest the willing goddess and the unwilling guest but he all day in rocks and on the shore the vexed sea viewed and did his fate deplore him now the goddess coming near bespake unhappy man no more discomfort take for my constraint of thee nor waste thine age i now will passing freely disengage thy irksome stay here come then fell thee wood and build a ship to save thee from the flood i'll furnish thee with fresh wave bread and wine ruddy and sweet that will the piner pine put garments on thee give the winds foreright that every way thy home bent appetite may safe attain to it if so it please at all parts all the heaven housed deities that more in power are more in skill than i and more can judge what fits humanity he stood amazed at this strange change in her and said o goddess thy intents prefer some other project than my parting hence commanding things of too high consequence for my performance that myself should build a ship of power my home assays to shield against the great sea of such dread to pass which not the best-built ship that ever was will pass exulting when such winds as jove can thunder up their trims and tacklings prove but could i build one 
i would ne'er abroad thy will opposed nor one without thy word given in the great oath of the gods to me not to beguile me in the least degree the goddess smiled held hard his hand and said o yar shrewd one and so habited in taking heed thou knowest not what it is to be unwary nor use words amiss how hast thou charmed me were i ne'er so sly let earth know then and heaven so broad so high and the undersunk waves of the infernal stream which is an oath as terribly supreme as any god swears that i had no thought but stood with what i spake nor would have wrought nor counselled any act against thy good but ever diligently weighed and stood on these points in persuading thee that i would use myself in such extremity for my mind simple is and innocent not given by cruel slights to circumvent nor bear i in my breast a heart of steel but with the sufferer willing sufferance feel this said the grace of goddesses led home he traced her steps and to the cavern come in that rich throne whence mercury arose he sat the nymph herself did then oppose for food and beverage to him all best meat and drink that mortals use to taste and eat then sat she opposite and for her feast was nectar and ambrosia addressed by handmaids to her both what was prepared did freely fall to having fitly fared the nymph calypso this discourse began jove bred ulysses many witted man still is thy home so wished so soon away be still of cheer for all the worst i say but if thy soul knew what a sum of woes for thee to cast up thy stern fates impose ere to thy country earth thy hopes attain undoubtedly thy choice would here remain keep house with me and be a liver ever which methinks should thy house and thee dissever though for thy wife there thou art set on fire and all thy days are spent in her desire and though it be no boast in me to say in form and mind i match her every way nor can it fit a mortal dame's compare to affect those terms with us that deathless are the great in councils made her this reply renowned and to be reverenced deity let it not move thee that so much i vow my comforts to my wife though well i know all cause myself why wise penelope in wit is far inferior to thee in feature stature all the parts of show she being a mortal and a mortal thou old ever growing and yet never old yet her desire shall all my days see told adding the sight of my returning day and natural home if any god shall lay his hand upon me as i pass the seas i'll bear the worst of what his hand shall please as having given me such a mind as shall the more still rise the more his hand lets fall in wars and waves my sufferings were not small i now have suffered much as much before hereafter let as much result and more this said the sun set and the earth shadows gave when these two in an in-room of the cave left to themselves left love no rites undone the early morn up up he rose put on his in and out weed she herself and chases amidst a white robe full of all the graces ample and pleated thick like fishy scales a golden girdle then her waist impales her head a veil decks and abroad they come and now began ulysses to go home a great axe first she gave that two ways cut in which a farewell polished helm was put that from an olive bough received his frame a plainer then then led she till they came to lofty woods that did the isle confine the fir tree poplar and heaven scaling pine had there their offspring of which those that were of driest matter and grew longest there he chose for lighter sail this place thus shown the nymph turned home he fell to felling down and twenty trees he stooped in little space planed used his plumb did all with artful grace in meantime did calypso wimbles bring he bored closed nailed and ordered everything and looked how much a shipwright will allow a ship of burden one that best doth know what fits his art 
so large a keel he cast wrought upper decks and hatches sideboards mast with willow watlings armed her to resist the billows outrage added all she missed sail yards and stern for guide the nymph then brought linen for sails which with dispatch he wrought gables and halsters tacklings all the frame in four days space to full perfection came the fifth day they dismissed him from the shore weeds neat and odorous gave him victuals store wine strong waters and a prosperous wind to which ulysses fit to be divined his sails exposed and hoised off he gat and cheerful was he at the stern he sat and steered right artfully nor sleep could seize his eyelids he beheld the pleiades the bear surnamed the wain that round doth move about orion and keep still above the billowy ocean the slow setting star bootes called by some the wagoner calypso warned him he his course should steer still to his left hand seventeen days did clear the cloudy night's command in his moist way and by the eighteenth light he might display the shady hills of the phaeacian shore for which as to his next abode he bore the country did a pretty figure yield and looked from off the dark seas like a shield imperious neptune making his retreat from the ethiopian earth and taking seat upon the mountains of the solomy from thence far off discovering did descry ulysses his fields ploughing all on fire the sight straight set his heart and made desire of reek run over it did boil so high when his head nodding o oh, impiety he cried out now the gods inconstancy is most apparent altering their designs since i the ethiop saw and here confines to this ulysses fate his misery the great mark on which all his hopes rely lies in phaeacia but i hope he shall feel woe at height ere that dead calm befall this said he begging gathered clouds from land frighted the seas up snatched into his hand his horrid trident and aloft did toss of all the winds all storms he could engross all earth took into sea with clouds grim night fell tumbling headlong from the cope of light the east and south winds jostled in the air the violent zephyr and north making fair rolled up the waves before them and then bent ulysses knees then all his spirit was spent in which despair he thus spake woe is me what was i born to man of misery fear tells me now that all the goddess said truth self will author that fate would be paid grief's whole sum due from me at sea before i reach the dear touch of my country shore with what clouds jove heaven's heightened forehead binds how tyrannize the wraths of all the winds how all the tops he bottoms with the deeps and in the bottoms all the tops he steeps thus dreadful is the presence of our death thrice four times blessed were they that sunk beneath their fates at troy and did to naught contend but to renown atrides with their end i would to god my hour of death and fate that day had held the power to terminate when showers of darts my life bore undepressed about divine eosides deceased then had i been allotted to have died by all the greeks with funerals glorified whence death encouraging good life had grown where now i die by no man mourn nor known this spoke a huge wave took him by the head and hurled him overboard ship and all it laid inverted quite amidst the waves but he far off from her sprawled strode about the sea his stern still holding broken off his mast burst in the midst so horrible a blast of mixed winds struck it sails and sail-yards fell amongst the billows and himself did dwell a long time under water nor could get in haste his head out wave with wave so met in his depression and his garments too given by calypso gave him much to do hindering his swimming yet he left not so his drenched vessel for the overthrow of her nor him but gat at length again wrestling with neptune hold of her and then sat in her bulk 
insulting over death which with the salt stream pressed to stop his breath he scaped and gave the sea again to give to other men his ship so strived to live floating at random cuffed from wave to wave as you have seen the north wind when he drave in autumn heaps of thorn-fed grasshoppers hither and thither one heap this way bears another that and makes them often meet in his confused gales so ulysses fleet the wind hurled up and down now boreas tossed it to notus notus gave it pass to eurus eurus zephyr made pursue the horrid tennis this sport called the view of cadmus's daughter with the narrow heel i know leucothea that first did feel a mortal dame's desires and had a tongue but now had the honour to be named among the marine godheads she with pity saw ulysses jostled thus from flaw to flaw and like a cormorant in form and flight rose from a whirlpool on the ship did light and thus bespake him why is neptune thus in thy pursuit extremely furious oppressing thee with such a world of ill even to thy death he must not serve his will though tis his study let me then advise as my thoughts serve thou shalt not be unwise to leave thy weeds and ship to the commands of these rude winds and work out with thy hands past to phaeacia where thy austere fate is to pursue thee with no more such hate take here this tablet with this ribbon strung and see it still about thy bosom hung by whose eternal virtue never fear to suffer thus again nor perish here but when thou touchest with thy hand the shore then take it from thy neck nor wear it more but cast it far off from the continent and then thy person far ashore present thus gave she him the tablet and again turned to a cormorant dived past sight the main patient ulysses sighed at this and stuck in the conceit of such fair-spoken luck and said alas i must suspect even this lest any other of the deities add slight to neptune's force to counsel me to leave my vessel and so far off see the shore i aim at not with thoughts too clear will i obey her but to me appear these counsels best as long as i perceive my ship not quite dissolved i will not leave the help she may afford me but abide and suffer all woes till the worst be tried when she is split i'll swim no miracle can past near and clear means move a knowing man while this discourse employed him neptune raised a huge a high and horrid sea that seized him and his ship and tossed them through the lake as when the violent winds together take heaps of dry chaff and hurl them every way so his long wood stack neptune struck astray then did ulysses mount on rib perforce like to a rider of a running horse to stay himself a time while he might shift his drenched weeds that were calypso's gift when putting straight leucothea's amulet about his neck he all his forces set to swim and cast him prostrate to the seas when powerful neptune saw the ruthless priest of peril siege him thus he moved his head and this betwixt him and his heart he said so now feel ills now and struggle so till to your jove-loved islanders you row but my mind says you will not so avoid this last task too but be with sufferance cloyed this said his rich-maned horse he moved and reached his house at aegis but minerva fetched the winds from sea and all their ways but one barred to their passage the bleak north alone she set to blow the rest she charged to keep their rages in and bind themselves in sleep but boreas still flew high to break the seas till jove bred ithacus the more with ease the navigation skilled phaeacian states might make his refuge death and angry fates at length escaping two nights yet and days he spent in wrestling with the sable seas in which space often did his heart propose death to his eyes but when aurora rose and threw the third light from her orient hair the winds grew calm and clear was all the air not one breath stirring then he might descry raised by the high seas clear and land was nigh 
and then look how to good sons that esteem their father's life dear after pains extreme felt in some sickness that hath held him long down to his bed and with affliction strong wasted his body made his life his load as being inflicted by some angry god when on their prayers they see descend at length health from the heavens clad all in spirit and strength the sight is precious so since here should end ulysses toils which therein should extend health to his country held to him his sire and on which long for him disease did tire and then besides for his own sake to see the shores the woods so near such joy had he as those good sons for the recovered sire then labored feet in all parts to aspire to that wished continent which when as near he came as clamour might inform an ear he heard a sound beat from the sea-bred rocks against which gave a huge sea horrid shocks that belched upon the firm land weeds and foam with which were all things hid there where no room of fit capacity was for any port nor from the sea for any man's resort the shores the rocks the cliffs so prominent were oh said ulysses then now jupiter hath given me sight of an unhoped-for shore though i have wrought these seas so long so sore of rest yet no place shows the slenderest prince the rugged shore so bristled is with flints against which every way the waves so flock and all the shore shows as one eminent rock so near which tis so deep that not a sand is there for any tired foot to stand nor fly his death fast following miseries lest if he land upon him foreright flies a churlish wave to crush him gainst the cliff worse than vain rendering all his landing strife and should i swim to seek a haven elsewhere or land less way-beat i may justly fear i shall be taken with a gale again and cast a huge way off into the main and there the great earth-shaker having seen my so near landing and again his spleen forcing me to him will some whale send out of which a horrid number hereabout his amphitrite breeds to swallow me i will have proved with what malignity he treads my steps while this discourse he held a cursed surge against a cutting rock impelled his naked body which it gashed and tore and had his bones broke if but one sea more had cast him on it but she prompted him that never failed and bade him no more swim still off and on but boldly force the shore and hug the rock that him so rudely tore which he with both hands sighed and clasped till past the billow's rage was then scaped back so fast the rock repulsed it that it reft his hold sucking him from it and far back he rolled and as the polypus that forced from home amidst the soft sea and near rough land come for shelter gainst the storms that beat on her at open sea as she abroad doth air a deal of gravel and sharp little stones needfully gathers in her hollow bones so he forced hither by the sharper ill shunning the smoother where he best hoped still the worst succeeded for the cruel friend to which he clinged for succour off did rend from his broad hands the soaken flesh so sore that off he fell and could sustain no more quite under water fell he and past fate hapless ulysses there had lost the state he held in life if still the grey-eyed maid his wisdom prompting he had not essayed another course and ceased to attempt that shore swimming and casting round his eye to explore some other shelter then the mouth he found a fair calico's flood whose shores were crowned with most apt succors rocks so smooth they seemed polished of purpose land that quite redeemed with breathless coverts the others blasted shores the flood he knew and thus in heart implores king of this river here whatever name makes thee invoked to thee i humbly frame my flight from neptune's furies reverend is to all the ever-living deities what erring man soever seeks their aid to thy both flood and knees a man dismayed with varied sufferance sues yield then some rest to him that is thy suppliant professed this though but spoken thought the god had heard 
her current straight stayed and her thick waves cleared before him smoothed her waters and just where he prayed half drowned entirely saved him there then forth he came his both knees faltering both his strong hands hanging down and all with froth his cheeks and nostrils flowing voice and breath spent to all use and down he sunk to death the sea had soaked his heart through all his veins his toils had racked to a laboring woman's pains dead weary was he but when breath did find a pass reciprocal and in his mind his spirit was recollected up he rose and from his neck did the amulet unloose that ino gave him which he hurled from him to sea its sounding fell and back did swim with the ebbing waters till it straight arrived where ino's fair hand it again received then kissed he the humble earth and on he goes till bulrushes showed place for his repose where laid he sighed and thus said to his soul o oh me what strange perplexities control the whole skill of thy powers in this event what feel i if till care nursed night be spent i watch amidst the flood the sea's chill breath and vegetant dews i fear will be my death so low brought with my labours towards day a passing sharp air ever breathes at sea if i the pitch of this next mountain scale and shady wood and in some thicket fall into the hands of sleep though there the cold may well be checked and healthful slumbers hold her sweet hand on my powers all care allayed yet there will beasts devour me best a paid doth that course make me yet for there some strife strength and my spirit may make me make for life which though impaired may yet be fresh applied where peril possible of escape is tried but he that fights with heaven or with the sea to indiscretion adds impiety thus to the woods he hasted which he found not far from sea but on far seeing ground where two twin underwoods he entered on with olive trees and oil trees overgrown through which the moist force of the loud voiced wind did never beat nor ever phoebus shined nor shower beat through they grew so one in one and had by turns their power to exclude the sun here entered our ulysses and a bed of leaves huge and of huge abundance spread with all his speed large he made it for there for two or three men ample coverings were such as might shield them from the winter's worst though steel it breathed and blew as it would burst patient ulysses joyed that ever day showed such a shelter in the midst he lay store of leaves heaping high on every side and as in some outfield a man doth hide a kindled brand to keep the seed of fire no neighbour dwelling near and his desire served with self-store he else would ask of none but of his forespent sparks rakes the ashes on so this outplace ulysses thus receives and thus naked virtue's seed lies hid in leaves yet pallas made him sleep as soon as men whom delicacies all their flatteries deign and all that all his labours could comprise quickly concluded in his closed eyes end of the fifth book the sixth book of the odysseys of homer this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by phil schempf the sixth book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman the argument minerva in a vision stands before nausicaa and commands she to the flood her weeds should bear for now her nuptial day was near nausicaa her charge obeys and then with other virgins plays their sports make waked ulysses rise walk to them and beseech supplies of food and clothes his naked sight puts the other maids afraid to flight nausicaa only boldly stays and gladly his desire obeys he furnished with her favors shown attends her and the rest to town another argument zeta here olive leaves to hide shame began 
the maid receives the naked man the much sustaining patient heavenly man whom toil and sleep had worn so weak and wan thus won his rest in mean space pallas went to the phaeacian city and ascent that first did broad hyperia's lands divide near the vast cyclops men of monstrous pride that preyed on those hyperians since they were of greater power and therefore longer there divine nausinous dwelt not but arose and did for scaria all his powers dispose far from ingenious art inventing men but there did he erect a city then first drew a wall round then he houses builds and then a temple to the gods the fields lastly dividing but he stooped by fate dived to the infernals and alcinous sate in his command a man the gods did teach commanding counsels his house held the reach of grey minerva's project to provide that great-souled ithacus might be supplied with all things fitting his return she went up to the chamber where the fair descent of great alcinous slept a maid whose parts in wit and beauty wore divine deserts well decked her chamber was of which the door did seem to lighten such a gloss it bore betwixt the posts and now flew ope to find the goddess entry like a puff of wind she reached the virgin bed neat which there lay two maids to whom the graces did convey figure and manners but above the head of bright nausicaa did pallas tread the subtle air and put the person on of dimas's daughter from comparison exempt in business naval like his seed minerva looked now whom one year did breed with bright nausicaa and who had gained grace in her love yet on her thus complained nausicaa why bred thy mother one so negligent in rites so stood upon by other virgins thy fair garments lie neglected by thee yet thy nuptials nigh which rich in all attire both thou shouldst be and garments give to others honouring thee that lead thee to the temple thy good name grows amongst men for these things they inflame father and reverend mother with delight come when the day takes any wink from night let's to the river and repurify thy wedding garments my society shall freely serve thee for thy speedier aid because thou shalt no mote stand on the maid best of all phaeacia woo thy grace where thou wert bred and owest thyself a race up and stir up to thee thy honoured sire to give thee mules and coach thee and thy tire veils girdles mantles early to the flood to bear in state it suits thy high-born blood and far more fits thee than to foot so far for far from town thou knowest the bath founts are this said away blue-eyed minerva went up to olympus the firm continent that bears in endless being the deified kind that's neither soused with showers nor shook with wind nor chilled with snow but where serenity flies exempt from clouds and ever beamy skies circle the glittering hill and all their days give the delights of blessed deity praise and hither pallas flew and left the maid when she had all that might excite her said straight rose the lovely morn that did upraise fair veiled nausicaa whose dream her praise to admiration took who no time spent to give the rapture of her vision vent to her loved parents whom she found within her mother set a fire who had to spin a rock whose tincture with sea-purple shined her maids about her but she chanced to find her father going abroad to council called by his grave senate and to him exhaled her smothered bosom was love sire said she will you not now command a coach for me stately and complete fit for me to bear to wash at flood the weeds i cannot wear before repurified yourself it fits to wear fair weeds as every man that sits in place of counsel and five sons you have two wed three bachelors that must be brave in every day's shift that they may go dance for these three last with these things must advance their states in marriage and who else but i their sister should their dancing rites supply this general cause she showed and would not name her mind of nuptials to her sire for shame he understood her yet and thus replied daughter 
nor these nor any grace besides i either will deny thee or defer mules nor a coach of state and circular fitting at all parts go my servants shall serves thy desires and thy command in all the servants then commanded soon obeyed fetched coach and mules joined in it then the maid brought from the chamber her rich weeds and laid all up in coach in which her mother placed a mond of victuals varied well in taste and other junkets wine she likewise filled within a goatskin bottle and distilled sweet and moist oil into a golden cruise both for her daughters and her handmaids use to soften their bright bodies when they rose cleansed from their cold baths up to coach then goes the observed maid takes both the scourge and reins and to her side her handmaid straight attains nor these alone but other virgins grace the nuptial chariot the whole bevy placed nausicaa scourge to make the coach mules run that neighed and paced their usual speed and soon both maids and weeds brought to the riverside where baths for all the year their use supplied whose waters were so pure they would not stain but still ran fair forth and did more remain apt to purge stains for that purge stain within which by the water's pure store was not seen these here arrived the mules uncoached and drave up to the gulfy river's shore that gave sweet grass to them the maids from coach then took their clothes and steeped them in the sable brook then put them into springs and trod them clean with cleanly feet adventuring wagers then who should have soonest and most cleanly done when having thoroughly cleansed they spread them on the flood shore all in order and then where the waves the pebbles washed and ground was clear they bathed themselves and all with glittering oil smoothed their white skins refreshing then their toil with pleasant dinner by the riverside yet still watched when the sun their clothes had dried till which time having dined nausicaa with other virgins did at stool ball play their shoulder reaching head tires laying by nausicaa with wrists of ivory the liking stroke struck singing first a song as custom ordered and amidst the throng made such a show and so past all was seen as when the chaste born arrow loving queen along the mountains gliding either over spartan tagetus whose tops far discover or eurymanthus in the wild boar's chase or swift-hooved heart and with her jove's fair race the field nymphs sporting amongst whom to see how far diana had priority though all were fair for fairness yet of all as both by head and forehead being more tall latona triumphed since the dullest sight might easily judge whom her pains brought to light nausicaa so whom never husband tamed above them all in all the beauties flamed but when they now made homewards and arrayed ordering their weeds disordered as they played mules and coach ready then minerva thought what means to wake ulysses might be wrought that he might see this lovely sighted maid whom she intended should become his aid bring him to town and his return advance her mean was this though thought a stool ball chance the queen now for the upstroke struck the ball quite wide off the other maids and made it fall amidst the whirlpools at which out shrieked all and with the shriek did wise ulysses wake who sitting up was doubtful who should make that sudden outcry and in mind thus strived on what a people am i now arrived at civil hospitable men that fear the gods or dwell injurious mortals here unjust and churlish like the female cry of youth it sounds what are they nymphs bred high on tops of hills or in the founts of floods in herby marshes or in leafy woods or are they high spoke men i now am near i'll prove and see with this the wary peer crept forth the thicket and an olive bough broke with his broad hand which he did bestow in covert of his nakedness and then put hasty head out look how from his den a mountain lion looks that all embrued with drops of trees and weather-beaten hued 
bold of his strength goes on and in his eye a burning furnace glows all bent to prey on sheep or oxen or the upland heart his belly charging him and he must part stakes with the herdsman in his beast's attempt even where from rape their strengths are most exempt so wet so weather-beat so stung with need even to the home fields of the country's breed ulysses was to force forth his access though merely naked and his sight did press the eyes of soft-haired virgins horrid was his rough appearance to them the hard paths he had at sea stuck by him all in flight the virgins scattered frighted with this sight about the prominent windings of the flood all but nausicaa fled but she fast stood pallas had put a boldness in her breast and in her fair limbs tender fear compressed and still she stood him as resolved to know what man he was or out of what should grow his strange repair to them and here was he put to his wisdom if her virgin knee he should be bold but kneeling to embrace or keep aloof and try with words of grace in humblest suppliance if he might obtain some cover for his nakedness and gain her grace to show and guide him to the town the last he best thought to be worth his own in weighing both well to keep still aloof and give with soft words his desires their proof lest pressing so near as to touch her knee he might incense her maiden modesty this fair and filed speech then shewed this was he let me beseech o queen this truth of thee are you of mortal or the deified race if of the gods that the ample heavens embrace i can resemble you to none above so near as to the chaste-born birth of jove the beamy cynthia her you full present in grace of every godlike lineament her goodly magnitude and all the address you promise of her very perfectness if sprung of humans that inhabit earth thrice blessed are both the authors of your birth thrice blessed your brothers that in your deserts must even to rapture bear delighted hearts to see so like the first trim of a tree your form adorn a dance but most blessed he of all that breathe that hath the gift to engage your bright neck in the yoke of marriage and deck his house with your commanding merit i have not seen a man of so much spirit nor man nor woman i did ever see at all parts equal to the parts in thee to enjoy your sight doth admiration seize my eyes and apprehensive faculties lately in delos with a charge of men arrived that rendered me most wretched then now making me thus naked i beheld the burthen of a palm whose issue swelled about apollo's fane and that put on a grace like thee for earth had never none of all her sylvan issue so adorned into amaze my very soul was turned to give it observation as now thee to view o virgin a stupidity past admiration strikes me joined with fear to do a suppliant's due and press so near as to embrace thy knees nor is it strange for one of fresh and firmest spirit would change to embrace so bright an object but for me a cruel habit of calamity prepared the strong impression thou hast made for this last day did fly night's twentieth shade since i at length escaped the sable seas when in the meantime the unrelenting priests of waves and stern storms tossed me up and down from the isle ogygia and now god hath thrown my rack on this shore that perhaps i may my miseries vary here for yet their stay i fear heaven hath not ordered though before these late afflictions it hath lent me store o queen deign pity then since first to you my fate importunes my distress to vow no other dame nor man that this earth own and neighbor city i have seen or known the town then show me give my nakedness some shroud to shelter it if to these seas linen or woolen you have brought to cleanse god give you in requital all the amends your heart can wish a husband family and good agreement not beneath the sky more sweet more worthy is than firm consent of man and wife in household government it joys their wishers well their enemies wounds but to themselves the special good redounds she answered stranger i discern in thee nor sloth nor folly reigns and yet i see the outpour and wretched 
in which i conclude that industry nor wisdom make endued men with those gifts that make them best to the eye jove only orders felicity to good and bad his pleasure fashions still the whole proportion of their good and ill and he perhaps hath formed this plight in thee of which thou must be patient as he free but after all thy wanderings since thy way both to our earth and near our city lay as being exposed to our cares to relieve weeds and what else a human hand should give to one so suppliant and tamed with woe thou shalt not want our city i will show and tell our people's name this neighbor town and all this kingdom the phaeacians own and since thou seem'st so fain to know my birth and maidst to question if of heaven or earth this earth hath bred me and my father's name alcinous is that in the power and frame of this isle's rule is supereminent thus passing him she to the virgins went and said give stay both to your feet and fright why thus disperse ye for a man's mere sight esteem you him a cyclop that long since made use to prey upon our citizens this man no moist man is nor waterish thing that's ever flitting ever ravishing all it can compass and like it doth range in rape of women never stayed in change this man is truly manly wise and staid in soul more rich and more to sense decayed who nor will do nor suffer to be done acts lewd and abject nor can such a one greet the phaeacians with a mind envious dear to the gods they are and he is pious besides divided from the world we are the out part of it billows circular the sea revolving round about our shore nor is there any man that enters more than our own countrymen with what is brought from other countries this man minding not but his relief a poor unhappy wretch racked here and hath no other land to fetch him now we must provide for from jove come all strangers and the needy of a home who any gift though ne'er so small it be esteem as great and take it gratefully and therefore virgins give the stranger food and wine and see ye bathe him in the flood near to some shore to shelter most inclined to cold bathe bathers hurtful is the wind not only rugged making the outward skin but by his thin powers pierceth parts within this said their flight in a return they set and did ulysses with all grace entreat showed him a shore wind-proof and full of shade by him a shirt and utter mantle laid a golden jug of liquid oil did add bad wash and all things as nausicaa bad divine ulysses would not use their aid but thus bespake them every lovely maid let me entreat to stand a little by that i alone the fresh flood may apply to cleanse my bosom of the sea-wrought brine and then use oil which long time did not shine on my poor shoulders i'll not wash in sight of fair-haired maidens i should blush outright to bathe all bare by such a virgin light they moved and mused a man had so much grace and told their mistress what a man he was he cleansed his broad-soiled shoulders back and head yet never tamed but now had foam and weed knit in the fair curls which dissolved he slicked all with sweet oil the sweet charity the untouched virgin showed in his attire he clothed him with then pallas put a fire more than before into his sparkling eyes his late soil set off with his soon fresh guise his locks cleanse curled the more and matched in power to please an eye the hyacinthian flower and as a workman that can well combine silver and gold and make both strive to shine as being by vulcan and minerva too taught how far either may be urged to go in strife of eminence when work sets forth a worthy soul to bodies of such worth no thought reproving the act in any place nor art no debt to nature's liveliest grace so pallas wrought in him a grace as great from head to shoulders and ashore did seat his goodly presence to which such a guise he showed in going that it ravished eyes all which continued as he sat apart nausicaa's eyes struck wonder through her heart who thus bespake her consorts hear me you fair-wristed virgins 
this rare man i know treads not our country earth against the will of some god throned on the olympian hill he showed to me till now not worth the note but now he looks as he had god had got i would to heaven my husband were no worse and would be called no better but the course of other husbands pleased to dwell out here observe and serve him with our utmost cheer she said they heard and did he drunk and eat like to a harpy having touched no meat along before time but nausicaa now thought of the more grace she did lately vow had horse to chariot joined and up she rose up cheered her guest and said guest now dispose yourself for town that i may let you see my father's court where all the peers will be of our phaeacian state at all parts then observe to whom and what place ye are to attain though i need usher you with no advice since i suppose you absolutely wise while we the fields pass and men's labours there so long in these maids guides directly bear upon my chariot i must go before for cause that after comes to which this more be my induction you shall then soon end your way to town whose towers you see ascend to such a steepness on whose either side a fair port stands to which is nothing wide an enterer's passage on whose both hands ride ships in fair harbours which once pass you win the goodly market-place that circles in a fane to neptune built of curious stone and passing ample where munition gables and masts men make and polished oars for the phaeacians are not conquerors by bows nor quivers oars masts ships they are with which they plough the sea and wage their war and now the cause comes why i lead the way not taking you by coach the men that sway in work of those tools that so fit our state are rude mechanicals that rare and late work in the market-place and those are they whose bitter tongues i shun who straight would say for these vile vulgars are extremely proud and foul languaged what is he allowed to coach it with nausicaa so large set and fairly fashioned where were these two met he shall be sure her husband she hath been gadding in some place and of foreign men fitting her fancy kindly brought him home in her own ship he must of force be come from some far region we have no such man it may be praying hard when her heart ran on some wished husband out of heaven some god dropped in her lap and there lies she at road her complete lifetime but in sooth if she ranging abroad a husband such as he whom now we saw laid hand on she was wise for none of all our nobles are of prize enough for her he must be on sea come that wins her high mind and will have her home of our peers many have importuned her yet she will none thus these folks will confer behind my back or meeting to my face the foul mouth rout dare put home this disgrace and this would be reproaches to my fame for even myself just anger would inflame if any other virgin i should see her parents living keep the company of any man to any end of love till open nuptials should her act approve and therefore hear me guest and take such way that you yourself may compass in your stay your quick deduction by my father's grace and means to reach the root of all your race we shall not far out of our way to town a never felled grove find that poplar's crown to palace sacred where a fountain flows and round about the grove a meadow grows in which my father holds a manor house decked all with orchards green and odorous as far from town as one may hear a shout there stay and rest your foot pains till full out we reach the city where when you may guess we are arrived and enter our access within my father's court then put you on for our phaeacian state where to be shown my father's house desire each infant there can bring you to it and yourself will clear distinguish it from others for no shows the city buildings make compared with those that king alcinous seat doth celebrate in whose roofs and the court where men of state and suitors sit and stay when you shall hide straight pass it entering further where abide my mother with her withdrawn housewiferies who still sits in the fire shine and applies her rock all purple and of pompous show 
her chair placed against a pillar all a row her maids behind her set and to her here my father's dining throne looks seated where he pours his choice of wine in like a god this view once passed for the other end of your abode address suit to my mother that her mien may make the day of your redition seen and you may frolic straight though far away you are in distance from your wished stay for if she once be won to wish you well your hope may instantly your passport seal and thenceforth sure abide to see your friends fair house and all to which your heart contends this said she used her shining scourge and lashed her mules that soon the shore left where she washed and knowing well the way their pace was fleet and thick they gathered up their nimble feet which yet she tempered so and used her scourge with so much skill as not to overurge the foot behind and make them straggle so from close society firm together go ulysses and her maids and now the sun sunk to the waters when they all had won the never felled and sound exciting wood sacred to pallas where the godlike good ulysses rested and to pallas prayed hear me of the goat kept jove the unconquered maid now thoroughly hear me since in all the time of all my rack my prayers could never climb thy far-off ears when noiseful neptune tossed upon his watery bristles my embossed and rock-torn body hear me now and deign i may of the theasian state obtain pity and grace thus prayed he and she heard by no means yet exposed to sight appeared for fear to offend her uncle the supreme of all the sea gods whose wrath still extreme stood to ulysses and would never cease till with his country shore he crowned his peace end of the sixth book the seventh book of the odysseys of homer this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by phil Schempf. the seventh book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman the argument nausicaa arrives at town and then ulysses he makes known his suit to arete who view takes of his vesture which she knew and asks him from whose hands it came he tells with all the hapless frame of his affairs in all the while since he forsook calypso's isle another argument eta the honoured minds and welcome things ulysses finds in scaria's kings thus prayed the wise and god-observing man the maid by free force of her palfreys won access to town and the renowned court reached of her father where within the port she stayed her coach and round about her came her brothers made as of immortal frame who yet disdained not for her love mean deeds but took from coach her mules brought in her weeds and she ascends her chamber where pervade a quick fire was by her old chambermaid eurymedusa the aprian born and brought by sea from apria to adorn the court of great elcinous because he gave to all the blessed phaeacians laws and like a heaven-born power in speech acquired the people's ears to one then so admired eurymedusa was esteemed no worse than worth the gift yet now grown old was nurse to ivory-armed nausicaa gave heat to all her fires and dressed her privy meat then rose ulysses and made way to town which ere he reached a mighty mist was thrown by pallas round about him in her care lest in the sway of envies popular some proud phaeacian might foul language pass jostle him up and ask him what he was entering the lovely town yet through the cloud pallas appeared and like a young wench showed bearing a pitcher stood before him so as if objected purposely to know what there he needed whom he questioned thus know you not daughter where alcinous that rules this town dwells ay a poor distressed mere stranger here no none i may request to make this court known to me she replied strange father i will see you satisfied in that request my father dwells just by the house you seek for but go silently nor ask nor speak to any other i shall be enough to show your way 
the men that here inhabit do not entertain with ready kindness strangers of what worth or state soever nor have taken forth lessons of civil usage or respect to men beyond them they upon their powers of swift ships building top the watery towers and job hath given them ships for sail so wrought they cut a feather and command a thought this said she ushered him and after he trod in the swift steps of the deity the free-sailed seamen could not get a sight of our ulysses yet though he forthright both by their houses and their persons passed palace about him such a darkness cast by her divine power and her reverend care she would not give the town-born cause to stare he wondered as he passed to see the ports the shipping in them and for all resorts the goodly market-steads and isles beside for the heroes walls so large and wide rampires so high and of such strength withal it would with wonder any eye appall at last they reached the court and pallas said now honoured stranger i will see you obeyed your will to show our ruler's house tis here where you shall find kings celebrating cheer enter amongst them nor admit a fear more bold a man is he prevails the more though man nor place lie ever saw before you first shall find the queen in court whose name is arete of parents born the same that was the king her spouse their pedigree i can report the great earth-shaker he of peribia that her sex outshone and youngest daughter was to eurymedon who of the unmeasured minded giants swayed the imperial sceptre and the pride allayed of men so impious would cold death and died himself soon after got the magnified in mind nausithous whom the kingdom state first held in supreme rule nausithous gat rexenor and alcinous now king rexenor whose seed did no male fruit spring and whom the silver bow graced phoebus slew young in the court his shed blood did renew in only arete who now is spouse to him that rules the kingdom in this house and is her uncle king alcinous who honours her past equal she may boast more honour of him than the honoured most of any wife in earth can of her lord how many more soever realms afford that keep house under husbands yet no more her husband honours her than her blessed store of gracious children all the city cast eyes on her as a goddess and give taste of their affections to her in their prayers still as she decks the street for all affairs wrapped in contention she dissolves to men whom she affects she wants no mind to deign goodness enough if her heart stand inclined to your dispatch hope all you wish to find your friends your longing family and all that can within your most affections fall this said away the grey-eyed goddess flew along the untamed sea left the lovely hue scaria presented out flew marathon and ample streeted athens lighted on where to the house that cast so thick a shade of erechtheus she ingression made ulysses to the lofty builded court of king alcinous made bold resort yet in his heart cast many a thought before the brazen pavement of the rich court bore his entered person like heaven's two main lights the rooms illustrated both days and nights on every side stood firm a wall of brass even from the threshold to the inmost pass which bore a roof up that all sapphire was the brazen thresholds both sides did enfold silver pilasters hung with gates of gold whose portal was of silver over which a golden cornice did the front enrich on each side dogs of gold and silver framed the house's guard stood which the deity lamed with knowing inwards had inspired and made that death nor age should their estates invade along the wall stood every way a throne from the entry to the lobby every one cast over with a rich wrought cloth of state beneath which the theasian princes sate at wine and food and feasted all the year youths forged of gold at every table there stood holding flaming torches that in night gave through the house each honoured guest his light and to encounter feast with housewifery in one room fifty women did apply their several tasks some apple-coloured corn ground in fair querns and some did spindles turn 
some work in looms no hand least rest receives but all had motion apt as aspen leaves and from the weeds they wove so fast they laid and so thick thrust together thread by thread that the oil of which the wool had drunk his fill did with his moisture in light dews distill as much as the phaeacian men excelled all other countrymen in art to build swift sailed ship so much the women there for work of webs past other women were past mean by palaces means they understood the grace of good works and had wits as good without the hall and close upon the gate a goodly orchard ground was situate of near ten acres about which was led a lofty quickset in it flourished high and broad fruit trees that pomegranates bore sweet figs pears olives and a number more most useful plants did there produce their store whose fruits the hardest winter could not kill nor hottest summer wither there was still fruit in his proper season all the year sweet zephyr breathed upon them blasts that were of varied tempers these he made to bear ripe fruits these blossoms pear grew after pear apple succeeded apple grape the grape fig after fig came time made never rape of any dainty there a sprightly vine spread here his root whose fruit a hot sunshine made ripe betimes here grew another green here some were gathering here some pressing seen a large allotted several each fruit had and all the adorned grounds their appearance made in flower and fruit at which the king did aim to the precisest order he could claim two fountains graced the garden of which one poured out a winding stream that overrun the grounds for their use chiefly the other went close by the lofty palace gate and lent the city his sweet benefit and thus the gods the court decked of alcinous patient ulysses stood a while at gaze but having all observed made instant pace into the court where all the peers he found and captains of phaeacia with cups crowned offering to sharp-eyed hermes to whom last they used to sacrifice when sleep had cast his inclination through their thoughts but these ulysses passed and forth went nor their eyes took note of him for pallas stopped the light with mists about him that unstayed he might first to alcinous and arete present his person and of both them she by pallas's counsel was to have the grace of foremost greeting therefore his embrace he cast about her knee and then off flew the heavenly air that hid him when his view with silence and with admiration struck the court quite through but thus he silence broke divine rexenor's offspring arete to thy most honoured husband and to thee a man who many labours have distressed is come for comfort and to every guest to all whom heaven vouchsafe delightsome lives and after to your issue that survives a good resignment of the goods ye leave with all the honour that yourselves receive amongst your people only this of me is the ambition that i may but see by your vouchsafed means and betimes vouchsafed my country earth since i have long been left to labours and to heirs barred from end and far from benefit of any friend he said no more but left them dumb with that went to the hearth and in the ashes sat aside the fire at last their silence break and echinius the old hero spake a man that all phaeacians passed in years and in persuasive eloquence all the peers knew much and used it well and thus spake he alcinous it shews not decently nor doth your honour what you see admit that this your guest should thus abjectly sit his chair the earth the hearth his cushion ashes as if opposed for food a throne adorned with due rites stands you more in hand to see his person placed in and command that instantly your heralds fill in wine that to the god that doth in lightning shine we may do sacrifice for he is there where these his reverend suppliants appear let what you have within be brought abroad to sup the stranger all these would have showed this fit respect to him but that they stay for your precedence that should grace the way when this had added to the well-inclined and sacred order of alcinous's mind 
then of the great in wit the hand he seized and from the ashes his fair person raised advanced him to a well-adorned throne and from this seat raised his most loved son laodamus that next himself was set to give him place the handmaid then did get a ewer of gold with water filled which placed upon a cauldron all with silver graced she poured out on their hands and then was spread a table which the butler set with bread as others served with other food the board in all the choice the present could afford ulysses meat and wine took and then thus the king the herald called pontonus serve wine through all the house that all may pay rights to the lightener who is still in way with humble suppliants and them pursues with all benign and hospitable dues pontonus gave acts to all he willed in honey sweetness giving minds wine filled disposing it in cups for all to drink all having drunk what either's heart could think fit for due sacrifice alcinous said hear me ye dukes that the phaeacians lead and you are counsellors that i may now discharge the charge my mind suggests to you for this our guest feast past and this night sleep next morn our senate summoned we will keep justs sacred to the gods and this our guest receive in solemn court with fitting feast then think of his return that under hand of our deduction his natural land without more toil or care and with delight and that soon given him how far hence to sight soever it can be he may ascend and in the meantime without wrong attend or other want fit means to that ascent what after austere fate shall make the event of his life's thread now spinning and began when his pained mother freed his root of man he must endure in all kinds if some god perhaps abides with us in his abode and other things will think upon than we the gods will stand whoever yet were free of their appearance to us when to them we offered hecatombs of fit esteem and would at feast sit with us even where we ordered our session they would likewise be encounterers of us when in way alone about his fit affairs went any one nor let them cloak themselves in any care to do us comfort we as near them are as are the cyclops or the impious race of earthy giants that would heaven outface ulysses answered let some other doubt employ your thoughts than what your words give out which intimate a kind of doubt that i should shadow in this shape a deity i bear no such least semblance or in wit virtue or person what may well befit one of those mortals whom you chiefly know bears up and down the burthen of the woe appropriate to poor man give that to me of whose moans i sit in the most degree and might say more sustaining griefs that all the gods consent to no one twixt their fall and my unpitied shoulders letting down the least aversion be the grace then shown to let me taste your free given food in peace through greatest grief the belly must have ease worse than an envious belly nothing is it will command his strict necessities of men most grieved in body or in mind that are in health and will not give their kind a desperate wound when most with cause i grieve it bids me still eat man and drink and live and this makes all forgot whatever ill i ever bear it ever bids me fill but this ease is but forced and will not last till what the mind likes be as well embraced and therefore let me wish you would partake in your late purpose when the morn shall make her next appearance deign me but the grace unhappy man that i may once embrace my country earth though i be still thrust at ancient ills yet make me but see that and then let life go when with all i see my high roofed large house lands and family this all approved and each willed every one since he hath said so fairly set him gone feast pass and sacrifice to sleep all vow their eyes at either's house ulysses now was left here with alcinous and his queen the all-loved arete the handmaids then the vessel of the banquet took away when arete set eye on his array knew both his out and underweed which she made with her maids and thus mused by what means he obtained their wearing which she made request to know 
and wings gave to these speeches guest first let me ask what and from whence you are and then who graced you with the weeds you wear said you not lately you had erred at seas and thence arrived here the Ertiades to this thus answered tis a pain o queen still to be opening wounds wrought deep and green of which the gods have opened store in me yet your will must be served far hence at sea there lies an isle that bears ogygia's name where atlas's daughter the ingenious dame fair-haired calypso lives a goddess grave and with whom men nor gods society have yet i past man unhappy lived alone by heaven's wrath forced her house companion for jove had with a fervent lightning cleft my ship in twain and far at black sea left me and my soldiers all whose lives i lost i in mine arms the keel took and was tossed nine days together up from wave to wave the tenth grim night the angry deities drave me and my rack on the isle in which doth dwell dreadful calypso who exactly well received and nourished me and promise made to make me deathless nor should age invade my powers with his deserts through all my days all moved not me and therefore on her stays seven years she made me lie and there spent i the long time steeping in the misery of ceaseless tears the garments i did wear from her fair hand the eighth revolved year or by her changed mind or by charge of jove she gave provoked way to my wished remove and in a many-jointed ship with wine dainty and savour bread and weeds divine signed with a harmless and sweet wind my pass then seventeen days at sea i homeward was and by the eighteenth the dark hills appeared that your earth thrusts up much my heart was cheered unhappy man for that was but a beam to show i yet had agonies extreme to put in sufferance which the earth shaker sent crossing my way with tempest violent unmeasured seas uplifting nor would give the billows leave to let my vessel live the least time quiet that even sighed to bear their bitter outrage which at last did tear her sides in pieces set on by the winds i yet through swum the waves that your shore binds till wind and water threw me up to it when coming forth a ruthless billow smit against huge rocks and an axisless shore my mangled body back again i bore and swum till i was fallen upon a flood whose shores methought on good advantage stood for my receipt rock free and fenced from wind and this i put for gathering up my mind then the divine night came and treading earth close by the flood that had from jove her birth within a thicket i reposed when round i ruffled up fallen leaves in heap and found let fall from heaven a sleep interminate and here my heart long time excruciate amongst the leaves i rested all that night even till the morning and meridian light the sun declining then delightsome sleep no longer laid my temples in his steep but forth i went and on the shore might see your daughter's maids play like a deity she shined above them and i prayed to her and she in disposition did prefer noblesse and wisdom no more low than might become the goodness of a goddess's height nor would you therefore hope supposed distressed as i was then and old to find the least of any grace from her being younger far with young folks wisdom makes her commerce rare yet she in all abundance did bestow both wine that makes the blood in humans grow and food and bathed me in the flood and gave the weeds to me which now ye see me have this through my griefs i tell you and tis true alcinous answered guest my daughter knew least of what most you give her nor became the course she took to let with every dame your person lackey nor hath with them brought yourself home too which first you had besought o blame her not said he heroical lord nor let me hear against her worth a word she faultless is and wished i would have gone with all her women home but i alone would venture my receipt here 
having fear and reverent awe of accidents that were of likely issue both your wrath to move and to inflame the common people's love of speaking ill to which they soon give place we men are all a most suspicious race my guest said he i use not to be stirred to wrath too rashly and where are preferred to men's conceits things that may both ways fail the noblest ever should the most prevail would jove our father pallas and the sun that were you still as now and could but run one fate with me you would my daughter wed and be my son-in-law still vowed to lead your rest of life here i a house would give and household goods so freely you would live confined with us but gainst your will shall none contain you here since that were violence done to jove our father for your passage home that you may well know we can overcome so great a voyage thus it shall succeed to-morrow shall our men take all their heed while you securely sleep to see the seas in calmest temper and if that will please show you your country and your house ere night though far beyond eubea be that sight and this eubea as our subjects say that have been there and seen is far away farthest from us of all the parts they know and made the trial when they helped to roll the gold-locked radamanth to give him view of earth-born titius whom their speeds did show in that far-off eubea the same day they set from hence and home made good their way with ease again and him they did convey which i report to you to let you see how swift my ships are and how matchlessly my young phaeacians with their oars prevail to beat the sea through and assist to sail this cheered ulysses who in private prayed i would to jove our father what he said he could perform at all parts he should then be glorified for ever and i gain my natural country this discourse they had when fair-armed arete her handmaids bade a bed make in the portico and ply with cloths the covering tapestry the blankets purple well-napped waistcoats too to wear for more warmth what these had to do they torches took and did the bed pervade they moved ulysses for his rest and said come guest your bed is fit now framed to rest motion of sleep was gracious to their guest which now he took profoundly being laid within a loopholed tower where was conveyed the sounding portico the king took rest in a retired part of the house where dressed the queen herself abed and trundle bed and by her lord reposed her reverend head end of the seventh book the eighth book of the odysseys of homer this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by phil schempf the eighth book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman the argument the peers of the theasian state a council call to consolate ulysses with all means for home the council to a banquet come invited by the king which done assays for hurling of the stone the youths make with the stranger king demodocus at feast doth sing the adultery of the gods of arms with her that rules in amorous charms and after sings the intercourse of acts about the epian horse another argument theta the council's frame at fleet applied in strifes of game ulysses tried now when the rosy-fingered morn arose the sacred power alcinous did dispose did likewise rise and like him left his ease the city raiser the Artiades. the council at navy was designed to which alcinous with the sacred mind came first of all on polished stones they sate near to the navy to increase the state minerva took the herald's form on her and served alcinous studious to prefer ulysses suit for home about the town she made quick way and filled with the renown of that design the ears of every man proclaiming thus peers phaecensian and men of council all haste to the court to hear the stranger that made late resort to king alcinous 
long time lost at sea, and is in person like a deity. This all their powers set up, and spirit instilled, and straight the court and seats with men were filled. The whole state wondered at Laertes' son when they beheld him. Pallas put him on a supernatural and heavenly dress, enlarged him with a height and goodliness in breast and shoulders, that he might appear gracious and grave and reverend, and bear a perfect hand on his performance there in all the trials they resolved to impose. All met, and gathered in attention close, Alcinous thus bespake them. Dukes and lords, hear me digest my hearty thoughts in words. This stranger here, whose travels found my court, I know not, nor can tell if his resort from east or west comes. But his suit is this, that to his country earth we would dismiss his hither forced person, and doth bear the mind to pass it under every peer, whom I prepare and stir up, making known my free desire of his deduction. Nor shall there ever any other man that tries the goodness Phaecensian in me and my court's entertainment stay, mourning for passage, under least delay. Come then, a ship into the sacred seas, new-built, now launch we, and from out our priests choose two and fifty youths, of all the best to use an oar, all which see straight impressed and in their oar-bound seats, let others hie home to our court, commanding instantly the solemn preparation of a feast, in which provision may for any guest be made at my charge. Charge of these low things I give our youth. You, scepter-bearing kings, consort me home, and help with grace to use this guest of ours. No man shall refuse. Some other of you haste, and call to us the sacred singer, grave Demodocus, to whom hath God given song that can excite the heart, of whom he listeth with delight? This said, he led. The sceptre-bearers lent their free attendance, and with all speed went the herald for the sacred man in song. Youths two and fifty, chosen from the throng, went, as was willed, to the untamed sea's shore. Where come, they launched the ship. The mast it bore advanced, sails hoised, every seat his oar gave with a leather thong. The deep moist then they further reached. The dry streets flowed with men that trooped up to the king's capacious court, whose porticoes were choked with the resort, whose walls were hung with men, young, old, thrust there in mighty concourse, for whose promised cheer Alcinous slew twelve sheep, eight white-toothed swine, two crooked haunched beeves which flayed and dressed, Divine the show was of so many a jocund guest, all set together at so set a feast, to whose accomplished state the herald then the lovely singer led, who past all men the muse affected, gave him good and ill, his eyes put out, but put in soul at will. His place was given him in a chair all graced with silver studs, and gainst the pillar placed, whereas the centre to the state he rests and round about the circle of the guests. The herald on a pin above his head his soundful harp hung, to whose height he led his hand for taking of it down at will. A board set by with food, and forth did fill a bowl of wine, to drink at his desire. The rest then fell to feast, and when the fire of appetite was quenched, the muse inflamed the sacred singer. Of men highliest famed he sung the glories, and a poem penned that in applause did ample heaven ascend whose subject was the stern contention betwixt Ulysses and great Thetis's son. As at a banquet sacred to the gods, in dreadful language they expressed their odds, when Agamemnon sat rejoiced in soul to hear the Greek peers jar in terms so foul. For augur Phoebus in presage had told the king of men, desirous to unfold the war's perplexed end, and being therefore gone in heavenly Pythia to the porch of stone, that then the end of all grief should begin twixt Greece and Troy, when Greece, with strife to win that wished conclusion, in her king should jar, and plead, if force or wit must end the war. This brave contention did the poet sing, expressing so the spleen of either king that his large purple weed Ulysses held before his face and eyes, since thence distilled tears uncontained, which he obscured, in fear to let the observing presence note a tear. 
but when his sacred song the mere divine had given an end a goblet crowned with wine ulysses drying his wet eyes did seize and sacrifice to those gods that would please to inspire the poet with a song so fit to do him honour and renown his wit his tears then stayed but when again began by all the king's desires the moving man again ulysses could not choose but yield to that soft passion which again withheld he kept so cunningly from sight that none except alcinous himself alone discerned him move so much but he sat next and heard him deeply sigh which his pretext could not keep hid from him yet he concealed his utterance of it and would have it held from all the rest break off the song and this said to those o'er affecting peers of his princes and peers we now are satiate with sacred song that fits a feast of state with wine and food now then to field and try in all kinds our approved activity that this our guest may give his friends to know in his return that we as little owe to fights and wrestlings leaping speed of race as these are court rites and commend our grace in all to all superior forth he led the peers and people trooped up to their head nor must demodocus be left within whose harp the herald hung upon the pin his hand in his took and abroad he brought the heavenly poet out the same way wrought that did the princes and what they would see with admiration with his company they wished to honour to the place of game these thronged and after routs of other came of all sort infinite of youths that strove many and strong rose to their trials love up rose acronius and Achialus, elatrius primnius and Anchialus, natrius eretmius thon Proreus, Pontius, and strong Amphialus, son to Tectonides, Pelinius. Uprose to these the great Euryalus, in action like the homicide of war. Nabolides, that was for person far, past all the rest. But one he could not pass, nor any thought improve, Laodamus. Up and Abyssinius then arose, and three sons of the scepter state. And those were Halius, the forepraised Laodamus, and clitonius like a god in grace these first the foot game tried and from the list took start together up the dust in mist they hurled about as in their speed they flew but clitonius first of all the crew a stitch's length in any fallow field made good his pace when where the judges yield the prize and praise his glorious speed arrived next for the boisterous wrestling game they strived at which Euryalus the rest outshone. At leap Amphialus, at the hollow stone Elatrius excelled, at buffets last Laodamus, the king's fair son surpassed. When all had strived in these essays their fill, Laodamus said, Come, friends, let's prove what skill this stranger hath attained to in our sport. Methinks he must be of an active sort, his calves thighs hands and well-knit shoulders show that nature disposition did bestow to fit with fact their form nor once he prime but sour affliction made a mate with time makes time the more seen nor imagine i a worse thing to enforce debility than is the sea though nature ne'er so strong knits one together nor conceive you wrong replied euryalus but prove his blood with what you question in the midst then stood renowned Laodamus, and proved him thus. Come, stranger father, and assay with us your powers in these contentions. If your show be answered with your worth, tis fit that you should know these conflicts. Nor doth glory stand on any worth more in a man's command than to be strenuous both of foot and hand. Come then, make proof with us. Discharge your mind of discontentments. For not far behind comes your deduction ship is ready now and men and all things why said he dost thou mock me laodamus and these strifes bind my powers to answer i am more inclined to cares than conflict much sustained i have and still am suffering i come here to crave in your assemblies means to be dismissed and pray both kings and subjects to assist Euryalus an open brawl began and said i take you sir for no such man as fits these honoured strifes 
a number more strange men there are that i would choose before to one that loves to lie a shipboard much or is the prince of sailors or to such as traffic far and near and nothing mind but freight and passage and a foreright wind or to a victualler of a ship or men that set up all their powers for rampant gain i can compare or hold you like to be but for a wrestler or of quality fit for contentions noble you abhor from worth of any such competitor ulysses frowning answered stranger far thy words are from the fashions regular of kind or honour thou art in thy guise like to a man that authors injuries i see the gods to all men give not all manly addiction wisdom words that fall like dice upon the square still some man takes ill form from parents but god often makes that fault of form up with observed repair of pleasing speech that makes him held for fair that makes him speak securely makes him shine in an assembly with a grace divine men take delight to see how evenly lie his words asteep in honey modesty another then hath fashion like a god but in his language he is foul and broad and such art thou a person fair is given but nothing else is in thee sent from heaven for in thee lurks a base and earthy soul and the hast compelled me with a speech most foul to be thus bitter i am not unseen in these fair strifes as thy words overween but in the first rank of the best i stand at least i did when youth and strength of hand made me thus confident but now am worn with woes and labours as a human born to bear all anguish suffered much i have the war of men and the inhuman wave have i driven through at all parts but with all my waste in sufferance what yet may fall in my performance at these strifes i'll try thy speech hath moved and made my wrath run high this said with robe and all he grasped a stone a little graver than was ever thrown by these phaeacians in their wrestling rout more firm more massy which turned round about he hurried from him with a hand so strong it sung and flew and over all the throng that at the other's mark stood quite it went yet down fell all beneath it fearing spent the force that drave it flying from his hand as it a dart were or a walking wand and far past all the marks of all the rest his wing stole away when pallas straight impressed a mark at fall of it resembling then one of the navy given phaeacian men and thus advanced ulysses one though blind o stranger groping may thy stones fall find for not admits the rout of all marks it fell but far before all of thy worth think well and stand in all strifes no phaeacian here this bound can either better or come near ulysses joyed to hear that one man yet used him benignly and would truth of it in those contentions and then thus smooth he took his speech down reach me that now youth you shall and straight i think have one such more and one beyond it too and now whose core stands sound and great within him since ye have thus put my spleen up come again and brave the guest ye tempted with such gross disgrace at wrestling buffets whirlbat speed or race at all or either i accept at none but urge the whole state of you only one i will not challenge in my forced boast and that's laodamus for he's mine host and who will fight or wrangle with his friend unwise he is and base and will contend with him that feeds him in a foreign place and takes all edge off from his own sought grace none else except i here nor none despise but wish to know and prove his faculties that dares appear now no strife ye can name am i unskilled in reckon any game of all that are as many as there are in use with men for archery i dare affirm myself not mean of all a troop i'll make the first foe with mine arrow stoop though with me ne'er so many fellows bend their bows at marked men and affect their end only was philoctetes with his bow still my superior when we greeks would show our archery against our foes of troy but all that now by bread frail life and joy i far hold my inferiors men of old none now alive shall witness me so bold 
to vaunt equality with such men as these echalian eurytus hercules who with their bows durst with the gods contend and therefore caught eurytus soon his end nor died at home in age a reverend man but by the great incensed delphian was shot to death for daring competence with him in all an archer's excellence a spear i'll hurl as far as any man shall shoot a shaft how at a race i can bestir my feet i only yield to fear and doubt to meet with my superior here so many seas so too much have misused my limbs for race and therefore have diffused a dissolution through my loved knees this said he stilled all talking properties alcinous only answered o my guest in good part take we what you have been pressed with speech to answer you would make appear your virtues therefore that will still shine where your only look is yet must this man give your worth ill language when he does not live in sort of mortals whencesoe'er he springs that judgment hath to speak becoming things that will deprave your virtues note then now my speech and what my love presents to you that you may tell heroes when you come to banquet with your wife and birth at home mindful of our worth what deservings jove hath put on our parts likewise in remove from sire to son as an inherent grace kind and perpetual we must needs give place to other countrymen and freely yield we are not blameless in our fights of field buffets nor wrestlings but in speed of feet and all the equipage that fits a fleet we boast us best for tables ever spread with neighbour feasts for garments varied for poesy music dancing baths and beds and now phaeacians you that bear your heads and feet with best grace in an amoring dance and flame our guest here that he may advance our worth past all the worlds to his home friends as well for the unmatched grace that commends your skill in footing of a dance as theirs that fly a race best and so all affairs at which we boast us best he best may try as sea race land race dance and posy some one with instant speed to court retire and fetch demodocus's soundful lyre this said the god-graced king and quick resort pontinus made for that fair harp to court nine of the lot choosed public rulers rose that all in those contentions did dispose commanding a most smooth ground and a wide and all the people in fair game aside then with the rich harp came pontinus and in the midst took place demodocus about him then stood forth the choice young men that on man's first youth made fresh entry then had art to make their natural motion sweet and shook a most divine dance from their feet that twinkled star-like moved as swift and fine and beat the air so thin they made it shine ulysses wondered at it but amazed he stood in mind to hear the dance so phrased for as they danced demodocus did sing the bright-crowned venus's love with battle's king as first they closely mixed in the house of fire what worlds of gifts won her to his desire who then the night and day bed did defile of good king vulcan but in little while the sun their mixture saw and came and told the bitter news did by his ears take hold of vulcan's heart then to his forge he went and in his shrewd mind a deep stuff did invent his mighty anvil in the stock he put and forged a net that none could loose or cut that when it had them it might hold them fast which having finished he made utmost haste up to the dear room where his wife he wooed and madly wrath with mars he all bestowed the bed and bedposts all the beam above that crossed the chamber and a circle strove of his device to wrap in all the room and twas as pure as of a spider's loom the woof before tis woven no man nor god could set his eye on it a slight so odd his art showed in it all his craft bespent about the bed he feigned as if he went to well-built lemnos his most loved town of all the towns earthly nor left this unknown to golden bridled using mars who kept no blind watch over him but seeing stepped his rival so aside he hasted home with fair wreathed venus's love stung 
who was come new from the court of her most mighty sire mars entered wrung her hand and the retire her husband made to lemnos told and said now love is vulcan gone let us to bed he's for the barbarous Scythians. well appaid was venus with it and afresh essayed their old encounter down they went and straight about them clinged the artificial slight of most wise vulcan and were so ensnared that neither they could stir their course prepared in any limb about them nor arise and then they knew they would no more disguise their close conveyance but lay forced stone still back rushed the both foot cooked but straight in skill from his near scout hole turned nor ever went to any lemnos but the sure event left phoebus to discover who told all then home hopped vulcan full of grief and gall stood in the portal and cried out so high that all the gods heard father of the sky and every other deathless god said he come all and a ridiculous object see and yet not sufferable neither come and witness how when still i step from home lame that i am jove's daughter doth profess to do me all the shameful offices indignities despites that can be thought and loves this all things making come to naught since he is fair forsooth foot sound and i took in my brain a little leg awry and no fault mine but all my parents fault who should not get if mock me with my halt but see how fast they sleep while i in moan am only made an idle looker-on one bed their turn serves and it must be mine i think yet i have made their self-love shine they shall no more wrong me and none perceive nor will they sleep together i believe with too hot haste again thus both shall lie in craft and force till the extremity of all the dower i gave her sire to gain a dogged set-faced girl that will not stain her face with blushing though she shame her head he pays me back she's fair but was no maid while this long speech was making all were come to vulcan's holy brazen founded home earth-shaking neptune useful mercury and far-shot phoebus no she-deity for shame would show there all the give good gods stood in the portal and past periods gave length to laughters all rejoiced to see that which they said that no impiety finds good success at the end and now said one the slow outgoes the swift lame vulcan known to be the slowest of the gods outgoes mars the most swift and this is that which grows to greatest justice that adultery sport obtained by craft by craft of other sort and lame craft too is plagued which grieves the more that sound limbs turning lame the lame restore this speech amongst themselves they entertained when phoebus thus asked hermes thus enchained wouldst thou be hermes to be thus disclosed though with thee golden venus were reposed he soon gave an answer oh said he thou king of archers would toward thus with me though thrice so much shame nay though infinite were poured about me that every light in great heaven shining witnessed all my harms so golden venus slumbered in mine arms the gods again laughed even the watery state wrung out a laughter but propitiate was still for mars and prayed the god of fire he would dissolve him offering the desire he made to jove to pay himself and said all due debts should be by the gods repaid pay me no words said he where deeds lend pain wretched the words are given for wretched men now shall i bind you in the immortal sight if mars be once loosed nor will pay his right vulcan said he if mars should fly nor see thy right repaid it should be paid by me your word so given i must accept said he which said he loose them mars then rushed from sky and stooped cold thrace the laughing deity for cyprus was and took her paphian state where she a grove ne'er cut had consecrate all with arabian odors fumed and hath an altar there at which the graces bathe and with immortal balms besmooth her skin fit for the bliss immortal solace in 
decked her in to be studied attire and apt to set beholders hearts on fire this sung the sacred muse whose notes and words the dancer's feet kept as his hands his cords ulysses much was pleased and all the crew this would the king have varied with a new and pleasing measure and perform it by two with whom none would strive in dancery and those his sons were that must therefore dance alone and only to the harp advance without the words and this sweet couple was young hallius and divine laodamus who danced a ball dance then the rich wrought ball that polybus had made of purple all they took to hand one threw it to the sky and then danced back the other capering high would surely catch it ere his foot touched ground and up again advanced it and so found the other cause of dance and then did he dance lofty tricks till next it came to be his turn to catch and serve the other still when they had kept it up to either's will they then danced ground tricks oft mixed hand in hand and did so gracefully their change command that all the other youths that stood at pause with deafening shouts gave them the great applause then said ulysses o oh, past all men here clear not in power but in desert as clear you said your dancers did the world surpass and they perform it clear and to amaze this won alcinous's heart an equal prize he gave ulysses saying matchless wise princes and rulers i perceive our guest and therefore let our hospitable best in fitting gifts be given him twelve chief kings there are that order all the glorious things of this our kingdom and the thirteenth i exist as crown to all let instantly be thirteen garments given him and of gold precious and fine a talent while we hold this our assembly be all fetched and given that to our feast prepared as to his heaven our guest may enter and that nothing be left unperformed that fits his dignity euryalus shall here conciliate himself with words and gifts since past our rate he gave bad language this did all commend and give in charge and every king did send his herald for his gift euryalus answering for his part said alcinous our chief of all since you command i will to this our guest by all means reconcile and give him this entirely metalled sword the handle massy silver and the board that gives it cover all of ivory new and in all kinds worth his quality this put he straight into his hand and said frolic o guest and father if words fled have been offensive let swift whirlwinds take and ravish them from thought may all gods make thy wife's sight good to thee in quick retreat to all thy friends and best loved breeding seat their long miss quitting with the greater joy in whose sweet vanish all thy worst annoy and frolic thou to all height friend said he which heaven confirm with wished felicity nor ever give again desire to thee of this sword's use which with effect so free in my reclaim thou hast bestowed on me this said athwart his shoulders he put on the right fair sword and then did set the sun when all the gifts were brought which back again with king alcinous in all the train were by the honoured heralds borne to court which his fair sons took and from the resort laid by their reverend mother each his throne of all the peers which yet were overshone in king alcinous's command ascended whom he to pass as much in gifts contended and to his queen said wife see brought me here the fairest cabinet i have and there impose a well cleansed in and utter weed a cauldron heat with water that with speed our guests well bathed and all his gifts be made sure it may a joyful appetite procure to his succeeding feast and make him hear the poet's hymn with the securer ear to all which i will add my bowl of gold in all frame curious to make him hold my memory always dear and sacrifice with it at home to all the deities then arete her maids charged to set on a well-sized cauldron quickly which was done clear water poured in flame made so entire it gilt the brass and made the water fire in mean space from her chamber brought the queen a wealthy cabinet 
where pure and clean she put the garments and the gold bestowed by that free state and then the other vowed by her alcinous and said now guest make close and fast your gifts lest when you rest a shipboard sweetly in your way you meet some loss that less may make your next sleep sweet this when ulysses heard all sure he made and closed and bound safe for the saving trade the reverend for her wisdom circe had in four years taught him then the handmaid bade his worth to bathing which rejoiced his heart for since he did with his calypso part he had no hot baths none had favoured him nor being so tender of his kingly limb but all the time he spent in her abode he lived respected as he were a god cleansed then and balmed fair shirt and robe put on fresh come from bath and to the feasters gone nausicaa that from the gods hands took the sovereign beauty of her blessed look stood by a well-carved column of the room and through her eye her heart was overcome with admiration of the port impressed in his aspect and said god save you guest be cheerful as in all the future state your home will show you in your better fate but yet even then let this remember to be your life's price i lent and you owe it me and varied in all counsels gave reply nausicaa flower of all this empery so juno's husband that the strife for noise makes in the clouds bless me with strife of joys in the desired day that my house shall show as i as i to a goddess there shall vow to thy fair hand that did my being give which i'll acknowledge every hour i live this said alcinous placed him by his side then took they feast and did in parts divide the several dishes filled out wine and then the strive for his worth of worthy men and reverenced of state demodocus was brought in by the good pontinus in midst of all the guests they gave him place against a lofty pillar when this grace the graced with wisdom did him from the chine that stood before him of a white-toothed swine being far the daintiest joint mixed through with fat he carved to him and sent it where he sat by his old friend the herald willing thus herald reach this to grave demodocus say i salute him and his worth embrace poets deserve past all the human race reverend respect and honour since the queen of knowledge and the supreme worth in men the muse informs them and loves all their race this reached the herald to him who the grace received encouraged which when feast was spent ulysses amplified to this assent demodocus i must prefer you far past all your sort if or the muse of war jove's daughter prompts you that the greeks respects or if the sun that those of troy affects for i have heard you since my coming sing the fate of greece to an admired string how much our sufferance was how much we wrought how much the actions rose to when we fought so lively forming as you have been there or some free relator lent your ear forth then and sing the wooden horse's frame built by epius by the martial dame taught the whole fabric which by force of slight ulysses brought into the city's height when he had stuffed it with as many men as levelled lofty ilion with the plain with all which if you can as well enchant as with expression quick and elegant you sung the rest i will pronounce you clear inspired by god past all that ever were this said even stirred by god up he began and to his song fell past the forms of man beginning where the greeks a shipboard went and every chief had set on fire his tent when the other kings in great ulysses guide in troy's vast market-place the horse did hide from whence the trojans up to ilion drew the dreadful engine where sat all aru their kings about it many counsels given how to dispose it in three ways were driven their whole distractions first if they should feel the hollow wood's heart searching with piercing steel or from the battlements drawn higher yet deject it headlong or that counterfeit so vast and novel set on sacred fire vowed to appease each angered godhead's ire on which opinion they thereafter saw they then should have resolved the unaltered law of fate presaging that troy then should end 
when the hostile horse she should receive to friend for therein should the grecian kings lie hid to bring the fate and death they after did he sung besides the greeks eruption from those their hollow crafts and horse forgone and how they made the population tread beneath her feet so high a city's head in which affair he sung in other place that of that ambush some man else did race the ilian towers than laertiades but here he sung that he alone did seize with menelaus the ascended roof of prince deiphobus and mars-like proof made of his valour a most dreadful fight daring against him and there vanquished quite in little time by great minerva's aid all ilion's remnant and troy level laid this the divine expressor did so give both act and passion that he made it live and to ulysses facts did breathe a fire so deadly quickening that it did inspire old death with life and rendered life so sweet and passionate that all there felt it fleet which made him pity his own cruelty and put into that ruth so pure an eye of human frailty that to see a man could so revive from death yet no way can defend from death his own quick powers it made feel their death's horrors and he felt life fade in tears his feeling brain sweat for in things that move past utterance tears ope all their springs nor are there in the powers that all life bears more true interpreters of all than tears and as a lady mourns her soul loved lord that fallen before his city by the sword fighting to rescue from a cruel fate his town and children and in dead estate yet panting see him wraps him in her arms weeps shrieks and pours her health into his arms lies on him striving to become his shield from foes that still assail him spears impelled through back and shoulders by whose points embrued they raise and lead him into servitude labour and languor for all which the dame eats down her cheeks with tears and feeds life's flame with miserable sufferance so this king of tears sweat anguish oped a boundless spring nor yet was seen to any one man there but king alcinous who sat so near he could not scape him sighs so choked so break from all his tempers which the king did take both note and grave respect of and thus spake hear me phaeacian counsellors and peers and seize demodocus perhaps all ears are not delighted with his song for ever since the divine muse sung our guest hath never contained from secret mornings it may fall that something sung he hath been grieved withal as touching his particular forbear that feast may jointly comfort all hearts here and we may cheer our guest up tis our best in all due honour for our reverend guest is all our celebration gifts and all his love hath added to our festival a guest and suppliant too we should esteem dear as our brother one that doth but dream he hath a soul or touch but at a mind deathless and manly should stand so inclined nor cloak you longer with your curious wit loved guest whatever we shall ask of it it now stands on your honest state to tell and therefore give your name no more conceal what of your parents and the town that bears name of your native or of foreigners that nearest border you are called in fame there's no man living walks without a name noble or base but had one from his birth imposed as fit as to be born what earth people and city own you give to know tell but our ships all that your way must know for our ships know the expressed minds of men and will so most intentively retain their scopes appointed that they never err and yet use never any man to steer nor any rudders have as others need they know men's thoughts and whither tends their speed and there will set them for you cannot name a city to them nor fat soil that fame hath any notice given but well they know and they will fly to them though they ebb and flow in blackest clouds and night and never bear of any rack or rock the slenderest fear but this i heard my sire nausithous say long since that neptune seeing us convey so safely passengers of all degrees was angry with us and upon our seas a well-built ship we had near harbour come from safe deduction of some stranger home made in his flitting billows stick stone still 
and dimmed our city like a mighty hill with shade cast round about it this report the old king made in which miraculous sort if god had done such things or left undone at his good pleasure be it but now on and truth relate us both whence you erred and to what clime of men would be transferred with all their fair towns be they as they are if rude unjust and all irregular or hospitable bearing minds that please the mighty deity which one of these would you be set at say and you are there and therefore what afflicts you why to hear the fate of greece and ilion mourn you so the gods have done it as to all they do destined destruction that from thence may rise a poem to instruct posterities fell any kinsman before ilion some worthy sire-in-law or like near son whom next our blood and self-race we love or any friend perhaps in whom did move a knowing soul and no unpleasing thing since such a good one is no underling to any brother for what fits true friends true wisdom is that blood and birth transcends end of the eighth book the ninth book of the odysseys of homer this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by phil schampf the ninth book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman the argument ulysses here is first made known who tells the stern contention his powers did gainst the sickens try and thence the latophagi extends his conquest and from them assays the cyclop polypheme and by the crafts his wits apply he puts him out his only eye another argument iota the strangely fed latophagi the sickens fled the cyclops eye ulysses thus resolved the king's demands alcinous in whom this empire stands you should not of so natural right disinherit your princely feast as take from it the spirit to hear a poet that an accent brings the god's breasts down and breathes them as he sings is sweet and sacred nor can i conceive in any common weal what more doth give note of the just and blessed empery than to see comfort universally cheer up the people when in every roof she gives observers a most human proof of men's contents to see a neighbor's feast adorn it through and thereat hear the breast of the divine muse men in order set a wine page waiting tables crowned with meat set close to guests that are to use it skilled the cupboards furnished and the cups still filled this shows to my mind most humanely fair nor should you for me still the heavenly air that stirred my soul so for i love such tears as fall from fit notes beaten through mine ears with repetitions of what heaven hath done and break from hearty apprehension of god and goodness though they show my ill and therefore doth my mind excite me still to tell my bleeding moan but much more now to serve your pleasure that to overflow my tears with such cause may by sighs be driven though ne'er so much plagued i may seem by heaven and now my name which way shall lead all to my miseries after that their sounds may fall through your ears also and show having fled so much affliction first who rests his head in your embraces when so far from home i knew not where to obtain at resting room i am ulysses laertiades the fear of all the world for policies for which my facts as high as heaven resound i dwell in ithaca earth's most renowned all overshadowed with the shake leaf hill tree famed neritus whose near confines fill islands a number well inhabited that under my observance taste their bread dulichius samos and full of food zacynthus likewise graced with store of wood but ithaca though in the seas it lie yet lies she so aloft she casts her eye quite over all the neighbour continent far northward situate and being lent but little favour of the morn and sun with barren rocks and cliffs is overrun 
and yet of hardy youths a nurse of name nor could i see a soil where e'er i came more sweet and wishful yet from hence was i withheld with horror by the deity divine calypso in her cavy house and flamed to make me her sole lord and spouse circe Eia, too that knowing dame whose veins the like affections did inflame detained me likewise but to neither's love could i be tempted which doth well approve nothing so sweet is as our country's earth and joy of those from whom we claim our birth though roofs far richer we far off possess yet from our native all our more is less to which as i contend i will tell the much distressed conferring facts that fell by jove's divine prevention since i set from ruined troy my first foot in retreat from ilion ill winds cast me on the coast the sicans hold where i employed mine host for Ismarus, a city built just by my place of landing of which victory made me the expuner i depeopled it slew all the men and did their wives remit with much spoil taken which we did divide that none might need his part i then applied all speed for flight but my command therein fools that they were could no observance win of many soldiers who with spoil fed high would yet fill higher and excessively fell to their wine gave slaughter on the shore cloven-footed beeves and sheep in mighty store in mean space sickens did to sickens cry when of their nearest dwellers instantly many and better soldiers made strong head that held the continent and managed their horse with high skill on which they would fight when fittest cause serve and again alight with soon seen vantage and on foot contend their concourse swift was and had never end as thick and sudden twas as flowers and leaves dark spring discovers when she light receives and then began the bitter fate of jove to alter us unhappy which even strove to give us sufferance at our fleet we made enforced stand and there they did invade our thrust-up forces darts and countered darts with blows on both sides either making parts good upon either while the morning shone and sacred day her bright increase held on though much outmatched in number but soon as phoebus westward fell the sickens won much hand of us six proved soldiers fell of every ship the rest they did compel to seek of flight escape from death and fate thence sad in heart we sailed and yet our state was something cheered that being o'ermatched so much in violent number our retreat was such as saved so many our dear loss the less that they survived so like for like success yet left we not the coast before we called home to our country earth the souls exhaled of all the friends the sickens overcame thrice called we on them by their several name and then took leave then from the angry north cloud-gathering jove a dreadful storm called forth against our navy covered shore and all with gloomy vapours night did headlong fall from frowning heaven and then hurled here and there was all our navy the rude winds did tear in three in four parts all their sails and down driven under hatches were we pressed to drown up rush we yet again and with tough hand two days two nights entoiled we gat near land labours and sorrows eating up our minds the third clear day yet to more friendly winds we masts advanced we white sails spread and sate four winds and guides again did iterate our ease and home hopes which we clear had reached had not by chance a sudden north wind fetched with an extreme sea quite about again our whole endeavours and our course constrained to giddy round and with our bowed sails greet dreadful malia calling back our fleet as far north as cethera nine days more adverse winds tossed me and the tenth the shore where dwelt the blossom-fed lotophagi i fetched fresh water took in instantly fell to our food a shipboard and then sent two of my choice men to the continent adding a third a herald to discover what sort of people were the rulers over the land next to us where the first they met were the lotophagi that made them eat their country diet 
and no ill intent hid in their hearts to them and yet the event to ill converted it for having eat their dainty viands they did quite forget as all men else that did but taste their feast both countrymen and country nor addressed any return to inform what sort of men made fixed abode there but would needs maintain abode themselves there and eat that food ever i made out after and was fain to sever the enchanted knot by forcing their retreat that strived and wept and would not leave their meat for heaven itself but dragging them to fleet i wrapped in sure bands both their hands and feet and cast them under hatches and away commanded all the rest without least stay lest they should taste the loti too and forget with such strange raptures their despised retreat all then aboard we beat the sea with oars and still with sad hearts sailed by outway shores till the outlawed cyclops's land we fetched a race of proud-lived loiterers that never sow nor put plant in earth nor use a plough but trust in god for all things and their earth unsown unploughed gives every offspring birth that other lands have wheat and barley vines that bear in goodly grapes delicious wines and jove sends showers for all no counsels there nor counsellors nor laws but all men bear their heads aloft on mountains and those steep and on their tops too and their houses keep in vaulty caves their households governed all by each man's law imposed in several nor wife nor child awed but as he thinks good none for another caring but there stood another little isle well stored with wood betwixt this and the entry neither nigh the cyclops's isle nor yet far off doth lie men's want it suffered but the men's supplies the goats made with their inarticulate cries goats beyond number this small island breeds so tame that no access disturbs their feeds no hunters that the tops of mountains scale and rub through woods with toil seek them at all nor is the soil with flocks fed down not ploughed nor ever in it any seed was sowed nor placed the neighbour cyclops there delights in brave vermilion prow decked ships nor rights useful and skilful in such works as need perfection to those traffics that exceed their natural confines to fly out and see cities of men and take in mutually the priests of others to themselves they live and to their island that enough would give a good inhabitant and time of year observed all things art could order there there close upon the sea sweet meadows spring that yet of fresh streams want no watering to their soft burthens but of special yield your vines would be there and your common field but gentle work make for your plough yet bear a lofty harvest when you came to shear for passing fat the soil is in it lies a harbour so opportune that no ties halsers or gables need nor anchors cast whom storms put in there are with stay embraced or to their full will safe or winds aspire to pilots uses their more quick desire at entry of the haven a silver ford is from a rock impressing fountain poured all set with sable poplars and this port were we arrived at by the sweet resort of some god guiding us for twas a night so ghastly dark all port was past our sight clouds hid our ships and would not let the moon afford a beam to us the whole isle won by not an eye of ours none thought the blore that then was up shoved waves against the shore that then to an unmeasured height put on we still at sea esteemed us till alone our fleet put in itself and then were struck our gathered sails our rest ashore we took and day expected when the morn gave fire we rose and walked and did the isle admire the nymphs jove's daughters putting up a herd of mountain goats to us to render cheered my fellow soldiers to our fleet we flew our crooked bows took long piled darts and drew ourselves in three parts out when by the grace that god vouchsafed we made a gainful chase twelve ships we had and every ship had nine fat goats allotted ten only mine thus all that day even till the sun was set we sat and feasted pleasant wine and meat plenteously taking for we had not spent our ruddy wine a shipboard 
supplement of large sort each man to his vessel drew when we the sacred city overthrew that held the sickens now then saw we near the cyclops late praised island and might hear the murmur of their sheep and goats and see their smokes ascend the sun then set and we when night succeeded took our rest ashore and when the world the morning's favour wore i called my friends to council charging them to make stay there while i took ship and stream with some associates and explored what men the neighbour island held if of rude disdain churlish and tyrannous or minds bewrayed pious and hospitable thus much said i boarded and commanded to ascend my friends and soldiers to put off and lend way to our ship they boarded sat and beat the old sea forth till we might see the seat the great cyclop held for his abode which was a deep cave near the common road of ships that touch there thick with laurels spread where many sheep and goats lay shadowed and near to this a hall of torn-up stone high built with pines that heaven and earth atone and lofty fronted oaks in which kept house a man in shape immane and monstrous fed all his flocks alone nor would afford commerce with men but had a wit abhorred his mind his body answering nor was he like any man that food could possibly enhance so hugely but beheld alone showed like a steep hill's top all overgrown with trees and brambles little thought had i of such vast objects when arrived so nigh some of my loved friends i made stay aboard to guard my ship and twelve with me i shored the choice of all i took besides along a goat-skin flagon of wine black and strong that morrow did present evanthios's son and priest to phoebus who had mansion in thracian ismarus the town i took he gave it me since i with reverence struck of his grave place his wife and children's good freed all of violence amidst a wood sacred to phoebus stood his house from whence he fetched me gifts of varied excellence seven talents of fine gold a bowl all framed of massy silver but his gift most famed was twelve great vessels filled with such rich wine as was incorruptible and divine he kept it as his jewel which none knew but he himself his wife and he that drew it was so strong that never any filled a cup where that was but by drops instilled and drunk it off but twas before allayed with twenty parts in water yet so swayed the spirit of that little that the whole a sacred odour breathed about the bowl had you the odour smelt and sent it cast it would have vexed you to forbear the taste and then the taste gained to the spirit it wrought to dare things high set up an end my thought of this a huge great flag and full i bore and in a good large knapsack victual store and longed to see this heap of fortitude that so illiterate was and upland rude that laws divine nor human he had learned with speed we reached the cavern nor discerned his presence there his flocks he fed at field entering his den each thing beheld did yield our admiration shelves with cheeses heaped sheds stuffed with lambs and goats distinctly kept distinct the biggest the more mean distinct distinct the youngest and in their precinct proper and placeful stood the troughs and pails in which he milked and what was given at meals set up a creaming in the evening still all scouring bright as dew upon the hill then were my fellows instant to convey kids cheeses lambs a shipboard and away sail the salt billow i thought best not so but better otherwise and first would know what guest gifts he would spare me little knew my friends on whom they would have prayed his view proved after that his inwards were too rough for such bold usage we were bold enough in what i suffered which was there to stay make fire and feed there though bear none away there sat we till we saw him feeding come and on his neck a burthen lugging home most highly huge of sear wood which the pile that fed his fire supplied all supper while down by his den he threw it and up rose a tumult with the fall afraid we close withdrew ourselves while he into a cave of huge receipt his high-fed cattle drave all that he milked 
the males he left without his lofty roofs that all bestowed about with rams and buck goats were and then a rock he lift aloft that dammed up to his flock the door they entered twas so hard to wield that two and twenty wagons all four wheeled could they be loaded and have teams that were proportioned to them could not stir it there thus making sure he kneeled and milked his ewes and braying goats with all a milker's dues then let in all their young then quick did dress his half milk up for cheese and in a press of wicker pressed it put in bowls the rest to drink and eat and serve his supping feast all works dispatched thus he began his fire which blown he saw us and thus did inquire ho oh, guests what are ye whence seal ye these seas traffic or rove ye and like thieves oppress poor strange adventurers exposing so your souls to danger and your lives to woe this uttered he when fear from our hearts took the very life to be so thunderstruck with such a voice and such a monster see but thus i answered erring grecians we from troy were turning homewards but by force of adverse winds in far diverted course such unknown ways took and on rude seas tossed as jove decreed are cast upon this coast of agamemnon famous atreus's son we boast ourselves the soldiers who hath won renown that reacheth heaven to overthrow so great a city and to ruin so many nations yet at thy knees lie our prostrate bosoms forced with prayers to try if any hospitable right or boon of other nature such as have been won by laws of other houses thou wilt give reverence the gods thou greatest of all that live we suppliants are and hospitable jove pours reek on all whom prayers want power to move and with their plagues together will provide that humble guests shall have their wants supplied he cruelly answered o oh, thou fool said he to come so far and to importune me with any god's fear or observed love we cyclops care not for your goat-fed jove nor other blessed ones we are better far to jove himself dare i bid open war to thee and all thy fellows if i please but tell me where's the ship that by the seas hath brought thee hither if far off or near inform me quickly these his temptings were but i too much knew not to know his mind and craft with craft paid telling him the wind thrust up from sea by him that shakes the shore had dashed our ships against his rocks and tore her ribs in pieces close upon his coast and we from high rack saved the rest were lost he answered nothing but rushed in and took two of my fellows up from earth and struck their brains against it like two whelps they flew about his shoulders and did all embrew the blushing earth no mountain lion tore two lambs so sternly lapped up all their gore gushed from their torn bodies limb by limb trembling with life yet ravished into him both flesh and marrow stuffed bones he eat and even the uncleansed entrails made his meat we weeping cast our hands to heaven to view a sight so horrid desperation flew with all our after lives to instant death in our believed destruction but when breath the fury of his appetite had got because the gulf his belly reached his throat man's flesh and goat's milk laying layer on layer till near choked up was all the pass for air along his den amongst his cattle down he rushed and streaked him when my mind was grown desperate to step in draw my sword and part his bosom where the strings about the heart circle the liver and add strength of hand but that rash thought more staid did countermand for there we all had perished since it passed our powers to lift aside a log so vast as barred all outscape and so sighed away the thought all night expecting active day which come he first of all his fire and flames then milks his goats and ewes then to their dames lets in their young and wondrous orderly with manly haste dispatched his housewifery then to his breakfast to which other two of my poor friends went which eat out then go his herds and fat flocks 
lightly putting by the churlish bar and closed it instantly for both those works with ease as much he did as you would ope and shut your quiver lid with storms of whistlings then his flock he drave up to the mountains an occasion gave for me to use my wits which to their height i strive to screw up that a vengeance might by some means fall from thence and pallas now afforded a full ear to my neediest vow this then my thoughts preferred a huge club laid close by his milk-house which was now in way to dry in season being an olive tree which late he felled and being green must be made lighter for his manage twas so vast that we resembled it to some fit mast to serve a ship of burthen that was driven with twenty oars and had a bigness given to bear a huge sea full so thick so tall we judged this club which i in part hewed small and cut a fathom off the piece i gave amongst my soldiers to take down and shave which done i sharpened it at top and then hardened in fire i hid it in the den within a nasty dunghill reeking there thick and so moist it issued everywhere then made i lots cast by my friends to try whose fortune served to dare the bored out eye of that man-eater and the lot did fall on four i wished to make my aid of all and i the fifth made chosen like the rest then came the even and he came from the feast of his fat cattle drave in all nor kept one male abroad if or his memory slept by god's direct will or of purpose was his driving in of all then doth surpass my comprehension but he closed again the mighty bar milked and did still maintain all other observation as before his work all done two of my soldiers more at once he snatched up and to supper went then dared i words to him and did present a bowl of wine with these words cyclop take a bowl of wine from my hand that may make way for the man's flesh thou hast eat and show what drink our ship held which in sacred vow i offer to thee to take ruth on me in my dismission home thy rages be now no more sufferable how shall men man and inhuman that thou art again greet thy abode and get thy actions grace if thou ragest and eatst up their race he took and drunk and vehemently joyed to taste the sweet cup and again employed my flagon's powers in treating more and said good guest again afford my taste thy aid and let me know thy name and quickly now that in thy recompense i may bestow a hospitable gift on thy desert and such a one as shall rejoice thy heart for to the cyclops too the gentle earth bears generous wine and jove augments her birth in store of such with showers but this rich wine fell from the river that is mere divine of nectar and ambrosia this again i gave him and again nor could the fool abstain but drunk as often when the noble juice had wrought upon his spirit i then gave use to fairer language saying cyclop now as thou demandest i'll tell my name do thou make good thy hospitable gift to me my name is no man no man each degree of friends as well as parents call my name he answered as his cruel soul became no man i'll eat thee last of all thy friends and this is that in which so much amends i vow to thy deservings thus shall be my hospitable gift made good to thee this said he upwards fell but then bent round his fleshy neck and sleep with all crowns crowned subdued the savage from his throat break out my wine with man's flesh gobbets like a spout when loaded with his cups he lay and snored and then i took the club's end up and gored the burning coal heap that the point might heat confirmed my fellows minds lest fear should let their vow assay and make them fly my aid straight was the olive lever i had laid amidst the huge fire to get hardening hot and glowed extremely though twas green which got from forth the cinders close about me stood my hearty friends but that which did the good was god's good inspiration that gave a spirit beyond the spirit they used to have 
who took the olive spar made keen before and plunged it in his eye and up i bore bent to the top close and helped pour it in with all my forces and as you have seen a shipwright bore a naval beam he oft thrusts at the auger's froof work still aloft and at the shank help others with a cord wound round about to make it sooner board all plying the round still so into his eye the fiery stake we labored to imply out gushed the blood that scalded his eyeball thrust out a flaming vapor that scorched all his brows and eyelids his eye strings did crack as in the sharp and burning rafter break and as a smith to harden any tool broad axe or mattock in his trough doth cool the red-hot substance that so fervent is it makes the cold waves straight to seethe and hiss so sawed and hissed his eye about the stake he roared withal and all his cavern brake in claps like thunder we did frighted fly dispersed in corners he from forth his eye the fixed stake plucked after which the blood flowed freshly forth and mad he hurled the wood about his hovel out he then did cry for other cyclops that in caverns by upon a windy promontory dwelled who hearing how impetuously he yelled rushed every way about him and inquire what ill afflicted him that he expired such horrid clamours and in sacred night to break their sleep so asked him if his fright came from some mortal that his flocks had driven or if by craft or might his death were given he answered from his den by craft nor might no man hath given me death they then said right if no man hurt thee and thyself alone that which is done to thee by jove is done and what great jove inflicts no man can fly pray to thy father yet a deity and prove from him if thou canst help acquire thus spake they leaving him when all on fire my heart with joy was that so well my wit and name deceived him whom now pain did split and groaning up and down he groping tried to find the stone which found he put aside but in the door sat feeling if he could as his sheep issued on some man lay hold esteeming me a fool that could devise no stratagem to scape his gross surprise but i contending what i could invent my friends and me from death so eminent to get delivered all my wiles i wove life being the subject and did this approve fat fleecy rams most fair and great lay there that did a burden like a violet bear these while this learned in villainy did sleep i yoked with osiers cut there sheep to sheep three in a rank and still the mid-sheep bore a man about his belly the two more marched on his each side for defence i then choosing myself the fairest of the den his fleecy belly under crept embraced his back and in his rich wool wrapped me fast with both my hands armed with as fast a mind and thus each man hung till the morning shined which come he knew the hour and led abroad his male flocks first the females unmilked stood bleating and braying their full bags so sore with being unemptied but their shepherd more with being unsighted which was cause his mind went not a milking he to reek inclined the backs felt as they passed of those male dams gross fool believing we would ride his rams nor ever knew that any of them bore upon his belly any man before the last ram came to pass him with his wool and me together loaded to the full for there i did hang and that ram he stayed and me withal had in his hands my head troubled the while not causelessly nor least this ram he groped and talked to lazy beast why last art thou now thou hast never used to lag thus hindmost but still first has bruised the tender blossom of a flower and held state in thy steps both to the flood and field first still at fold at even now last remain dost thou not wish i had mine eye again which that abhorred man no man did put out assisted by his execrable rout when he had wrought me down with wine but he must not escape my reek so cunningly 
I would to heaven thou knewest, and could but speak to tell me where he lurks now. I would break his brain about my cave, strewed here and there, to ease my heart of those foul ills that were the inflictions of a man I prized it not. Thus let he him abroad, when I, once brought a little way from his hold, myself first loosed and next to my friends. Then drave we and disposed his straight-legged fat fleece-bears over land, even till they all were in my ship's command and to our loved friends showed our prayed-for sight escaped from death but for our loss outright they break in tears which with a look i stayed and bade them take our boot in they obeyed and up we all went sat and used our oars but having left as far as the savage shores as one might hear a voice we then might see the cyclop at the haven when instantly i stayed our oars and this insultance used cyclop thou should not have so much abused thy monstrous forces to oppose their least against a man in martial and a guest and eat his fellows thou mightst know there were some ills behind rude swain for thee to bear that feared not to devour thy guests and break all laws of humans jove sends therefore reek and all the gods by me this blew the more his burning fury when the top he tore from off a huge rock and so right a throw made at our ship that just before the prow it overflew and fell missed mast and all exceeding little but about the fall so fierce a wave it raised that back it bore our ship so far it almost touched the shore a bead hook then a far extended one i snatched up thrust hard and so set us gone some little way and straight commanded all to help me with their oars on pain to fall again on our confusion but a sign i with my head made and their oars were mine in all performance when we off were set then first twice further my heart was so great it would again provoke him but my men on all sides rushed about me to contain and said unhappy why will you provoke a man so rude that with so dread a stroke given with his rock dart made the sea thrust back our ship so far and near hand forced our rack should he again but hear your voice resound and any word reach thereby would be found his dart's direction which would in his fall crush piecemeal us quite split our ship and all so much dart wields the monster thus urged they impossible things in fear but i gave way to that wrath which so long i held depressed by great necessity conquered in my breast cyclop if any ask thee who imposed thy unsightly blemish that thine eye enclosed say that ulysses old laertes son whose seat is ithaca and who hath won surname of city raiser boarded out at this he brayed so loud that round about he drave affrighted echoes through the air and said o beast i was premonished fair by aged prophecy in one that was a great and good man this should come to pass and how tis proved now augur telemus surnamed eurymedes that spent with us his age in augury and did exceed in all presage of truth said all this deed should this event take authored by the hand of one ulysses whom i thought was manned with great and goodly personage and bore a virtue unanswerable and this shore should shake with weight of such a conqueror when now a weakling came a dwarfy thing a thing of nothing who yet wit did bring that brought supply to all and with his wine put out the flame where all my light did shine come land again ulysses that my hand may guest rights give thee and the great command that neptune hath at sea i may convert to the deduction where abides thy heart with my solicitings whose son i am and whose fame boasts to bear my father's name nor think my hurt offends me for my sire can soon repose in it the visual fire at his free pleasure which no power beside can boast of men or of the deified i answered would to god i could compel both life and soul from thee and send to hell those spoils of nature hardly neptune then could cure thy hurt and give thee all again 
then flew fierce vows to neptune both his hands to star-born heaven cast o thou that all lands girdst in thy ambient circle and in air shakes the curled tresses of thy sapphire hair if i be thine or thou mayest justly vaunt thou art my father hear me now and grant that this ulysses old laertes son that dwells in ithaca and name hath one of city ruiner may never reach his natural region or if to fetch that and the sight of his fair roofs and friends be fatal to him let him that amends for all his miseries long time and ill smart for and fail of nor that fate fulfil till all his soldiers quite are cast away in others ships and when at last the day of his sole landing shall his dwelling show let detriment prepare him wrongs and ow thus prayed he neptune who his sire appeared and all his prayer to every syllable heard but then a rock in size more amplified than first he ravished to him and implied a dismal strength in it when wheeled about he sent it after us nor flew it out from any blind aim for a little pass beyond our foredeck from the fall there was which the sea our ship gave back upon and shrunk up into billows from the stone our ship again repelling near as near the shore as first but then our rowers were being warned more armed and stronglier stemmed the flood that bore back on us till our ship made good the other island where our whole fleet lay in which our friends lay mourning for our stay and every minute looked when we should land where now arrived we drew up to the sand the cyclops sheep dividing that none there of all our privates might be wrung and bear too much on power the ram yet was alone by all my friends made all my portion above all others and i made him then a sacrifice for me and all my men to cloud compelling jove that all commands to whom i burn the thighs but my sad hands received no grace from him who studied how to offer men and fleet to overthrow all day till sunset yet we sat and eat and liberal store took in of wine and meat the sun then down and place resigned to shade we slept morn came my men i raised and made all go aboard way anchor and away they boarded sat and beat the aged sea and forth we made sail sad for loss before any yet had comfort since we lost no more end of the ninth book The Tenth Book of the Odysseys of Homer. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf. The Tenth Book of the Odysseys of Homer. Translated by George Chapman. The Argument. Ulysses now relates to us the grace he had with Aeolus, great guardian of the hollow winds which in a leather bag he binds and gives ulysses all but one which zephyr was who filled alone ulysses sails the bag once seen while he slept by ulysses men they thinking it did golden clothes to find it all the winds did loose who back flew to their guardian again forth sailed he and did next attain to where the least dragonians dwell where he eleven ships lost and fell on the Aeaean coast whose shore he sends eurylochus to explore dividing with him half his men who go and turn no more again all save eurylochus to swine by circe turned their stays incline ulysses to their search who got of mercury an antidote which molly was gainst circe's charms and so avoids his soldiers harms a year with circe all remain and then their native forms regain on utter shores a time they dwell while ithacus descends to hell another argument kappa great aeolus and circe friends finds ithacus and hell descends to the aeolian island we attained that swum about still on the sea where reigned the god-loved aeolus hippotates 
a wall of steel it had and in the seas a wave-beat smooth rock moved about the wall twelve children in his house imperial were born to him of which six daughters were and six were sons that youth's sweet flower did bear his daughters to his sons he gave as wives who spent in feastful comforts all their lives close seated by their sire and his grave spouse past number were the dishes that the house made ever savour and still full the hall as long as day shined in the night-time all slept with their chaste wives each his fair carved bed most richly furnished and this life they led we reached the city and fair roofs of these where a whole month's time all things that might please the king vouchsafed us of great troy inquired the grecian fleet and how the greeks retired to all which i gave answer as behooved the fit time come when i dismission moved he nothing would deny me but addressed my pass with such a bounty as might best teach me contentment for he did enfold within an oxhide flayed at nine years old all the airy blasts that were of stormy kinds saturnius made him steward of his winds and gave him power to raise and to assuage and these he gave me curb thus of their rage which in a glittering silver band i bound and hung up in my ship and closed so round that no aggression of any breath could find only he left abroad the west wind to speed our ships and us with blasts secure but our securities made all unsure nor could he consummate our course alone when all the rest had got aggression which thus succeeded nine whole days and nights we sailed in safety and the tenth the lights borne on our country earth we might descry so near we drew and yet even then i fell being o'erwatched into a fatal sleep for i would suffer no man else to keep the foot that ruled my vessel's course to lead the faster home my friends then envy fed upon the bag i hung up and supposed that gold and silver i had there enclosed as gift from aeolus and said o heaven what grace and grave price is by all men given to our commander whatsoever coast or town he comes to how much he engrossed of fair and precious prey and brought from troy we the same voyage went and yet enjoy in our return these empty hands for all this bag now aeolus was so liberal to make a guest gift to him let us try of what consists the fair bound treasury and how much gold and silver it contains ill counsel present approbation gains they ope the bag and out the vapours break when instant tempest did our vessel take that bore us back to sea to mourn anew our absent country up amazed i flew and desperate things discoursed if i should cast myself to ruin in the seas or taste amongst the living more moan and sustain silent i did so and lay hid again beneath the hatches while an ill wind took my ships back to aeolia my men struck with woe enough we pumped and landed then took food for all this and of all my men i took a herald to me and away went to the court of aeolus where they were feasting still he wife and children set together close we would not at their meat thrust in but humbly on the threshold sat he then amazed my presence wondered at and called to me ulysses how thus back art thou arrived here what foul spirit break into thy bosom to retire thee thus we thought we had deduction curious given thee before to reach thy shore and home did it not like thee i even overcome with worthy sorrow answered my ill men have done me mischief and to them hath been my sleep the unhappy motive but do you dearest of friends deign succour to my vow your powers command it thus endeavoured i with soft speech to repair my misery the rest with ruth sat dumb but thus spake he avaunt and quickly quit my land of thee thou worst of all that breathe it fits not me to convoy and take in whom heavens expose away and with thee go the worst of woes that seekst my friendship and the gods thy foes thus he dismissed me sighing forth we sailed at heart afflicted and now wholly failed the minds my men sustained so spent they were with toiling at their oars and worse did bear their growing labours 
and they caused their grout by self-willed follies nor now ever thought to see their country more six nights and days we sailed the seventh we saw fair lamos rise her lofty towers the least tragonian state that bears her port so far disterminate where shepherd shepherd calls out he at home is called out by the other that doth come from charge abroad and then goes he to sleep the other issuing he whose turn doth keep the night observance hath his double hire since day and night in equal length expire about that region and the night's watch weighed at twice the day's ward since the charge that's laid upon the night's man besides breach of sleep exceeds the day's man for one oxen keep the other sheep but when the haven we found exceeding famous and environed round with one continuate rock which so much bent that both ends almost met so prominent they were and made the haven's mouth passing straight our whole fleet in we got in whose receipt our ships lay anchored close nor needed we fear harm on any stays tranquillity so purely sat there that waves great nor small did ever rise to any height at all and yet would i no entry make but stayed alone without the haven and thence surveyed from a lofty watch-tower raised there the country round about nor anywhere the work of man or beast appeared to me only a smoke from earth break i might see i then made choice of two and added more a herald for associate to explore what sort of men lived there they went and saw a beaten way through which carts used to draw wood from the high hills to the town and met a maid without the port about to get some near spring water she the daughter was of mighty lestrigonian antiphus and to the clear spring called artasia went to which the whole town for their water sent to her they came and asked who governed there and what the people whom he ordered were she answered not but led them through the port as making haste to show her father's court where entered they beheld to their affright a woman like a mountain-top in height who rushed abroad and from the council place called home her horrid husband antiphus who deadly minded straight he snatched up one and fell to supper both the rest were gone and to the fleet came antiphus a cry drave through the city which heard instantly this way and that innumerable sorts not men but giants issued through the ports and mighty flints from rocks tore which they threw amongst our ships through which an ill noise flew of shivered ships and life expiring men that were like fishes by the monsters slain and borne to sad feast while they slaughtered these that were engaged in all the advantages the closed mouth and most dead calm haven could give i that without lay made some means to live my sword drew cut my gables and to oars set all my men and from the plagues those shores let fly amongst us we made haste to fly my men close working as men loath to die my ship flew freely off but theirs that lay on heaps in harbours could enforce no way through these stern fates that had engaged them there forth our sad remnant sailed yet still retained the joys of men that our poor few remained then to the isle of Eia we attained where fair-haired dreadful eloquent circe reigned eita's sister both by dame and sire both daughters to heaven's man in lightning fire and persa whom oceanus begat the ship fit port here we soon landed at some god directing us two days two nights we lay here pining in the fatal spites of toil and sorrow but the next third day when fair aurora had informed quick way i made out of my ship my sword and lance took for my surer guide and made advanced up to a prospect i essay to see the works of men or hear mortality expire a voice when i had climbed a height rough and right hardly accessible i might behold from circe's house that in a grove set thick with trees stood a bright vapour move i then grew curious in my thought to try some fit inquiry when so sprightly fly i saw the yellow smoke but my discourse a first retiring to my ship gave force to give my men their dinner and to send before the adventure of myself some friend being near my ship of one so desolate some god had pity and would recreate my woes a little putting up to me a great and high-palmed heart 
that fatally just in my way itself to taste the flood was then descending the sun heat had sure importuned him besides the temperature his natural heat gave howsoever i made up to him and let my javelin fly that struck him through the mid part of his chine and made him bring to the dust confine his flying forces forth his spirit flew when i stepped in and from the death's wound drew my shrewdly bitten lance there let him lie till i of cut-up osiers did imply a width a fathom long with which his feet i made together in a sure league meet stooped under him and to my neck i heaved the mighty burden of which i received a good part on my lance for else i could by no means with one hand alone uphold joined with one shoulder such a deathful load and so to both my shoulders both hands stood needful assistance for it was a deer goodly well grown when coming something near where rode my ships i cast it down and reared my friends with kind words whom by name i cheered in note particular and said see friends we will not yet to pluto's house our ends shall not be hastened though we be declined in cause of comfort till the day designed by fate's fixed finger come as long as food or wine lasts in our ship let's spirit our blood and quit our care and hunger both in one this said they frolicked came and looked upon with admiration the huge-bodied beast and when their first served eyes had done their feast they washed and made a to be strived for meal in point of honour on which all did dwell the whole day long and to our venison store we added wine till we could wish no more sunset and darkness up we slept till light put darkness down and then did i excite my friends to counsel uttering this now friends afford unpassionate ear though ill fate lends so good a cause to your passion no man knows the reason whence and how the darkness grows the reason how the morn is thus begun the reason how the man and lightning sun dives under earth the reason how again he rears his golden head those counsels then that pass our comprehension we must leave to him that knows their causes and receive direction from him in our acts as far as he shall please to make them regular and stoop them to our reason in our state what then behoves us can we estimate with all our counsels where we are or know without instruction past our own skills how put off from hence to steer our course the more i think we cannot we must then explore these parts for information in which way we thus far are last morn i might display from off a high raised cliff an island lie girt with the unmeasured sea and is so nigh that in the midst i saw the smoke arise through tufts of trees this rests then to advise who shall explore this this struck dead their hearts remembering the most execrable parts that lystragonian antiphus had played and that foul cyclops that their fellows brayed betwixt his jaws which moved them so they cried but idle tears had never once supplied i in two parts divided all and gave to either part his captain i must have the charge of one and one of godlike look eurylochus the other lots we shook put in a cask together which of us should lead the attempt and twas eurylochus he freely went and with two and twenty more all which took leave with tears and our eyes wore the same wet badge of weak humanity these in a dale did circe's house descry a bright stone built in a conspicuous way before her gates hill wolves and lions lay which with her virtuous drugs so tame she made that wolf nor lion would one man invade with any violence but all arose their long tails wagged and in fawns would close as loving dogs when masters bring them home relics of feast in an observance come and soothe their entries with their fawns and bounds all guests still bringing some scraps for their hounds so on these men the wolves and lions ramped their horrid paws set up their spirits were damp to see such monstrous kindness stayed at gate and heard within the goddess elevate a voice divine as at her web she wrought subtle and glorious and past earthly thought as all the housewiferies of deities are to hear a voice so ravishingly rare polities one exceeding dear to me a prince of men and of no mean degree in knowing virtue in all acts whose mind discreet cares always used to turn and wind 
was yet surprised with it and said o oh, friends some one abides within here that commends the place to us and breathes a voice divine as she some web wrought or her spindles twine she cherished with her song the pavement rings with the imitation of the tune she sings some woman or goddess tis assay to see with knocking thus said he and they both knocked and called and straight her shining gates she opened issuing bade them into cates led and unwise they followed all but one which was eurylochus who stood alone without the gates suspicious of a slight they entered she made sit and her deceit she cloaked with thrones and goodly chairs of state said herbie honey and the delicate wine brought from smyrna to them meal and cheese but harmful venoms she commixed with these that made their country vanish from their thought which eat she touched them with a rod that wrought their transformation far past human wants swine snouts swine bodies took they bristles grunts but still retained the souls they had before which made them mourn their bodies change the more she shut them straight in styes and gave them meat oak mast and beech and cornel fruit they eat grovelling like swine on earth in foulest sort eurylochus straight hasted the report of this his fellow's most remorseful fate came to the ships but so excruciate was with his woe he could not speak a word his eyes stood full of tears which showed how stored his mind with moan remained we all admired asked what had chanced him earnestly desired he would resolve us at the last our eyes inflamed in him his fellow's memories and out his grief burst thus you willed we went through those thick woods you saw when a descent showed us a fair house in a lightsome ground where at some work we heard a heavenly sound breathed from a goddess or a woman's breast they knocked she oped her bright gates each her guest her fair invitement made nor would they stay fools that they were when once she led the way i entered not suspecting some deceit when altogether vanished nor the sight of any one though long i looked mine eye could any way discover instantly my sword and bow reached i bade show the place when down he fell did both my knees embrace and prayed with tears thus o oh, thou kept of god do not thyself lose nor to that abode lead others rashly both thyself and all thou venturest thither i know well must fall in one sure ruin with these few then fly we may yet shun the other's destiny i answered him eurylochus stay thou and keep the ship then eat and drink i now will undertake the adventure there is cause in great necessity's unaltered laws this said i left both ship and seas and on along the sacred valleys all alone went in discovery till at last i came whereof the main medicine-making dame i saw the great house where encountered me the gold-rod sustaining mercury even entering circe's doors he met me in a young man's likeness of the first flowered chin whose form hath all the grace of one so young he first called to me and then my hand he wrung and said thou no place finding for repose whither alone by these hill confines goes thy erring foot the art entering circe's house where by her medicines black and sorceress thy soldiers are all shut in well-armed styes and turned to swine art thou arrived with prize fit for their ransoms thou comest out no more if once thou enterest like thy men before made to remain here but i'll guard thee free and save thee in her spite receive of me this fair and good receipt with which once armed enter her roofs for the art to all proof charmed against the ill day i will tell thee all her baneful counsel with a festival she'll first receive thee but will spice thy bread with flowery poisons yet unaltered shall thy firm form be for this remedy stands most approved against all her sorcery which thus particularly shun when she shall with her long rod strike thee instantly draw from thy thigh thy sword and fly on her as to her slaughter she surprised with fear and love at first will bid thee to her bed nor say the goddess nay that welcomed thou mayest with all respect be and procure thy fellows freedoms but before make sure her favours to thee and the great oath take with which the blessed gods assurance make of all they promise 
that no prejudice by stripping thee of form and faculties she may so much as once attempt on thee this said he gave his antidote to me which from the earth he plucked and told me all the virtue of it with what deities call the name it bears and molly they impose for name to it the root is hard to loose from hold of earth by mortals but god's power can all things do tis black but bears a flower as white as milk and thus flew mercury up to immense olympus gliding by the sylvan island i made back my way to circe's house my mind of my assay much thought revolving at her gates i stayed and called she heard and her bright doors displayed invited led i followed in but traced with some distraction in a throne she placed my welcome person of a curious frame twas and so bright i sat as in a flame a footstool added in a golden bowl she then suborned a potion in her soul deformed things thinking for amidst the wine she mixed her man transforming medicine which when she saw i had devoured she then no more observed me with her soothing vein but struck me with her rod and to her sty bade out and away and with thy fellows lie i drew my sword and charged her as i meant to take her life when out she cried and bent beneath my sword her knees embracing mine and full of tears said who of what high line art thou the issue whence what shore sustain thy native city i amazed remain that drinking these my venoms thou art not turned never drunk any this cup but be mourned in other likeness if once it had passed the ivory bounders of his tongue and taste all but thyself are brutishly declined thy breast holds firm yet and unchanged thy mind thou canst be therefore none else but the man of many virtues ithacensian deep-souled ulysses who i oft was told by that sly god that bears the rod of gold was to arrive here in retreat from troy she then thy sword and let my bed enjoy so much a man that when the bed we prove we may believe in one another's love i then o circe why entreatest thou me to mix in any human league with thee when thou my friends hast beast turned and thy bed tenders to me that i might likewise lead a beast life with thee softened naked stripped that in my blood thy banes may more be steeped i never will ascend thy bed before i may affirm that in heaven's sight you swore the great oath of the gods that all attempt to do me ill is from your thoughts exempt i said she swore when all the oath rites said i then ascended her adorned bed but thus prepared four handmaids served her there that daughters to her silver fountains were to her bright sea observing sacred floods and to her uncut consecrated woods one decked the throne tops with rich cloths of state and did with silks the foot pace consecrate another silver tablets set before the pompous throne and golden dishes store served in with several feasts a third filled wine the fourth brought water and made fuel shine in ruddy fires beneath a womb of brass which heat i bathed and odorous water was dispurpled lightly on my head and neck that might my late heart hurting sorrows check with the refreshing sweetness and for that men sometimes may be something delicate bathed and adorned she led me to a throne of massy silver and of fashion exceeding curious a fair footstool set water opposed and every sort of meat set on the elaborate polished board she wished my taste employed but not a word would my ears taste of taste my mind had food that must digest i meat would do me good circe observing that i put no hand to any banquet having countermand from weightier cares the light cates would excuse bowing her near me these winged words did use why sits ulysses like one dumb his mind lessening with languors nor to food inclined nor wine whence comes it out of any fear of more illusion you must needs forbear that wrongful doubt since you have heard me swear o circe i replied what man is he odd with the rights of true humanity that dares taste food or wine before he sees his friends redeemed from their deformities if you be gentle and indeed inclined to let me taste the comforts of your wine dissolve the charms that their forced forms enchain and show me here my honoured friends like men this said she left her throne and took her rod 
went to her sty and let my men abroad like swine of nine years old they opposite stood observed their brutish form and looked for food when with another medicine every one all over smeared their bristles all were gone produced by malice of the other bane and every one afresh looked up a man both younger than they were of stature more and all their forms much goodlier than before all knew me clinging about me and a cry of pleasing mourning flew about so high the horrid roof resounded and the queen herself was moved to see our kind so keen who bade me now bring ship and men ashore our arms and goods in caves hid and restore myself to her with all my other men i granted went and ope the weeping vein in all my men whose violent joy to see my safe return was passing kindly free of friendly tears and miserably wept you have not seen young heifers highly kept filled full of daisies at the field and driven home to their hovels all so sprightly given that no room can contain them but about base by the dams and let their spirits out in ceaseless bleeding of more jocund plight than my kind friends even crying out with sight on my return so doubted circled me with all their welcomes and as cheerfully disposed their rapt minds as if they saw their natural country cliffy ithaca and even the roofs where they were bred and born and vowed as much with tears o oh, you return as much delights us as in you had come our country to us and our natural home but what unhappy fate hath reft our friends i gave unlooked-for answer that amends made for their mourning bade them first of all our ship ashore draw then in cavern stall our foody cattle hide our mutual prize and then said i attend me that your eyes in circe's sacred house may see each friend eating and drinking banquets out of end they soon obeyed all but eurylochus who needs would stay them all and counselled thus o oh, wretches whither will ye why are you fond of your mischiefs and such gladness show for circe's house that will transform ye all to swine or wolves or lions never shall our heads get out if once within we be but stay compelled by strong necessity so wrought the cyclop when tis caves our friends this bold one led on and brought all their ends by his one indiscretion i for this thought with my sword that desperate head of his hewn from his neck to gash upon the ground his mangled body though my blood was bound in near alliance to him but the rest with humble suit contained me and request that i would leave him with my ship alone and to the sacred palace lead them on i led them nor eurylochus would stay from their attendance on me our late fray struck to his heart so but meantime my men in circe's house were all in several bane studiously sweetened smugged with oil and decked with in and out weeds and a feast secret served in before them at which close we found they all were set cheered and carousing round when mutual sight had and all thought on then feast was forgotten and the moan again about the house flew driven with wings of joy but then spake circe now no more annoy i know myself what woes by sea and shore and men unjust have plagued enough before your injured virtues here then feast as long and be as cheerful till ye grow as strong as when ye first forsook your country earth ye now fare all like exiles not a mirth flashed in amongst ye but is quenched again with still renewed tears though the beaten vein of your distresses should methink be now benumb with sufferance we did well allow her kind persuasions and the whole year stayed in varied feast with her when now arrayed the world was with the spring and orby hours had gone the round again through herbs and flowers the months absolved in order till the days had run their full race in apollo's rays my friends remembered me of home and said if ever fate would sign my pass delayed it should be now no more i heard them well yet that day spent in feast till darkness fell and sleep his virtues through our vapour shed when i ascended sacred circe's bed implored my pass and her performed vow which now my soul urged and my soldiers now afflicted me with tears to get them gone all these i told her and she answered these much skilled ulysses laertiades remain no more against your wills with me but take your free way 
only this must be performed before you steer your course for home you must the way to pluto overcome and stern persephone to form your past by the aged theban soul tiresias the dark-browed prophet whose soul yet can see clearly and firmly grave persephone even dead gave him a mind that he alone might sing truth solid wisdom and not one prove more than shade in his comparison this broke my heart i sunk into my bed mourned and would never more be comforted with light nor life but having now expressed my pains enough to her in my unrest that so i might prepare her ruth and get all i held fit for an affair so great i said o circe who shall steer my course to pluto's kingdom never ship had force to make that voyage the divine in voice said seek no guide raise you your mast and hoise your ship's white sails and then sit yon at peace the fresh north spirit shall waft ye through the seas but having passed the ocean you shall see a little shore that to persephone puts up a consecrated wood where grows tall firs and sallows that their fruit soon lose cast anchor in the gulfs and go alone to pluto's dark house where to acheron cocytus runs and periphlegethon cocytus born of styx and where a rock of both the met floods bears the roaring shock the dark hero great tiresias now coming near to gain propitious pass dig of a cubit every way a pit and pour to all that are deceased in it a solemn sacrifice for which first take honey and wine and their commixion make then sweet wine neat and thirdly water pour and lastly add to these the whitest flower then vow to all the weak necks of the dead offerings a number and when thou shalt tread the ithacensian shore to sacrifice a heifer never tamed and most of prize a pile of all thy most esteemed goods and flaming to the dear streams of their bloods and in secret rites to tiresias vow a ram coal-black at all parts that doth flow with fat and fleece and all thy flocks doth lead when the all-calling nation of the dead thou thus hast prayed to offer on the place a ram and you all black being turned in face to dreadful erebus thyself aside the flood shore walking and then gratified with flocks of souls of men and dames deceased shall all thy pious rites be straight address see then the offering thy fellows slew flayed and imposed in fire and all thy crew pray to the state of either deity grave pluto and severe persephone then draw thy sword stand firm nor suffer one of all the faint shades of the dead and gone to approach the blood till thou hast heard their king the wise tiresias who thy offering will instantly do honour thy home ways and all the measure of them by the seas amply unfolding this the goddess told and then the morning in her throne of gold surveyed the vast world by whose orient light the nymph adorned me with attires as bright her own hands putting on both shirt and weed robes fine and curious and upon my head an ornament that glittered like a flame girt me in gold and forth betimes i came amongst my soldiers roused them all from sleep and bade them now no more observance keep of ease and feast but straight a shipboard fall for now the goddess had informed me all their noble spirits agreed nor yet so clear could i bring all off but alpinor there his heedless life left he was youngest man of all my company and one that won least fame for arms as little for his brain who too much steeped in wine and so made fain to get refreshing by the cool of sleep apart his fellows plunged in vapours deep and they as high in tumult of their way suddenly waked and quite out of the stay a sober mind had given him would descend a huge long ladder forward and an end fell from the very roof full pitching on the dearest joint his head was placed upon which quite dissolved let loose his soul to hell i to the rest and circe's means did tell of our return as crossing clean the hope i gave them first and said you think the scope of our endeavours now is straight for home no circe otherwise designed whose doom enjoined us first to greet the dreadful house of austere pluto and his glorious spouse to take the counsel of tiresias the reverend theban to direct our pass this break their hearts and grief made tear their hair but grief was never good at great affair it would have way yet 
we went woeful on to ship and shore where was arrived as soon circe unseen a black ewe and a ram binding for sacrifice and as she came vanished again unwitnessed by our eyes which grieved us not nor checked our sacrifice for who would see god loath to let us see this way or that bent still his ways are free end of the tenth book The Eleventh Book of the Odysseys of Homer. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf. The Eleventh Book of the Odysseys of Homer. Translated by George Chapman. The Argument. Ulysses' way to hell appears, where he the grave Tiresias hears inquires his own and others' fates. His mother sees, and the after-states in which were held by sad decease, heroes and heroesses, a number that at Troy waged war, as Ajax, that was still at jar with Ithacus, for the arms he lost, and with the great Achilles' ghost. Another argument. Lambda. Ulysses here invokes the dead, the lives appear hereafter led arrived now at our ship we launched and set our mast up put forth sail and in did get our late got cattle up our sails we went my wayward fellows mourning now the event a good companion yet a foreright wind circe the excellent utterer of her mind supplied our murmuring consorts with that was both speed and guide to our adventurous pass all day our sails stood to the winds and made our voyage prosperous sun then set and shade always obscuring on the bounds we fell of deep oceanus where people dwell whom a perpetual cloud obscures outright to whom the cheerful sun lends never light nor when he mounts the star sustaining heaven nor when he stoops the earth and sets up the even but night holds fixed wings feathered all with banes above those most unblessed cimmerians here drew we up our ship our sheep withdrew and walked the shore till we attained the view of that sad region circe had foreshowed and then the sacred offerings to be vowed eurylochus and persimides bore when i my sword drew and earth's womb did gore till a pit digged of a cubit round with which the liquid sacrifice we crowned first honey mixed with wine then sweet wine neat then water poured in last the flour of wheat much i importuned then the weak-necked dead and vowed when i the barren soil should tread of cliffy ithaca amidst my hall to kill a heifer my clear best of all and give an offering on a pile composed of all the choice goods my whole house enclosed and to tiresias himself alone a sheep coal-black and the selectest one of all my flocks when to the powers beneath the sacred nation that survived with death my prayers and vows had done devotions fit i took the offerings and upon the pit bereft their lives out gushed the sable blood and round about me fled out of the flood the souls of the deceased there clustered then youths and their wives much suffering aged men soft tender virgins that but new came there by timeless death and green their sorrows were there men-at-arms with armors all embrued wounded with lances and with falchions hewed in numbers up and down the ditch did stalk and threw unmeasured cries about their walk so horrid that a bloodless fear surprised my daunted spirits straight then i advised my friends to flay the slaughtered sacrifice put them in fire and to the deities stern pluto and persephone apply exciteful prayers then drew I from my thigh my well-edged sword, stepped in, and firmly stood betwixt the priests of shadows and the blood, and would not suffer any one to dip within our offering his unsolid lip before Tiresias that did all control. The first that pressed in was Alpinor's soul, his body in the broad weighed earth as yet unmourned, unburied by us, since we sweat with other urgent labors. Yet his smart I wept to see, and rued it from my heart inquiring how he could before me be that came by ship he mourning answered me 
in circe's house the spite some spirit did bear and the unspeakable good liquor there hath been my bane for being to descend a ladder much in height i did not tend my way well down but forwards made a proof to tread the rounds and from the very roof fell on my neck and break it and this made my soul thus visit this infernal shade and here by them that next thyself are dear thy wife and father that a little one gave food to thee and by thy only son at home behind thee left telemachus do not depart by stealth and leave me thus unmourned unburied lest neglected i bring on thyself the insensate deity i know that sailed from hence thy ship must touch on the isle Eia, where vouchsafe thus much good king that landed thou wilt instantly bestow on me thy royal memory to this grace that my body arms and all may rest consumed in fiery funeral and on the foamy shore a sepulchre erect to me that after times may hear of one so hapless let me these implore and fix upon my sepulchre the oar with which alive i shook the aged seas and had of friends the dear societies i told the wretched soul i would fulfil and execute to the utmost point his will and all the time we sadly talked i still my sword above the blood held when aside the idol of my friend still amplified his plaint as up and down the shades he aired then my deceased mother's soul appeared fair daughter of autolycus the great grave anticlea whom when forth i set for sacred ilion i had left alive her sight much moved me and to tears did drive my note of her decease and yet not she though in my ruth she held the highest degree would i admit to touch the sacred blood till from tiresias i had understood what circe told me at the length did land theban tiresias's soul and in his hand sustained a golden sceptre knew me well and said o man unhappy why to hell admits thou dark arrival and the light the sun gives leavest to have the horrid sight of this black region and the shadows here now sheathe thy sharp sword and the pit forbear that i the blood may taste and then relate the truth of those acts that affect thy fate i sheathed my sword and left the pit till he the black blood tasting thus instructed me renowned ulysses all unasked i know that all the cause of thy arrival now is to inquire thy wished retreat for home which hardly god will let thee overcome since neptune still will his opposure try with all his laid-up anger for the eye his loved son lost to thee yet through all thy suffering course which must be capital if both thine own affections and thy friends thou wilt contain when thy access ascends the three-forked island having scaped the seas where ye shall find fed on the flowery lees fat flocks and oxen which the sun doth own to whom are all things as well heard as shown and never dare one head of those to slay but hold unharmful on your wished way though through enough affliction yet secure your fate shall land ye but presage says sure if once ye spoil them spoil to all thy friends spoil to thy fleet and if the justice ends short of thyself it shall be long before and that length forced out with infliction's store when losing all thy fellows in a sail of foreign built when most thy fates prevail in thy deliverance thus the event shall sort thou shalt find shipwreck raging in thy port proud men thy goods consuming and thy wife urging with gifts give charge upon thy life but all these wrongs revenge shall end to thee and force or cunning set with slaughter free the house of all thy spoilers yet again thou shalt a voyage make and come to men that know no sea nor ships nor oars that are wings to a ship nor mix with any fair salt savoury vapour where thou first shalt land this clear given sign shall let thee understand that there those men remain assume ashore up to thy royal shoulder a ship oar with which when thou shalt meet one on the way that will in country admiration say what dost thou with that wan upon thy neck there fix that wan thy oar and that shore deck with sacred rites to neptune slaughter there a ram a bull and 
who for strength doth bear the name of husband to a herd a boar and coming home upon thy natural shore give pious hecatombs to all the gods degrees observed and then the periods of all thy labours in the peace shall end of easy death which shall the less extend his passion to thee that thy foe the sea shall not enforce it but death's victory shall chance in only earnest prey vowed age obtained at home quite empty of his rage thy subjects round about thee rich and blest and here hath truth summed up thy vital rest i answered him we will suppose all these decreed in deity let it likewise please tiresias to resolve me why so near the blood and me my mother's soul doth bear and yet nor word nor look vouchsafe her son does she not know me no said he nor none of all these spirits but myself alone knows anything till he shall taste the blood but whomsoever you shall do that good he will the truth of all you wish unfold who you envy it to will all withhold thus said the kingly soul and made retreat admits the inner parts of pluto's seat when he had spoke thus by divine instinct still i stood firm till to the blood's precinct my mother came and drunk and then she knew i was her son had passion to renew her natural plaints which thus she did pursue how is it o oh my son that you alive this deadly darksome region underdive twixt which and earth so many mighty seas and horrid currents interpose their priests oceanus in chief which none unless more helped than you on foot now can transgress a well-built ship he needs that ventures there comest thou from troy but now and forced to air all this time with thy soldiers nor hast seen ere this long day the country and thy queen i answered that a necessary end to this infernal state made me contend that from the wise tiresias's theban soul i might an oracle involved unroll for i came nothing near achaia yet nor on our loved earth happy foot had set but mishap suffering erred from coast to coast ever since first the mighty grecian host divine atrides led to ilion and i his follower to set war upon the rightful trojans and so prayed she would the fate of that ungentle death unfold that forced her thither if some long disease or that the spleen of her that arrows please diana envious of the most eminent dames had made her the object of her deadly aims my father's state and sons i sought if they kept still my goods or they became the prey of any other holding me no more in power of safe return or if my store my wife had kept together with her son if she her first mind held or had been won by some chief grecian from my love and bed all this she answered that affliction fed on her blood still at home and that to grief she all the days in darkness of her life in tears had consecrate that none possessed my famous kingdom's throne but the interest my son had in it still he held in peace a court kept like a prince and his increase spent in his subjects good administering laws with justice and the general applause a king should merit and all called him king my father kept the upland laboring and shunned the city used no sumptuous beds wondered at furnitures nor wealthy weeds but in the winter strewed about the fire laid with his slaves in ashes his attire like to a beggar's when the summer came and autumn all fruits ripened with his flame where grape-charged vines made shadows most abound his couch with fallen leaves made upon the ground and here lay he his sorrow's fruitful state increasing as he faded for my fate and now the part of age that irksome is lay sadly on him and that life of his she led and perished in not slaughtered by the dame that darts loved and her archery nor by disease invaded vast and foul that wastes the body and sends out the soul with shame and horror only in her moan for me and my life she consumed her own she thus when i had great desire to prove my arms the circle where her soul did move thrice proved i thrice she vanished like a sleep or fleeting shadow which struck much more deep the wounds my woes made and made ask her why she would my love to her embraces fly 
and not vouchsafe that even in hell we might pay pious nature her unaltered right and give vexation here her cruel fill should not the queen here to augment the ill of every sufferance which her office is enforce thy idol to afford me this o son she answered of the race of men the most unhappy our most equal queen will mock no solid arms with empty shade nor suffer empty shades again to invade flesh bones and nerves nor will defraud the fire of his last dues that soon as spirits expire and leave the white bone are his native right when like a dream the soul assumes her flight the light then of the living with most haste o son contend to this thy little taste of this state is enough and all this life will make a tale fit to be told thy wife this speech we had when now repaired to me more female spirits by persephone driven on before her all the heroes wives and daughters that led their second lives about the black blood thronged of whom yet more my mind impelled me to inquire before i let them all together taste the gore for then would all have been dispersed and gone thick as they came i therefore one by one let taste the pit my sword drawn from my thigh and stand betwixt them made when severally all told their stocks the first that quenched her fire was tyro issued of a noble sire she said she sprung from pure salmonius's bed and cretheus son of aeolus did wed yet the divine flood epnopeus loved who much the most fair stream of all floods moved near whose streams tyro walking neptune came like epnopeus and enjoyed the dame like to a hill the blue and snaky flood above the immortal and the mortal stood and hid them both as both together lay just where his current falls into the sea her virgin waist dissolved she slumbered then but when the god had done the work of men her fair hand gently wringing thus he said woman rejoice in our combined bed for when the year hath run his circle round because the god's loves must in fruit abound my love shall make to cheer thy teeming moans thy one dear burden bear two famous sons love well and bring them up go home and see that though of more joy yet i shall be free thou dost not tell to glorify thy birth thy love is neptune shaker of the earth this said he plunged into the sea and she begot with child by him the light let see great peleus and neleus that became in jove's great ministry of mighty fame peleus in broad iolcus held his throne wealthy in cattle the other royal son ruled sandy pylos to these issue more this queen of women to her husband bore eson and pherus and amatheon that for his fight on horseback stooped to none next her i saw admired antiope asopus's daughter who as much as she boasted attraction of great neptune's love boasted to slumber in the arms of jove and two sons likewise at one burden bore to that her all-controlling paramour amphion and fair zethus that first laid great thebes foundations and strong walls conveyed about her turrets that seven ports enclosed for though the thebans much in strength reposed yet had not they the strength to hold their own without the added aids of wood and stone alcamina next i saw that famous wife was to amphitrio an honoured life gave to lion-hearted hercules that was of jove's embrace the great increase i saw besides proud creon's daughter there bright megara that nuptial yoke did wear with jove's great son who never field did try but bore to him the flower of victory the mother then of oedipus i saw fair epicasta that beyond all law her own son married ignorant of kind and he as darkly taken in his mind his mother wedded and his father slew whose blind act heaven exposed at length to view and he in all love thebes the supreme state with much moan managed for the heavy fate the gods laid on him she made violent flight to pluto's dark house from the loathed light beneath the steep beam strangled with a cord and left her son in life pains as abhorred as all the furies poured on her in hell then saw i chloris that did so excel in answering beauties that each part had all 
great Nilus married her, when gifts not small had won her favor, termed by name of dower. She was of all Amphion's seed the flower. Amphion, called Iosides, that then ruled strongly Mynidian Orcoman, and now his daughter ruled the Pylian throne, because her beauty's empire overshone. She brought her wife-awed husband, Nilus, Nestor much honored, Periclemenus and Chromius, sons with sovereign virtues graced, but after brought a daughter that surpassed, rare beautied Pero. So for form exact that nature to a miracle was racked in her perfections, blazed with the eyes of men that made all the country's hearts a chain and drew them suitors to her, which her sire took vantage of. And since he did aspire to nothing more than to the broad-browed herd of oxen, which the common fame so reared, owned by Iphiclus, not a man should be his peril's husband, that from philosophy those never yet driven oxen could not drive. Yet these a strong hope held him to achieve, because a prophet that had never erred had said that only he should be preferred to their possession. But the equal fate of God withstood his stealth, in extricate imprisoning bands, and sturdy churlish swains that were the herdsmen, who withheld with chains the stealth attempter, which was only he that durst abet the act with prophecy. None else would undertake it, and he must. The king would needs a prophet, should be just. But when some days and months expired were, and all the hours had brought about the year, the prophet did so satisfy the king, Iphiclus, all his cunning questioning, that he enfranchised him, and all worse done, Jove's counsel made the all-safe conclusion. Then saw Ileda, linked in nuptial chain with Tyndarus, to whom she did sustain sons much renowned for wisdom, cast her one, that passed for use of horse comparison, and Pollux, that excelled in whirlbat fight. Both these the fruitful earth bore, while the light of life inspired them. After which they found such grace with Jove that both lived underground. By change of days life still did one sustain, while the other died. The dead then lived again, the living dying. Both of one self date, their lives and deaths made by the gods and fate. If a media after Leda came, that did derive from Neptune too the name of father to two admirable sons, life yet made short their admirations, who God opposed Otus had to name, and Ephialtes, far and sound of fame. The prodigal earth so fed them that they grew to most huge stature, and had fairest hue of all men but Orion under heaven. At nine years old, nine cubits they were driven abroad in breadth, and sprung nine fathoms high. They threatened to give battle to the sky and all the immortals. They were setting on Osa upon Olympus, and upon steep Osa levy Peleus, that even they might a highway make with lofty heaven, and had perhaps performed it, had they lived till they were striplings. But Jove's son deprived their limbs of life, before the age that begins the flower of youth and should adorn their chins. Phaedra and Procris, with wise Minos's flame, bright Ariadne, to the offering came, whom Willem Theseus made his prize from Crete, that Athens' sacred soil might kiss her feet, but never could obtain her virgin flower till, in the sea-girt Dia, Dian's power detained his homeward haste, where, in her fane by Bacchus witnessed, was the fatal wane of her prime glory. Mira, Clymene I witnessed there, and loathed Eriphyle, that honoured gold more than she loved her spouse. But all the hostesses in Pluto's house, that then encountered me, exceeds my might to name or number. An ambrosian night would quite be spent, when now the formal hours present to our sleep all disposed powers, if at my ship or here. My home-made vow I leave for fit grace to the gods and you. This said, the silence his discourse had made with pleasure held still through the house's shade. When white-armed Arete this speech began, Theasians, how appears to you this man, so goodly personed, and so mashed with mind? My guest he is, but all you stand combined in the renown he doth us. Do not then with careless haste dismiss him, nor the main of his dispatch to one so needy maim. The God's free bounty gives us all just claim to goods enow. This speech the oldest man of any other Phiacensian, the grave hero Echinius, gave all approbation, saying, Friends, 
ye have the motion of the wise queen in such words as have not missed the mark with which accords my clear opinion but alcinous in word and work must be our rule he thus and then alcinous said this then must stand if while i live i rule in the command of this well skilled in navigation state and your then guest though most importunate be your effects for home a little stay if your expectance bear perhaps it may our gifts make more complete the cares of all your due deduction asks but principal i am therein the ruler he replied alcinous the most duly glorified with rule of all of all men if you lay commandment on me of a whole year's stay so all the while your preparations rise as well in gifts as time ye can devise no better wish for me for i shall come much fuller handed and more honoured home and dear to my people in whose loves the richer evermore the better proves he answered there is argued in your sight a worth that works not men for benefit like prolers or impostors of which crew the gentle black earth feeds not up a few here and there wanderers blanching tales and lies of neither praise nor use you move our eyes with form our minds with matter and our ears with elegant oration such as bears a music in the ordered history it lays before us not demodocus with sweeter strains hath used to sing to us all the greek sorrows wept out in your own but say of all your worthy friends were none objected to your eyes that consorts were to ilion with you and served destiny there this night is passing long unmeasured none of all my household would to bed yet on relate these wondrous things were i with you if you would to tell me but your woes as now till the divine aurora showed her head i should in no night relish thought of bed most eminent king said he times all must keep there's time to speak much time as much to sleep but would you hear still i will tell you still and utter more more miserable ill of friends than yet that scape the dismal wars and perished homewards and in household jars waged by a wicked woman the chaste queen no sooner made these lady ghosts unseen here and there flitting but mine eyesight won the soul of agamemnon atreus's son sad and about him all his train of friends that in aegisthus's house endured their ends with his stern fortune having drunk the blood he knew me instantly and forth a flood of springing tears gushed out he thrust his hands with will to embrace me but their old commands flowed not about him nor their weakest part i wept to see and moaned him from my heart and asked o agamemnon king of men what sort of cruel death had rendered slain thy royal person neptune in thy fleet heaven and his hellish billows making meet rousing the winds or have thy men by land done thee this ill for using thy command past their consents in diminution of those full shares their worths by lot had won of sheep or oxen or of any town in covetous strife to make their rights thine own in men or women prisoners he replied by none of these in any right i died but by aegisthus and my murderous wife bid to a banquet at his house my life hath thus been reft me to my slaughter led like an ox pretended to be fed so miserably fell i and with me my friends lay massacred as when you see at any rich man's nuptials shot or feast about his kitchen white-toothed swine lie dressed the slaughters of a world of men thine eyes both private and in priests of enemies have personally witnessed but this one would all thy parts have broken into moan to see how strewed about are cups and cates as tables set with feast so we with fates all gashed and slain lay all the floor embrued with blood and brain but that which most i rude flew from the heavy voice that priam seed cassandra breathed whom she that wit doth feed with baneful crafts false clytemnestra slew close sitting by me up my hands i threw from earth to heaven and tumbling on my sword gave wretched life up when the most abhorred by all her sex's shame forsook the room nor deigned though then so near this heavy home to shut my lips or close my broken eyes nothing so heaped is with impieties as such a woman that would kill her spouse that married her a maid when to my house i brought her 
hoping of her love in heart to children maids and slaves but she in the art of only mischief hearty not alone cast on herself this foul aspersion but loving dames hereafter to their lords will bear for good deeds her bad thoughts and words alas said i that jove should hate the lives of atreus's seed so highly for their wives for menelaus's wife a number fell for dangerous absence thine sent thee to hell for this he answered be not thou more kind than wise to thy wife never all thy mind let words express to her of all she knows curbs for the worst still in thyself repose but thou by thy wife's wiles shall lose no blood exceeding wise she is and wise in good icarus's daughter chaste penelope we left a young bride when for battle we forsook the nuptial peace and at her breast her first child sucking who by this hour blessed sits in the number of surviving men and his bliss she hath that she can contain and her bliss thou hast that she is so wise for by her wisdom thy returned eyes shall see thy son and he shall greet his sire with fitting welcomes when in my retire my wife denies mine eyes my son's dear sight and as from me will take from him the light before she adds one just delight to life or her false wit one truth that fits a wife for her sake therefore let my harms advise that though thy wife be ne'er so chaste and wise yet come not home to her in open view with any ship or any personal show but take close sure disguised nor let her know for tis no world to trust a woman now but what says fame doth my son yet survive in orchomen or pylos or doth live in sparta with his uncle yet i see divine orestes is not here with me i answered asking why does atreus's son inquire of me who yet arrived where none could give to these news any certain wings and tis absurd to tell uncertain things such sad speech passed us and as thus we stood with kind tears rendering unkind fortunes good achilles and patroclus's soul appeared and his soul of whom never ill was heard the good antilochus and the soul of him that all the greeks passed both for force and limb excepting the unmatched eosides illustrious ajax but the first of these that saw acknowledged and saluted me was thetis's conquering son who heavily his state here taking said unworthy breath what act yet mightier imagineth thy venturous spirit how dost thou descend these under regions where the dead man's end is to be looked on and his foolish shade i answered him i was induced to invade these underparts most excellent of greece to visit wise tiresias for advice of virtue to direct my voyage home to rugged ithaca since i could come to note in no place where achaia stood and so lived ever tortured with the blood in man's vain veins thou therefore thetis's son hast equalled all that ever yet have won the bliss the earth yields or hereafter shall in life thy eminence was adored of all even with the gods and now even dead i see thy virtues propagate thy empery to a renewed life of command beneath so great achilles triumphs over death this comfort of him this encounter found urge not my death to me nor rub that wound i rather wish to live in earth a swain or serve a swain for hire that scarce can gain bread to sustain him than that life once gone of all the dead sway the imperial throne but say and of my son some comfort yield if he goes on in first fights of the field or lurks for safety in the obscure rear or of my father if thy royal ear hath been advertised that the fian throne he still commands as greatest myrmidon or that the Phaean and Thessalian rage, now feet and hands are in the hold of age, despise his empire? Under those bright rays in which heaven's fervor hurls about the days, must I no more shine his revenger now. Such as of old the Ilian overthrow witnessed my anger, the universal host sending before me to this shady coast in fight for Grecia. Could I now resort, but for some small time, to my father's court, in spirit and power as then, those men should find my hands inaccessible and afire my mind that durst with all the numbers they are strong unseat his honour 
and suborn his wrong this pitch still flew his spirit though so low and this i answered thus i do not know of blameless peleus any least report but of your son in all the utmost sort i can inform your care with truth and thus from skyros princely neoptolemus by fleet i conveyed to the greeks where he was chief at both parts when our gravity retired to council and our youth to fight in council still so fiery was conceit in his quick apprehension of a cause that first he ever spake nor passed the laws of any great stay in his greatest haste none would contend with him that counselled last unless illustrious nestor he and i would sometimes put a friendly contrary on his opinion in our fights the priests of great or common he would never cease but far before fight ever no man there for force he forced he was slaughterer of many a brave man in most dreadful fight but one another whom he reft of light in grecian succor i can neither name nor give in number the particular fame of one man slaughter yet i must not pass eurypylus telephides he was that fell beneath him and with him the falls of such huge men went that they showed like whales rampired about him neoptolemus set him so sharply for the sumptuous favours of mistresses he saw him wear for past all doubt his beauties had no peer of all that mine eyes noted next to one and that was memnon tithon's sun-like son thus far for fight in public may a taste give of his eminence how far surpassed his spirit in private where he was not seen nor glory could be said to praise his spleen this close note i excerpted when we sat hidden epius's horse no optimate of all the greeks there had the charge to ope and shut the stratagem but i my scope to note then each man's spirit in a strait of so much danger much the better might be hit by me than others as provoked i shifted place still when in some i smoked both privy tremblings and close vent of tears in him yet not a soft conceit of theirs could all my search see either his wet eyes plied still with wipings or the goodly guise his person always put forth in least part by any tremblings showed his touched at heart but ever he was urging me to make way to their sally by his sign to shake his sword hid in his scabbard or his lance loaded with iron at me no good chance his thoughts to troy intended in the event high troy depopulate he made assent to his fair ship with prize and treasure store safe and no touch away with him he bore a far off hurled lance or of close fought sword whose wounds for favours war doth oft afford which he though sought missed in war's closest wage in close fights mars doth never fight but rage this made the soul of swift achilles tread a march of glory through the herby mead for joy to hear me so renown his son and vanished stalking but with passion stood the other soul struck and each told his bane only the spirit telamonian kept far off angry for the victory i won from him at fleet though arbitrary of all a court of war pronounced it mine and pallas's self our prize were the arms divine of great eosides proposed to our fames by his bright mother at his funeral games i wish to heaven i ought not to have won since for those arms so high a head so soon the base earth covered ajax that of all the host of greece had person capital and acts as eminent excepting his whose arms those were in whom was not amiss i tried the great soul with soft words and said ajax great son of telamon arrayed in all our glories what not dead resign thy wrath for those cursed arms the powers divine in them forged all our veins in thine own one in thy grave fall our tower was overthrown we mourn for ever maimed for thee as much as for achilles nor thy wrong doth touch in sentence any but saturnius's doom in whose hate was the host of greece become a very horror who expressed it well in signing thy fate with this timeless hell approach then king of all the grecian merit repress thy great mind and thy flamy spirit and give the words i give thee worthy ear all this no word drew from him but less near the stern soul kept 
to other souls he fled and glid along the river of the dead though anger moved him yet he might have spoke since i to him but my desires were struck with sight of other souls and then i saw minos that ministered to death a law and jove's bright son was he was set and swayed a golden sceptre and to him did plead a sort of others set about his throne in pluto's wide-doored house when straight came on mighty orion who was hunting there the herds of those beasts he had slaughtered here in desert hills on earth a club he bore entirely steel whose virtues never wore titius i saw to whom the glorious earth opened her womb and gave unhappy birth upwards and flat upon the pavement lay his ample limbs that spread in their display nine acres compass on his bosom sat two vultures digging through his call of fat into his liver with their crooked beaks and each by turns the concrete entrail breaks as smiths their steel beat set on either side nor doth he ever labour to divide his liver and their beaks nor with his hand offer them off but suffers by command of the angry thunderer offering to enforce his love latona in the close recourse she used to pytho through the dancing land smooth panopius i saw likewise stand up to his chin amidst a liquid lake tormented tantalus yet could not slake his burning thirst oft as his scornful cup the old man would taste so oft twas swallowed up and all the black earth to his feet descried divine power plaguing him the lake still dried about his head on high trees clustering hung pears apples granites olives ever young delicious figs and many fruit trees more of other burden whose alluring store when the old soul strived to pluck the winds from sight in gloomy vapours made them vanish quite there i saw sisyphus in infinite moan with both hands heaving up a massy stone and on his tiptoes racking all his height to rest up to a mountain top his freight when pressed to rest it there his nerves quite spent down rushed the deadly quarry the event of all his tortures new to raise again to which straight set his never rested pain the sweat came gushing out from every pore and on his head a standing mist he wore reeking from thence as if a cloud of dust were raised about it down with these was thrust the idol of the force of hercules but his firm self did no such fate oppress he feasting lives amongst the immortal states white-ankled hebe and himself made mates in heavenly nuptials hebe jove's dear race and juno's whom the golden sandals grace about him flew the clamours of the dead like fowls and still stooped cuffing at his head he with his bow like night stalked up and down his shaft still knocked and hurling round his frown at those vexed hoverers aiming at them still and still as shooting out desired to still a horrid bodric wore he thwart his breast the thong all gold in which were forms impressed where art and miracle drew equal breaths in bears boars lions battles combats deaths who wrought that work did never such before nor so divinely will ever do more soon as he saw he knew me and gave speech son of laertes high in wisdom's reach and yet unhappy wretch for in this heart of all exploits achieved by thy desert thy worth but works out some sinister fate as i in earth did i was generate by jove himself and yet past mean oppressed by one my far inferior whose proud hest imposed abhorred labours on my hand of all which one was to descend this strand and hail the dog from thence he could not think an act that danger could make deeper sink and yet this depth i drew and fetched as high as this was low the dog the deity of slight and wisdom as of downright power both stooped and raised and made me conqueror this said he made descent again as low as pluto's court when i stood firm for show of more heroes of the times before and might perhaps have seen my wish of more as theseus and pyrithous derive from roots of deity but before the achieved rare sight of these the rank souled multitude in infinite flocks rose venting sounds so rude that pale fear took me lest the gorgon's head rushed in amongst them thrust up 
in my dread by grim persephone i therefore sent my men before to ship and after went where boarded set and launched the ocean wave our oars and forewinds speedy passage gave end of the eleventh book